All right, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Bilmington, not here. Uh, it's the best of. You've been voting in all week, sending your emails. So here's the clips that you wanted. <laughs> so let's take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's, what's the story? Right, so I did some research. Right. Let, let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off, he was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count I am blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off. So to the brain the life, can still. Or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death. Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So y you weren't having any of it? Well, no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But, you know, no nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Well, along the similar sort of lines, right? <laughs> This is quite a few years ago. Um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something, right? Uh -huh. So they said that this isn't good. It wasn't Ben Outen at that Jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, was I can't remember what it was. And they said, right, <laughs> that was terrible. We're yeah. gonna uh, we're gonna cut your head off. Um, you oh. know, you gotta you gotta show people that you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this in the, the 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> when you say a couple of years ago, you mean maybe sort of? Was it the olden days when the phones weren't days. very good? Ages ago. Yeah. Ages ago. Sure. So, um, so, so, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So... <laughs> Very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that yeah. when he was near his career. Right right this yeah, was enough. literally ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon Sharma's History of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and even before that, which is young, <laughs> yeah. before, when it was all mental and different. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Carl, go on. So he's having his head cough and he's, but no, he's resigned to it's, it. It's the day before, he's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not gonna have my head, uh, much longer. Sure. So he so said, let's, let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> He said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without the head on it, <laughs> right? So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Hoover. So. The jailers? Whoever he was. The rats. Asking. These jailers with one eye. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. get up. So, so he said, no, well, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm gonna mm. be I'm gonna be dead tomorrow. Sure. So um, let's he do didn't a test. draw it out this long, did he? Yeah, he said let, let's 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 test this out. You know, okay, he said do okay. us a favour. He said you know it's my last day. Um, what I want you to do is you're gonna cut my head off. Let's put a white line on the floor, right? And see if you know because there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count. Do you know what I mean? If it's just if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place. You can't yeah, really count that's that. That's not impressive enough, yeah. So, so they said, let's make a white line. Sure. Yeah. Who and said this? He did all they did. I think they started to join in with him and say, well, let's make yeah. this a, you Sure. Know. You're <laughs> guessing, go on. So, uh... <laughs> they got Norris McWhorter there. <laughs> <laughs> the Guinness people. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they said, let's get this white line. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Dedication's all he needs. We'll, we'll do this, we'll do this tomorrow. He said, all right, yeah. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. See you in the morning! I'll see you in the morning! Night, night, sleep tight. <laughs> Bye bye. Uh, I love the fact that Carl knows exactly what was said. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's beautiful. yeah, he doesn't know the story yeah. or what order it is in yeah. or when but it he was. He knows exactly what was said. Is what, but he knows the interviews. <laughs> All right then. See you in the morning. <laughs> mm. Bye. Oh, kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not like that. Oh, you joker! Oh, don't let the bed bugs bite you. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm all right. Go on. He gets up and mm. they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got, I've got used to the idea. So yeah. here's, here's a white line for you. Got <laughs> used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So, uh, so they go, right, are you ready then? And he said, I right, go on. And they cut his head off and the body walked 32 steps without a head. <laughs> wow. 32 steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson really. Did it get as far as the what? It walked along the white line, did it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps and then started to stumble a bit and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you know, it was a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do then without an head? <laughs> how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It, it would twitch uh, a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps, mm -hmm. the body could- well don't- Yeah. Yeah. Ah, it's yeah. the doctor still on the line. Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could have got 32 steps. Right, so, so you don't believe that- doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that, for something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Well, mm, insect to 
uh, human, <laughs> is, is, the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that difference. D d there's not that much difference in well, some instances. Do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well, I'm just saying. So? You're making out as if like, they're a totally different, like, species. <laughs> I am. I am making out. I mean, call Rick, me old-fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Though? I don't want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now, Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is a very different thing. The interesting there is that it lives. It lives by its head because a lot of it's on. Uh, 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 there's some of them are phototropic, chemotropic. Some of them just do literally have uh, irritation and muscle memory. I mean, they do have a central nervous system, but it, it, it's it's very different. So if you lose the head, it bypasses a lot of that anyway. All this is running around. The reason it dies is because it can't take on water. But it's very different to a man, <laughs> right, having consciousness and then losing that. And the body's still going, no, I remember, I think I remember what I was gonna do here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna carefully walk, walk, walk 32 line. steps along this white line. I'm imagine just good looking out going, oh, missed a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe the head is in the corner going, left, <laughs> left, <laughs> you, <laughs> left, oh, he's not, oh. Well, let's just put it out. I mean, if, if, if anyone listening has, uh, has maybe had a relative <laughs> beheaded, maybe in a hor horrendous car accident, <laughs> where they got up, maybe they, they went for a walk, uh, they, you know, they, they, they had a little chat before oh, they passed dear, on. Carl. Get in touch. You know, oh, you, Carl, you, 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 you are my favourite being. You are my favourite species. Now, you, Carl, may not be particularly different genetically <laughs> from a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> you are why do cockroaches do that? Why are you ever made them? Get when? Let's play a record. Do, do you know what, when I told him this fact, I send him little facts on text messages just to inflame his, you know, interest. I just sent him a cockroach can live nine days without its head. Mm. He texted back, what's the point of that? Yeah. What's the point of They're that? They're not doing experiments, these cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a boring last week to have. <laughs> <laughs> And he went, oh, I'm top of all that, you're thirsty. <laughs> so yeah. it's the worst week of your life, isn't it? That week without your head. It's XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Jamais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Bilkington. <laughs> Carl's all flustered because there isn't a, a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions and sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm, I'm asked to start Steve's song for a love. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why didn't you carry on with your, uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the CD. We'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover you it. Go, go on. Flip. Go on then, right, okay. We've right. had, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Yeah, Ricky, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbuster as well, though. Yeah, go on then. But we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just do educating Ricky. Right. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I talked about to you in the week and he had much better things, like when I told you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest and for some reason it made him, uh, it, uh played havoc with his belly and what? he followed through and he had to clean up. He, shut himself. He, yeah, using, um, Using ice and stuff. Why are you telling? Why are you telling me that Brian Blessed? What? Wh in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he he, he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I'll give it to him. He's an actor and that, but he, he gave that a go. Yeah. Right. He played. What's the know, point of that? You'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's he's you know. He's oh, good. so he's all right. Uh, me me doing the boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself yeah, is, is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could probably, yeah, what's it could, been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, have uh, probably yeah. cleared it out by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> it, it slipped on it. I can't really bother got... telling you this one, cos- Come on! To just do it, or do it now! Steve, how are we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means. Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, talk. Right, right listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance. He's a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people. <laughs> uh, 1700s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, the, thing, the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old ropes, do you know what I'm saying? 
I can't even be bothered. <laughs> yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Well, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's way. <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> and Brian Blessed hitting himself. What are you? What? No, tell you. <laughs> no, tell me that now. You nearly made me swear. Then just I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this fact, Carl. Or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Phone's running out. Not that people years ago. When people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And so, and so you never forget the Because even if they're being hung, we take that as rape. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell a little piece of the rope to people. And See, that, so the, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's... You, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all I have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight, we haven't even got time for the last talk, we've got an ad break and we've got to get out. Okay, business. give your answers then, this is right. ridiculous. So, come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV, that's yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying I haven't heard it, and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, uh, what is it? Uh, someone says, oh, them curtains went, all right. She said, you know the thing around the top of the um, curtain is a palmet, not a Valance, and he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, Wet Knee Houston. Right? Wet Knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete Castle and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume. And, uh, they're going to Those great places. And remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got uh, the DVD here, they've got Linda Green, they've got Stone Roses, they've got another compilation, and executive decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true, or have you uh, lied with no, someone it else? it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he say? Oh, Come on, what did he say? He said, I, I climbed Everest and uh, I played off it with me belly. Uh, Let's talk about it next week. We've really run out now. Oh, you're a fool. Uh, email in your address. Um, Songs of Phrase. It's the mighty return of Songs of Phrase. No one has uh, requested that. It's no. not, not, not due to public opinion. <laughs> 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 a lot of people have requested some swearing. They have indeed. But a lot, we had a lot of emails for that, but go on, Carl. And, uh, <laughs> remind us again what exactly Songs of Phrase is and why we should care. It's just a phrase <laughs> that we take from the show, make up by taking words out of a song, get it, it together. Right? The phrase that we're doing is no more cheeky freak of the week. No more cheeky freak it of the week. It sounds like this. No more cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> right, so... No, that's nine on impossible. Play you again. Got, you Play got again. Email I didn't in, hear that. You got to email in with all the songs that you can hear there. Right? There's, I think there's five songs And we just want the names of the songs? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. All right. Should we just hear it again? No more cheeky freak of the Right. Yeah, it's it good. It's probably one of the best you've done. It's very tricky, though. There's a, I mean, uh, uh, that's not too tricky. Play it again. No more creep of the week. How many have you got? Do you think, Rick? Just uh, uh, well, I've I've noticed the same person singing twice. Is that a, right? In a band and solo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I know one I track think, straight away from oh, the word. Can I just say I do think naming the, the songs is a bit tricky. Let's just name the artists. Is that all right? Just yeah. the artists. Just the artists. Just change the rules slightly. Yeah. Um, before we play it again, just let you know what the prizes are. We've got on DVD later with Jules Holland louder. Lots of the alternative acts he's had on there. Um, right. A DVD and a couple of DVDs all, with Rollins Boogie Woogie Piano over the top. <laughs> Let's hope so. Brilliant. I can't. can't Jason wait. Chainer on there. Stereophonics. We've got Sonic oh. Youth, Ash, Hole, Queens of the Stone Age, Foo Fighters. Quite good. Um, once again, Cruise of the Gods on DVD starring Rob Brydon and Steve.
Steve Coogan. That was on at Christmas. It's not bad. It's not the uh, same one. They, they haven't been sending that back. <laughs> We've been giving out different ones each we week. Have indeed. Uh, this is an album just called, quite simply, I Love You. Yeah. And you'll be pleased because there's the likes of Mel C, Cliff Richard and the Hollies on there. Brilliant. Excellent. The best chill-out album ever. We've got the Beach Boys on there, obviously, Costello, Pink Floyd, Coldplay. That's not bad. And this is the one that's most interesting, I think, the American Song Poem Anthology. I've not heard it yet, but apparently, I think what it is, is an anthology of, um, recordings that were made, apparently, in, the, I think, maybe 50s or 60s America. You could, there was a particular organisation, you could send in songs or lyrics that you'd written at home and they would oh, send right. it to music and record it for you. And this is a compilation of them. So, obviously, it's, there's some quite, uh, idiosyncratic and odd little things on there. I think it's probably worth a listen. So, not bad prizes at all, Carl. Let's play it again. No more well, that's we got. We started that going. Just the artists, <laughs> then. Ricky Gervais at XFM dot co dot uk. Ricky Gervais at XFM dot co dot uk. Once more, Carl. No more See, we're just great. Yeah, not bad at all. <laughs> uh, Rick, um, I can tell you now <laughs> that the the answers to songs of phrase are quite literally dribbling in. <laughs> um, I think there's two, may maybe three answers so far. So uh, very excited about that. So, who's the winner? Answers, well let's give us, give us the answers first. Right, well, this was, uh, this is how it sounded. It's not Rockbusters, I'm calling it Rockbusters, because no, well, I, I, no, well, it's all they're all interchangeable at the moment. Right, Paul McCartney, Cheeky Girls, Sugar Babes, Space and Beatles. Okay. Right? Brilliant. You've really, I mean, if you're not interested in it, Carl, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, mate. Um, anyway, we're going to give the uh, prizes, which are pretty good this week, to uh, James Waters from Colchester. Well, we've got Songs of Phrase, right, haven't we? Songs of Phrase, then. Um, okay, let's uh, just have a look at the prizes. Let's just remind us again what exactly Songs of Phrase is, because I know a lot of people put it out of their mind week by week. It's a phrase that's, you know, been said on the show a few times, <laughs> right? Oh, um, but you remember classics, like, uh... What was, what was, what was... We had hairy Chinese kid. Yeah, there's, there's this hairy Chinese kid. Stop squeezing me, Ed. Stop squeezing uh, me. Carl, you're an idiot. Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, you know, some cl cl classic phrases. Classic phrases. And so you use various old-time songs and you put them all together and that spells out the phrase. Uh, before we, uh, we, we play that, let me tell you now, you can win. <laughs> Look forward to this. What's this? The new album from the Star Spangles. That's called Bazooka. Is that out, is it? Never heard of it. When's Bazooka out? <laughs> never, heard, never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> uh, the best summer holiday album in the world ever. We've got the treats on there include the Fast Food Rockers and oh. uh, Lance Ketchup. Yeah. I'm um, waiting for their second single because I, I don't know what that's going to be about. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, is it going to be a bit more fast food? Maybe like Pret a Manger? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Uh, this is very good. Yeah, two discs out. The best of David Bowie. Um, in Spiral Carpets, the best of them. Still don't know how they spin that over over three seasons. <laughs> no idea. Um, <laughs> Bowie's is one. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we mentioned it last week, the American Song Poem Anthology. That's kind of a kooky collection of, uh, of songs. And uh, we've also got a couple of DVDs here. Stephen King's Rose Red. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to video. <laughs> yeah. Made for television. Yeah, yeah. And we'll never be seen at the cinema. And I know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of nerdlingers listening, so they will be loving Richard Dean Anderson in Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Uh, free inside, there's a collector's card, plus you can win some exclusive memorabilia. Brilliant. So I think a pair of, uh, there Right, all you've got to do is listen to these, like, 13 songs, <laughs> probably, to write a well-known stupid oh, phrase. It's, it's only seven, seven different songs, right? Well, just get the most you can, just get the rough artist or song it'd, it'd do, right? And the and phrase is, um, about me dad nicking from, uh, telephone boxes, right? You've got to give them a clue, because they've got to get, they've got to know what they're listening for. It's, it's hard enough when you know. Daddy's never gonna stop robbing from telephone box, is that it? Yeah. So what are these, what are these songs then? Oh, go uh, on in. It doesn't matter that some people don't know what that's about, do they? It doesn't matter. No, they're not, they're not, well, they're, well, they're your father's a thief. <laughs> email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Let's hear it. Alright. Daddy, never gonna stop from Alright. Also not, um, grammatically correct, <laughs> no. but, so it's, Daddy, Daddy, never gonna stop robbing from telephone box. <laughs> Rubbish. Unbelievable. Play again. We, oh. I think we just need the song. That's all we're after. Yeah, yeah. just the songs. Right. Just again. Well, this is a desperate must. feature. It isn't really it? is awful. From. 
See, Rick, if we took more of an interest in this show, we'd have come in, listened to that, we'd and said, said no we're not way. Play it. We'd have said no way. I don't we're care doing how long you spent on it. We've got a reputation. Yeah, we've won awards. We've won major awards. We're not putting that tat out. But yeah, no. You know, we, that, that's what that's what. But happens. we're just giving the listener what they're used to. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I think more fool them for listening. Ricky Gervais at XFM .co .uk. Now then, uh, we were playing earlier songs of phrase. Um, we have had. I mean, the the, a the the answers I could literally count on the fingers of one hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> now the right answers, even less so. But um, do you want to play it once more, Carl? Oh God. From. There was uh, <clears throat> seven songs in there. Right. Read them out, go on. What are they? It was uh... Oh, have you got it written down? No, I can remember them. Daddy, cool. Right. Bernie M. Bernie M. Yeah. Uh, never gonna give you from up. Rick, Rick Astley. Astley. Yeah. Uh, never, never. Um. Write them down. Stop. Sam Brown. I think right. Stop. Robin was uh, Miss Robinson, by Simon and Garfunkel. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. That's not Robin. Oh. From From Russia with Love, Matt Monroe. Right. Telephone. Telephone hanging on the telephone, Blondie. Right. And then box. Living in a box. By <laughs> living in, in a, a box. box. Well, listen, no, Brilliant. I don't think anyone got them all right. No. If you did get them all right, I'm sorry, but I gave up checking the emails a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna give it- I'm gonna give it to Michelle Flower, cause she got a few of them right. Yeah. Okay, so quiz time. I know everyone's been looking forward to this. Which quiz is well, it? Well, we're gonna week? play along, because he's done, uh, Songs of Phrase, where he, uh, cuts up, um, uh, bits and pieces from, uh, uh, records, you have to guess the title or the artist, and, uh, makes a well-known phrase, i.e. a phrase that we've said a lot, and, uh, the challenge is that me and Steve have got to try and work out what it is as well, before we tell we will tell you the phrase, but let me just see if I can guess, play it. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing. <laughs> right, I know what that is. I didn't hear it, can you play it once right. for me? Right, <laughs> I know what that is. Right, it's why don't they play the game of swing ball? Because that's what he said when he turned on and saw people in wheelchairs playing tennis. <laughs> and his point was... Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. the game of swing ball. <laughs> 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 oh dear. That is so naughty. This show's been a bit naughty, I think. I don't know what's happened to us. I think it's, it's like, um... Sort of end of term, sort of madness. But yeah. I think we've got to calm down here. We're a bit naughty there. We've we said, you know, bloke with two dicks. We said Chinese people don't talk properly, which is a little bit offensive. Yeah, you know what I mean, Carl? Well, they don't know. Right. Okay. Let's leave it now. Okay. Stop there, Carl. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of XFM or any yeah. other human being. If you think that me and Steve are being offensive, we are strongly behind the guise of irony, satire. And ignorance. Carl only has ignorance yeah. and yeah. hate. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do you, this? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It's well, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or... this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know, well, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what I will us three look like in the future I mean, if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we? Be considered in That's society, true, yeah. but we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Yeah. But um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right? You might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are. You know your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no. Well, listen, right? Because I remember. When, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So I'm growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> all right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right. But <laughs> she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why it, was she? It was a very. Was it like being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can tattoos clean up. They look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make it look GIF. nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> 
Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did you get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Mustard on. Is using horse in it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of... <laughs> no. I'm, um, oh, that's great. I've Did been Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking <laughs> for it? I, I've been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going cattling, rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door. I can't stop. I can't stop it. <laughs> open the patio door as well. I'll be... Looks like we got us a runaway. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think he you know, had a horse. Yeah, right. So that's I, why the family didn't have any money. They'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway, yeah, it's always so, to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they it's could not, be in the room it's next not door. It's buying it. It's keeping it as well. Oh, so, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, okay. And uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This, uh, what? And when I, when I was doing it, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is tr and genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming! What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just wait unravel it. and unravel. It's yeah, yeah. Let's it play a track. Deeper and deeper. It's yeah, like an on, onion, Carl. isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I, mean, I, I come just, from the West Country. I've never just, heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a, a rediffusion telly and this horse yeah. going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a Little second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Louis de Velvet Underground and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking. Uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto genetically, uh, genetically modified babies. But and somehow then Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, yeah. the mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but well, well, what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand what, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse. Yeah, from I don't know where there was a. I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they they get didn't caught? have it for long. No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity, and they said you can do anything to to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas, and I thought that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget. Well, I don't know. I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good way you make yeah. an overweight. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings of them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it. Yeah. Selling them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Just tell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they w did you just cut? You didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil. Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, "Well, good on him for trying." But anyway, so I went round to theirs because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah, so it's a bit rough. So as I went, the horse went. Thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they've, been feeding, they've been feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door and they opened the door and it was one of them houses where. No carpet. <laughs> yeah, a horse in the living room. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about that beauty right? was on. 
<laughs> well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that. Telly and that. No, but I was saying this the other day. And an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming off 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And you know, like homeless people always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got, that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat though. They're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse, was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Is that the first start? Yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit, what were we talking about? It was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So come on, work with him. So you take it to your doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right. Yeah. Now, you look at Steve. Stephen, this is. You look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and that. Good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right, this, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till like 10 at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. Right. It was a bit. <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of chases cars? <laughs> oh god, now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow! Wow! Oh, life. Wow! That was a hell of a point. Oh God! <sighs> but am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, last week uh, I was walking um, uh, home with him, and I went. Uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week. Let's do a phone in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no, no. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do they, don't they? No, that's, no, no, that? but it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, mm. you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there, though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's... His mum's milk. What are you ta what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just... A title <laughs> for the, the story... No, 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 it's what? just, it's just what would you do? Right. What do you I mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In, in America, I think it was. Oh, America are a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right. at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But, so, Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, there's yeah. an eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and he's saying, is this right? Should it No, it's not. On? But what, 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 <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh, God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. <laughs> No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, "Look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this." Look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean? What would I do? 
<laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and I'm, the public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old, he's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mom, I'm getting a bit peckish, and he goes, alright, son. She whops one out. <laughs> Um, and he starts having his, having his milk, right? <laughs> you live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it, cos it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you, why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought, I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, cos he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> Genius! So and you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's breast, right. right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see... <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... <laughs> oh, so what... Oh, no, no, <laughs> You know, the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all No, I know, that's the but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rovers. <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God, you don't see it all <laughs> So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You Forget think he's it. giving a lecture Forget at Oxford? It's, no, it's not going anywhere. No, go on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying, right. you grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having... <laughs> it doesn't look right! So... Right. I don't think Werther's Originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. Oh, I so, think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> Did you see the stylish? You've been voting in all week, sending your emails. So here's the clips that you wanted. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just- he's, I, he's he, he turns my stomach. I know, but don't- Cos he's arrogant that. as well, exactly. though. Exactly, that's the problem. Don't, don't explain to people that- No, he know, is a bit arrogant. His, it's his- it's his whole thing that you- it's the whole package, so yeah. to speak, that you don't Well, like. there's another thing in this quote, because, uh, it's he's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he, he tried, apparently, to lose some weight, and, uh, it says- he said, The first month I lost eleven pounds, the next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on nine pounds. I had a slip up. Mm. I can't say when, why, or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Don't That's believe quite, it just sneaked that, up on me. That him. body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No. It just uh, sneaked, sneaked up, up on me. me. Yeah. I, 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 it was that. the cakes again. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same old cakes as before. It was exactly the same sleep, sleep eating. Yeah. It's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was a family dear. sized KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. Poor man. The other thing is that the, I don't think that's a very good shock tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty-something, well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah. That's not, you know, mean, I, when, when I was twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah. I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah. Just laying around <laughs> doing nothing. Eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there <laughs> and you discovered... <laughs> no, but someone sent me... Um, Sophie here sent me something and she said, I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I have to send you this. And she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing. And it's, it's... the brand name is Gervais. How oh, God, that from, is... From, have you been, they've named a cheese after I think, you. It, I think it's a big French company and this is from the Czech Republic. It's all over Europe. And so it... That so would be a dream come true, wouldn't it, if they named a cheese after no, you? No, I think it's... I think it's, uh, probably, you know, ancestors. And so I've... cheese is in my blood. Sure. Quite literally. It literally is, yeah. yeah. It, Another it, heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, it? it comes out of pores like those Play-Doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jane, bring the Stilton in. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, this isn't right. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I I I, I eat too much, but, but I, you, yeah, I, but I you're not big. I mean, one of the other contestants on that on the uh, Fat Club celebrity oh, yeah, fat isn't club, it? is uh, another one is Jono Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now Jono, he's, he, I don't know. You know Jono. He's oh. that guy. Who does um, he used to be on TV, and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so true, and he's a really nice bloke, Jono. It's but funny because he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is is wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. Oh, I love Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I no, love you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met John yeah. a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not uh, to show off, but a couple of awards dues. Yeah. Like that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or yeah. suits and ties. Not John O. Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and a shorts. Hawaiian and Bermuda shirt. shorts with just these little. But I saw him again Time another time when he had shorts on at yeah. a similar event, and I've seen him since in the street. And he's all—I don't think. I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that, whether he's just his no, legs I, are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable. And uh, you know, why do, I mean, to be quite honest, well, why, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn up those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course, flip flops. You know, but do you think he started off by wearing? Maybe he just had the upper half as a tuxedo with the tie, and, and then the shorts, for and the shorts underneath, and he would just have to come in to kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard, potted plant, or a potted plant, or his kids bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah, you know, you are wearing trousers, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. In you yeah. go, in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no, no. <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah, of course I'm wearing trousers. Why would <laughs> I wearing trousers? And then you just thought, like, this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now I'm going to make a wacky effort to sort of, you know. The next zone is I've heard he's going in the grass skirt and a garland around his, and he's going to come in. Limboing. But you you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, didn't you? <laughs> Just for ease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, right, is this talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that, um, they, they tested it out on a mouse, right? <laughs> they, said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight, weight is a big issue in the world and, you know, a lot of people are depressed and that, probably like Rick Waller. Well, right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Well, you know. Oh. I mean, you could, you could sort out Rick by... You know, Jono is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about no, my hang age. On a minute. What I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So I bet it's Sorry. Hard. What do you mean? Because he's like, uh, how old is he? 35. Right? Oh, he's yeah, got man. loads of money, he does his own shopping, so when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the, the sponge cake section, it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn, that like you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. Uh, uh, so just sorry, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying how it is because I've, right. I've tried like losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and you think, well, <laughs> one more and I'll do without. Do you like a little chocolate muffin now oh, and again? Well, yeah. Right. Is that your favourite thing? So uh, the thing a chocolate is, and let him finish his point. So the thing <laughs> is, right now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum. So why doesn't his mum just say, "I'm going to buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more." Yeah. <laughs> That, that sort of Does he live a short, man. sharp shop? I, I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> so he, you, you don't actually know if this is <laughs> true or not? No, but, but anyway, right? So this, this drug they've come up with... <laughs> they've tested this on mice, haven't they? They've tested <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm worried that they haven't tested it on mice. Yeah, thank I'm, God for that. Yeah, it's definitely been tested on mice. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a load of cake. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby and he said, right, stop a minute. And then they gave it this drug yeah. that makes you lose weight. Yeah. <gasps> and it, its weight went down, but the only bad so side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems, that seems to be fine then. <laughs> Let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, that. that's, that's, uh, yeah, it's Richard gets on that. Yes, Drew's Doc, look at these. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Jono, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. Mm. Sorry? That happened to the mice. Mm, but what, <laughs> what do, do you mean? That's the option. Well, like what do you mean that's the option? So, so I love the fact that your choice is either being like a fat, happy man who has the odd sponge cake, or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, I thought we were slagging off Rick Waller sorry, and fat mate. people. Sorry, let's mate. have a go I... at the fat people before yeah, we start on me, Rick. Really. Yeah, no, I didn't. I thought, yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I got some issues, even body issues. I you know. know. But they, I mean, Rick Waller's grotesque, you know. Yeah, sorry, I'm about just that. a little bit weird. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, she play a song and well, just a little bit offended. No, 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 but as long as you say something good about someone, you can also say something bad about them. Go on, then. How does that work? Go on, then. Give us an example. Well, Chinese. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Great people. Right? Good. That's really, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the women, women, really good looking as as, as younger people. No! <laughs> what are older. you doing? I'm ju I'm just saying. As long as you, you know, what I mean, there's good and bad and everything. For every well, what are the old ones like? They, they they don't age well. <laughs> what do you mean? <gasps> The fellow in Karate Kick, the teacher, was only about 36. <laughs> we started this! We started this! Oh. oh. Fact. Uh, so, song to <laughs> phrase, email in <laughs> ricky.gervais at xmn.co.uk, right? I mean, I have to say, Carl, it's very tricky this week. You've got some very obscure sounding songs there. Yeah, just all we want is the artists. I right? think just the song, Carl, mate. I no, think that's, that's hard. hard. I no, think no, that's hard. hard. Yeah, the artist. Uh, Just the artist. I know. Okay, so these are the prizes this week. Well, We've let's got... let's play it again so they can hear it. Try okay. and work out all the different artists. Yeah. Why don't they play the game of the swing game ball. of swing ball? Right. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. Play the game of swing. Oh. Right. <laughs> that's tricky. <laughs> it is tricky. That is tricky. That is good. But there's some great prizes, um, <laughs> including Carl. I can't help but notice. Torn from the current, well, I think today's issue of the Daily Mirror. What is giving away a it's, giveaway? It's a free CD from the Daily Mirror, which you can buy it. You spend thirty p on the Mirror, you can get this anyway. <laughs> but it's still in the piece of plastic that it came in. I love it's that. It's ripped. Anyway, there are some other treats. Oh, you well. you'll be loving getting that through the uh, <laughs> the door. So there's a uh, the jingly jangly sound of summer. Good vibes. A two CD set featuring music from Crowded House, REM, Simon and Garfunkel, and the Beach Boys. I'll tell you what. I, I've got the th thought of another game. We can put Carl's into theory. Right? I can I can tell him a sort of like a a, a person or um, you know a, a people or a place, right? Uh, or a, a profession, and he's got to come up with a good and bad. <laughs> a good and bad thing. This, that this, it's, it is dicing with death. Yeah. Are we ready to do this? Well, listen. If we're quitting in the next couple of weeks, then who cares? Okay. Um, good and bad. Right. Well, hang on. Whoa, let me just. The, we're on the prizes here. All right. Okay. So now fifty-five. I know okay. there's a lot of XFM listeners who are going to be looking forward to the likes of S Club Eight and the Fast Food Rockers. They're all on <laughs> there. I can't wait. What is their second single going to be about? <laughs> the Smashing Pumpkins. This is quite a good little compilation of um, sort of B-sides and live performances and stuff like that, which is uh, which is not bad. The best summer holiday album in the world ever. I think we've given that away in the past. All sorts of stuff on there. Plus the director's cut of True Romance on DVD. The uh, Tarantino scripted. Oh, it's a great film. Tony Scott directed oh. movie. Oh. So there's some quite good prices. Just play it once more. So email in Ricky Why don't the they play the game of swing ball? Just, just the artist, yeah. That's all we're after. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing. <laughs> very tricky. Brilliant. Very, very that is brilliant. All right, put the uh, song on. Put song on now. What? Let's put a song on. Bit of uh, Farrell, Farrell Williams. Yes. Good and bad. Good and bad. Um, old people. Darkness. I believe in a thing called love on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl set the ball rolling with um, songs of phrase. Why don't they play swing ball? Referring, of course, to uh, people in uh, wheelchairs who play tennis because he was disappointed they weren't getting around the court quickly enough. So why didn't they play swing ball? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Someone just emailed in saying because if they hit it to the top, they wouldn't be able to reach it to unravel it. Exactly. Which is a good point. Yeah. But I mean, nonetheless. Good and bad in people in wheelchairs? Do you want to do that? Good and bad. Good and bad things about people in wheelchairs. Um. Good and bad. Yeah. Um, I suppose. I don't know, really. They, they take up less room in cinemas. They've got their own seat. <laughs> um. Good. That's good, is it? That's, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, well done. Well done. That was bad. Uh, don't know. I'll have to think about it. Okay. But uh, well, let's leave that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you started it. Songs of phrase. We've had very, very few entries. I really think people aren't interested. They really have just given up. I mean, seriously. That's the one thing. That's the one thing you contributed to this show, Carl. And it's it's the the weak link. It's I the think link. in the chain, the missing link. Oh, do you reckon there is one, Carl? Do you reckon they'll ever find the missing link? Wandering around Manchester. Wait a minute, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> um, the stats then. Let's have the answers if we can. Right. It was uh, well, specials. Let's play it once more. All right. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Specials. Yep. Jermaine Jackson. Play the game of swing. Oh. Right. It was uh, play the game of love. Uh, I think that was Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders. Right. You right. think? But you're not sure. Louis Armstrong 
was the uh, don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Queen, don't stop me now. We're having a good time. And that we're having a ball. We're having a ball. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, considering you yourself weren't entirely clear, I think it's only fair to give it to Paul Brown, who got some of the answers right. Uh, we're going to do songs of phrase, by the way, where uh, Carl picks out a phrase that he might have said once, mm. uh, tries to find words from songs to put it together. You've got to guess as many as you can, song or artist, I can't remember. Um, but even though you might look at it and go, that's mental, I don't know any of them, you might win if you get two right. I mean, I think the winner last week got about three out of three. Well, I have seven. to be honest with you, I mean, last week, I mean, Rockbusters, surprisingly, was a very, very popular quiz. Yeah. It just happened to be awful. Yeah. This one is pitiful. I mean, it's truly atrocious. Yeah. And it really doesn't even have a fan base. I mean, there's no one championing this one, Carl. Last week, seriously, mate, I got a bank. Oh, Carl's seven, face. Seven or eight uh, replies. That, is, that, oh, God, that's terrible. That was like when you told a kid that you couldn't afford a Christmas present this year. Look at his face. Yeah, it is a bit distraught. Carl, it's, it's, it's like Chris Evans' face when they said they were cancelling girls and boys. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can come up with great TV game shows <laughs> like that. No, you can't, Chris. Not anymore. Ah! Oh, his little glasses slid down his yeah. nose. I'm the guy who don't forget your toothbrush. Yeah. What well, all that money you owe me? No, you owe us. <laughs> oh, <for laughs> I believe it. All right. So, will I just play it to you and whatever you try and work out the better phrases? Um, sorry, it's a phrase that might have once been uttered on this show. It was said last week. Oh, right. All right. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Here you go. I know you're just sixteen. But look at all of who you are. <laughs> Right, I, right, right. I know what that is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what was right? it? What it is, is it's something like, right, <laughs> you're only 16, but you look 26, and the Chinese look older than they are or something, because he said that the Chinese don't age well. That is mental, Carl. <laughs> it's the most convoluted, ridiculous, racist <laughs> piece of material ever to be uttered on radio. Play again. <laughs> I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's Okay, you're just 16 and look at all the 21. That's because the Chinese look older. <laughs> So, there you go, the well-known phrase, <laughs> you're, you're 16, looking all of 21, that's because the Chinese look older. Well-known phrase there, sweeping the nation. <laughs> that's, uh, that will be up there with was up, um, and shut that door. <laughs> if they do a poll, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, play it once more, we're after the artists. Just yeah. the artists. Yeah. I know you're just 16, but looking all of 21. That's... Alright, let me tell you what the uh, prizes oh. are. We've got, uh, I assume this is the new <laughs> album from Mower. Uh, everyone's going crazy for Mower. <laughs> I've not heard people stop talking about Mower. <laughs> so uh, there it is. We've got the new album from the Webb Brothers, um, which might be quite good. Uh, the Polyphonic Spree album. The best dance album in the world ever, which is ideal perhaps if you're having a barbecue and you've got lots of eight-year-old children <laughs> coming. The Polyphonic Spree, I look at them and I think, well, you know, you're a pretty good band. But, um, if that album sounds like a million, you're gonna make about like, 40 quid each. I know, it's extraordinary. <laughs> I mean... They're the sort of indie equivalent of the So Solid crew. <laughs> yeah, if you're not gonna make any money, the manager's getting 20%. Exactly, yeah. And, um, and also on DVD, uh, Red Dwarf Series 1, so, um, some absolutely barnstorming places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you can identify what artists to use in this well-known racist phrase, <laughs> that's because the Chinese look older. Play it once more, Phil. One more time. I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's... Radio. Just a couple of emails just to update you on what's coming in here. Go um, on. Natasha has emailed us. She says that she's of Chinese origin, and at 27, she often got mistaken for 24. 
So your notion that Chinese people don't age well is obviously uh, factually incorrect. Yeah, well, we didn't need, uh, thank you for saying <laughs> but I mean, uh, honestly, trust us, Sasha, we didn't need you to tell us that. We what? know Carl is talking absolute nonsense. Wait till you get to 30. <laughs> 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 oh, dear, now this is, uh, this is quite a nice email from Paul. He says, uh, let Carl know that I have a Chinese friend called Oi. Imagine the confusing and amusing situations we get into. We're out and about in yeah. busy Soho. Oi! Is <laughs> his surname, come here. <laughs> Whitening wit from, uh, from Carl. Wait nice till name. you're 30. Yeah, I know. Brilliant. I mean. But no, um, actually, we've had a surprising response to, uh, Songs of Phrase this week. Despite the fact that everyone has agreed that it's a race list, <laughs> they've but nevertheless <laughs> had a go. So, uh, keep your answers coming in, um, Good. because we may as well. You're a hit, cut. Well, I'll right. play it again and give the answers. Here we go. Songs of Phrase. Songs of Phrase. Name what? the artist. Name the artist. I know you're just 16, but look at all of you. Oh, you cry. That's... <laughs> 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 Oh, well, that's Philip Bailey again. That's too little. Right, it was. That was uh, Roxette. The look. Yeah, yeah. Right, we had uh, You and Cry started yeah. it off. Yeah. Uh, in 16. That was Dean Martin. Because oh, yeah. Jane. Jane's that's addiction, addiction, yeah. Because that's Chakars. Yeah. Chinese Philip Bailey. Uh, Philip Bailey, that's second out in his ad. Uh, last one, man, we used him for Chinese <laughs> with those as a hairy Chinese kid. He's never got so many royalties being used <laughs> in racist uh, game shows. Brilliant. Then Roxette and finishing with George Michael. Oh, right. yeah. So, brilliant. Who's right. the winner? Well, the winner, actually, uh, it looks to me like he's got all of them here. <laughs> and I had been discussing with, um, this mate of mine, my housemate, that we should maybe just start doing some exercise because mm. I'm being on a little bit of weight, right? He's quite a thin, tall guy. He has a belly. I don't know how to summarize it. Have you ever seen the film Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. It looks like that. Really? It's slightly grotesque. So the two of us, right, so we suggested, we decided that we were going to do some exercise together, right? This is what we're going to do. We, each morning we were going to get up, we were going to exercise together. That won't happen. Right. Well, no, but wait, Rick. You see, you're wrong because. A couple of days ago, I said to him, listen, what we should do is get one of those, like, health videos, you know, those kind of training videos, what they're called, like, um, I don't know, they might have an aerobics thing or a yeah. sort of hour-long workout. And I said to him, get one of the ones that's hosted by, like, um, Pauline Quirk. Oh. Elle McPherson or Cindy Crawford, you know, w you know, someone like that, someone sexy, right? So, uh, I swear to God, we went down this morning, we put it on, right? Just want you to picture this scene, right? It's me and my mate in our shorts, right, nine o'clock in the morning, working out- you didn't actually do it. To Helen from Big Brother's <laughs> video, right? That was- it was the cheapest one, Steve, you told me. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. We saw that advertised as yeah. well. Working out, right? And the two of us in our shorts, she's there, like, the, you know, she's the closest there is to a living Homer Simpson, right, shouting out and stuff. I just wanted to be reassured, Rick. There's nothing gay about that, is there? Um... There's nothing a touch kind of fruity about that image. No. I mean, I th the ones you'd avoid would be to Liza Minnelli right, workout. Right, Cher. Um, uh, uh, Graham Norton, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um... Dale Winton. Gay Byrne. Right, sure. He's not gay. No. But, I mean, the name's a little bit gay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, So I think, I, I think Helen from Big Brother, you're probably safe. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Who else? I don't know what, what else to tell you, really. Um... But, I mean, because I know you've got a personal trainer. I'm obviously not in that kind of state, this kind of state at the moment. I don't have that kind of cash. No. But, um, you know, I'm obviously quite excited. What have I got to look forward to? Do, do I go through a my, my, area? my, uh, my trainer, Pink Eric, we call him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, well, uh, I, um, I sort of box a little bit. But what I'm saying is, do you go through a pain barrier? What, no, 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 I stop way before that. <laughs> right. And I okay. sit down and have a beer. Right. You don't, there's no, there's no point in going <laughs> through the pain because it, it just put you off. Sure. So, um, if, if, if you, you know, start feeling any sort of pain or, or any, um, breathlessness or any aches, <laughs> yeah. sit down immediately. <laughs> now, is it right that he's worked out a special routine for you where you don't have to get up? Yeah, well, he actually said, I remember the first, was, uh, I got my food diary and he was looking at it and I could see he was, he, he sort of feared it. He feared taking on this challenge. And this is a true quote. At one point, uh, he, he said, right, um, okay, cut cheese down to five times a week then. I must have haggled from four. <laughs> cheese down to five times a week. <laughs> and it, it's sort of like, I'm my own worst enemy. Because if I cut out cheese and beer, I would just lose weight. Like, it would drop off me in a month. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just, I'm fighting it all the time. I'm, yeah. I haven't changed my sort of eating and drinking habits, but I now work out three times a week. And it's an uphill struggle, Steve. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just so you're just keeping it an even keel. I know, well, I, I, yeah. So I can live longer to eat more cheese and beer. Do you exercise, Carl? Do you do any exercise whatsoever? I, I used to go to a gym in town, but it wasn't the sort of, the hard work of doing the 
you know, the stuff, it was just like, it was like 60 quid a month. Yeah. I thought, well, that's, crazy, know, isn't it? That's not good. So I just got out of my way to sort of walk everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Instead mm. of jumping on a bus, like a nice day like today, walking to work, or, uh, you know, run up the stairs. You're uh, skinny though. <laughs> you run up the stairs. What? You're really skinny though. No, but I, I do eat a lot of, like, crappy food, so yeah. I reckon, I mean, what do they say, when you get to 30, it all just, you go mental, don't you? Yeah, you know they say I mean? that, play record. That's, is, who's that? that's the philosophers, no, isn't no, it? You when you get to 30, you go mental. No, oh, they can't. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. No. Play record. Better Bowie? Oh, yeah, oh, I brought this in, you'll love this, Steve. Oh, you know this, I think, I'm sure. This is, uh, uh, a great Bowie track off Aladdin Sane, one of my favourite albums, and this is Lady Grinning Soul. It's, it's beautiful. Back to John Boy, Silent Sign on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. You can do your own. Oh, right, okay. My name's Steve Merchant. Yeah, I'm Carl. I'm Carl. Yeah. Exactly. You've, not, you've not lost interest, have you, Rick? Uh, no, of course I haven't. Okay. Go on. They said he just, I've said it once, I, I, get, I was a bit bored with just saying your names. Okay. I don't mind saying mine because I'm sort of interested in that. <laughs> yeah, sure. But the other ones are sort of more of a chore. Do you okay. know what I mean? There's nothing okay. in it for me. Yes, <laughs> there's no actual I'd rather game. not mention either of you. Okay. So if you want to do it from yeah, now on. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, listen, um, obviously, still got plenty to come. We've obviously got uh, some great music, Rick, and that's uh, well, I've got, um, a bit of Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds. Um, actually, an album you introduced me to, and I'm gonna play, um, Into My Arms. Looking forward and to you that. know how beautiful that song is. That's true enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was just, obviously, I was talking about this little bit of acting I was doing yesterday, and, uh, not wishing to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved, but there was, um, obviously some extras or supporting artists, as I believe they know, and, you know, all good, good lovely people, really putting the effort in, doing good work and everything, but there's this one guy I stood next to, and, you know, he's quite a tall guy, uh, not quite as tall as me, but tall guy, you know, quite a good looking bloke, whatever, and, uh, I just sat there, and he, he obviously gets quite boring, because there's a lot of just hanging around, and people waiting and stuff, fixing lights, I just stood next to him, and he just went, oh, he was looking for something to say to me, obviously, and he went, looking forward to the new Guns N' Roses album? <laughs> And I went, I didn't realise there was one on the way, actually. He went, yeah, yeah, obviously they, uh, it, uh Slash won't be in it, because obviously Slash is not with them, but, uh, <laughs> bloody a sweet child of mine. One of my, one of my favourites. Just started singing some of the songs. <laughs> I went, oh, great. Without yeah. irony, I Absolutely assume. without irony. He was just wanting to get onto a discussion of Guns N' Roses. But I tell you this, he did not look like a rocker in any way. He looked like a bloke who would work in sort of an accountancy, Barclays. uh, agency. Uh, yeah, or Barclays, yeah, behind the counter, something like yeah. that. Very well scrubbed, well groomed. I was say, there's yeah. nothing wrong with Barclays or the people who work therein. <laughs> That's true, though. Okay. So he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I got into the with uh, Appetite for Destruction, the classic first album, um, but I even, you know, I enjoyed the spaghetti incident as well. I mean, I like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay. And he goes, I said, um, uh, I said to him, have you ever seen them live or anything? He went, I have not seen them live, no, but I was lucky enough to be at Donington, Monsters of Rock, <laughs> and, uh, Slash's Snake Pit was playing, <laughs> which was Slash's solo effort. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he went, I've never been, I've never been to, uh, those live gigs before, and, uh, I was down in the mosh pit. Oh, man, and I was down there, and I'll tell you this, have you been in the mosh pit? I went, oh, no, he goes, oh, it's crazy down there, it's wild. A guy p threw a punch at me, I punched him, knocked him straight out, he knocked me out, someone's in his fight went off, oh, it was amazing, it was amazing, amazing. I went, are you gonna go back? He went, no, I won't, because once you've done something like that, you can never repeat the, um, the experience. You know, I mean, I was, they, everyone there was dressed in black. I think I was the only guy wearing a white t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could just imagine him tucked in as well. That's why, yeah. that's why I attacked him. Exactly. It's like ants. <laughs> yeah. They, they Slash always... himself again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a termite in the nest. Exactly. And they just turned on him. But so the venue, so I'm going, okay, so, so, do you go to gigs often? He went, no, I don't think I'm ever going to go to another rock gig. And I said to him, why? And he went, I don't think any gig I go to will be able to top the experience of seeing UB40 live. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Do you know what I mean? And I uh, almost but, did what you well, did. Well, that's, that's why I've never seen him live, because I don't want to end my life. But I almost laughed. No point I there. thought it was a joke. I thought he was making a joke, and I was about to laugh, and I realised he was deadly serious, and I went, you be I went, 40. oh, good were they, he went, absolutely blinding. Um, one of the sure. most incredible live experiences I've ever seen. I imagine. Um, did remarkable. they do songs in a sort of mock reggae style? Apparently they two did. two hours. And then he Excellent. began to tell me which, which of his favourite, he went, I, I don't know if, I said, have they done anything recently, or put anything out? He went, I don't think they're gonna be able to top, um, those classic albums, Bag of Rhythm, and yeah. Right in the Kitchen. I remember once when I went to sign on, Okay, and it, I don't know what year it was, it must have been like 1979 or something. And, uh, I'm a third of left school. And, uh, um, tell me if I'm wrong if it wasn't out then, but this bloke was at the back with sort of like a ghetto blaster and he was playing one in ten. <laughs> right. Obviously making a point, he was in the dole office. <laughs> yeah. Everyone ignored him and when it finished playing he turned it down. <laughs> 
<laughs> and oh, he, took, wow. he took a number and queued. The days when they were a protest. <laughs> when was that? What year was that? What year oh, did I, I uh, someone can pinpoint that for me. Phone in. Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. I know it had just come out. But um, but what was amazing is when he said that about you before him being the best low experience I've ever seen. I th it was one of those moments where you thought I never thought I'd hear someone say that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why that. I can't understand what kind of person you are. I suddenly realised at that moment there was such a chasm between us. Is there anyone out there whose favourite band is UB40? <laughs> Red Wed Wine, maybe. UB40. UB40, UB yeah. Oh, they're, anyway, they're a great God bunch of blokes, though. You see them, they, they, they crack me up when I see them interviewed. They're really funny. But, um, once you've heard one, that's pretty much it, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. I imagine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm a Philistine. Maybe there's some hidden depths to them that we don't understand. Uh, Maybe some great tracks that you could yeah. know if you're a big fan. Well, I'm never going to go and see him because why, <laughs> why, no, no, why sort of like top your experiences? Exactly. You no. Know? Because you're never going to get better it. When, when I know I'm definitely dying, yeah. I'm going to go. You'll summon them get to me play me for you. Yeah. Get me here with do, Get me labour of love live. Do, do right in the kitchen. <laughs> now. This is a little bit of a treat, but I thought I would uh, join you with Rick. Uh, from The Cure's Greatest Hits, this was this double CD that they brought out recently, including 18 acoustic versions of their greatest hits. Yeah. And this is the acoustic what version. What have you gone for? I've gone for, glad you've asked, just like heaven. Wise choice. Anyway. I woke up this morning, yeah. Feeling fine. It's not a blues song. And, uh, I turned my phone on, and it, it was from Carl, and it went, forget it, I've made my mind up. And I thought, wow, what is that? And I Forget it, it, I've made my yeah, mind. Yeah, I went, Carl, what is it? He went, oh no, it's about the text I sent you last night. I went, well, what, what was it? I just got this text. He went, ah, oh. oh, I was just wondering, I was lost thinking last night. He said, supposing you had to have your hands removed. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 and the doctor said, well, you can either have them stay like that with stumps, or I can sew feet there. <laughs> what would you have? <laughs> and I was bleary eyed and I went, the stumps? He went, yeah. <laughs> I went, all right? He went, yeah. And then and what that, was his follow up text to that? And then I got the text, it was obviously before it, and it went, and it was like quite serious. What, what would you do if so he's not your hands? Would you have stumps or the feet? Right? Now, the way, uh, when I said he's made his mind up, and I went, the stumps, he went, yeah. I think secretly he decided on the feet, <laughs> but he was too embarrassed to tell me. There's a little, little bit of what would you do? Because it's it, But why night, did you think of this? Why did you think of this? Girlfriend's this away, right? Yeah, no, that's not why you start thinking bizarre <laughs> surgery I'll, I'll tell you devices. Now, right? I'll let you into my little mind, right? Last night, I um, <laughs> I had some beans on toast, right? <laughs> She was away. It's good already. She right. was away, she had some beans on toast. Right. She went wild. Yeah. Right? Now, I was stood up, I live on like a, on a high street, right? So I'm, I'm washing up, I'm looking out the window. First thing that had me attention is, I can, I can look into other people's flats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird how all these different lives were going on, I was watching them. And everybody had the telly on and was watching Volcano, right? Which was on last night. Right. right. And I thought, oh, that, that's weird, right? I can see them all watching it, and it was like a little Chinese lad who was dancing around in some underpants. <laughs> and then there's a little old woman who lives downstairs who was reading a book, and she's always reading a book every night, and it's like, I have a better life than her. And then there's, a, there's like some sort of bouncer who's always getting ready to go out late at night yeah. with all the black on. He looks like a bouncer. So I was watching all this life yeah. going on, I thought... Did you witness a murder while you were doing this? <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like that sort of sliver film where that bloke had loads of tellies watching yeah, people's sure. lives. So that was going on in my mind. And then I was washing up and I picked up the plate and I thought, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the human body, the way you can just sort of, you know, I want to pick that up and you do. Yeah. And the way your hands work, right? Yeah, You've got five little digits, but it's, it's <laughs> just the right amount to do it's what you've got. Yeah. To do it's what you've got to do, right? <laughs> so... So I'm, I'm washing, I'm cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sorry, Carl! Stop! It's just the right amount. Might be one of the most genius things I've ever heard said. I would love David Attenborough to phone you up and say, Carl, how do I word this about the evolution of the mammalian front uh, limb? Just go, we'll just say it's the right amount. It? <laughs> but it is. It one, is. One of course extra it is. would get in the way. Yeah. And one less would just make it a little bit more tricky when picking up a, a bit of a slippery dish. Sure, or, buy, <laughs> or buying gloves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A slippery dish. So then, I, I was thinking, oh. right, imagine like going to the doctors and they're saying, yeah, everything's alright, your heart's good and everything, but 
Your art's good, what your lar is, or... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your heart, your heart, yeah. you're, you're in good form and what sure. have you. It's good news, you know, I had Giano in earlier. He's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, fast uh, waller. But yeah. you're, you're all right, but your hands need to come off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Blimey. But, That's bad. Like, I get a second opinion initially. <laughs> oh, God! But a better good news, I've got a nice pair of feet I can sure. sort you out with. Yeah. And he puts them on, and then I was thinking, right, first of all, <laughs> washing up, what would that be like? <laughs> but, Steve! <laughs> That'd be it's tricky. Right. Yeah. And then the second thing was, it'd probably ruin the, the sort of the shape of your jumper. Because <laughs> you had to keep putting the feet through there. Yeah. And then I thought, but I could still cycle in. Okay. To work. You could run in. Well, that's the thing. You'd, was, be, like, you'd be really yeah. fast. Well, well, that's what I was thinking. I thought I could still cycle because I could balance. And then I thought, but the only thing is, I probably couldn't pull the brakes. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> because of little short things. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you, I thought, but then again, you're running in half the time. So that's what was going on in last night. Right. That's what I was thinking about. So sure. did, did you have How long did this take? Well, how long does it take to wash up? Right. Because I imagine you just being there for, like, all night. <laughs> Probably 25 minutes. How long did the little Chinese fella dance for in his pants? He's always doing it. Last night he was at it for, like, 10 minutes. Just, yeah. And his girlfriend never sits in the same room as him. She's always sat in the bedroom. <laughs> She's going, you, you dance in pants again, I go in next yeah. door. Well, she was in the bedroom. She's always in the bedroom, sat on the floor, on the mobile phone. Right. Really? All the time, yeah, it's weird how people's lives are just like, it is like that Groundhog Day thing. It's like, you know, he's jumping about in his underpants. The old woman's sat there reading a book. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking about my life. Do you think thought, she ever goes... Are you sure she's not dead? <laughs> <laughs> Every time you look down there, she's just flicking through it. She's just reading this book. The pages never turn. She never seems to finish it. Oh, she never moves you, from her chair. Are you sure, are you sure the Chinese her girl's cats going? cats are dead around I, her. I, I, I'm going into the next door again. That little yeah, round headed fella's smell. looking in. He's looking in at me. The bouncer goes, don't worry, love. I'll go and beat that's, him up. But he's true. always getting ready. That's true. They're they, see, they see you staring at and washing up going, I could have feet here. And they get yeah. scared. The old woman's dead. Oh, Carl, dear. can you tell us roughly which neighbourhood you live in, so so it's, that we know? It's central. Central, is it? Yeah. yeah. Wow, imagine if that little... Was he a Chinese fellow, did you say? Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if he was listening now, I'd love him to call in and explain his actions. Well, he, he might be on some other radio station talking about a lad who's always washing up and <laughs> yeah. looking at his hands in a mysterious way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, do we have this doctor, this doctor that would go, well, all right, Carl, I've got... You can either leave him with stumps, or I've got every little pair of feet. Why, uh, I mean, I t told Jane this, and Jane went, D is that the only choice? Is he, could say, could I have some dead man's hands? <laughs> have you got any, have, if you, where do you get the feet from? Where do you get the feet from? Can I have, can I have, what would you rather have then? Human feet, or monkey paws? Well, I mean, that wasn't an option last night. That if the doctors no. said- No, it was is... an option last night, but don't forget, it's in your head, Carl. <laughs> this didn't happen. No, this but I'm just saying at the time, that's all the doctor had to offer. But you know, it's your head, you can go anywhere. No, 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 it wasn't a real doctor to offer. It's in your head, you can go anywhere. <sighs> You're not trapped. Yeah, but if you can do anything, then you'd say we'll sort us out some other hands. Fair point, the fair <laughs> record. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Pilkington. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing rock buses now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we've just... Oh, we, we keep that going, then we got... Well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I, I mean, it's let's just... Let's hear the clues. It's just like you've... It, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so, this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais right. at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're going to get three clues, you've got to get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes we just said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was a Atomic, atomic kitten, kitten, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, um... <laughs> That army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. Excellent. Yeah. And the initials there are D W. Do you okay. write some of the questions for fifteen to one? <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a well similar nice phrasing trenches. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what are the initials there, Carl? On that person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. 
The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly because his little face and his his gestures. That's the second one. The initials being H V. Okay, the top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials all worn out. Right, H V. And the final one is the final clue. I was in Texas the other week. Right, I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> what's the, what's the initials? W H for that one. So I was in Texas. I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W H. Incredible. <laughs> I've got it. Is it right. great? It's fantastic. It's definitely. Okay, work. time to join the record. Time to join. Okay. Drew, you're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda Green oh. on VHS, and of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. <laughs> Okay, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, we're not actually here, um, it's the best stop. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh, see, like I say, I was lo looking around and there's stuff that is interesting, right? I was looking on the web But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know, Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Right. Oh! Well, yeah. Um, You're always unspecific, unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse a computer. <laughs> Ah! Go! You are... No, I did, I did yeah, a, no, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came up with funny things that, like, why is this person doing that, why is that... And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, oh, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, I put in why to <laughs> confuse the computer. Like, we'll go, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it! Yeah. Right. Yeah, what is it this week? What's the, what's the phrase? Where, um, remember the story I told you ages ago about, uh, about my neighbour having horse in the house? Oh, yeah. Having yeah. a horse, yeah, a horse. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's happened with that? Lenny Henry doing it as a series? So, uh, uh Are people nicking your ideas left, right and centre? Well, that's that's the phrase we'll be using anyway. What? Um, my neighbour had horse in her house. How many words is that? Six. My neighbour had. So, there's no grammar either. My neighbour had horse in the house. <laughs> my neighbour had horse in house. <laughs> what? I wait. What is the phrase? My neighbour had horse in her house. Add or, add, is there, oh, are there any <laughs> prepositions? Are, are there any prepositions in this sentence? Look, don't judge it beforehand. You see, okay. I'm turning over a new leaf. I think this is a great idea. I think Carl's a genius, and I look forward to hearing this enormously. Yeah, okay. And I won't be sick on your leg, or squeeze your head, or make you jump when you're making the cup of tea. <laughs> what have we got then? That's that. Right. That's the silly side. Now let's get on with the proper show. Right. <laughs> song, songs, a phrase. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Um, on to the classy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to do the prizes first? Right. Uh, no, then we're all right. Here they are. I haven't seen these, but I'm excited as ever. All right, we have a T-shirt there, arbitrary T-shirt that you have probably stolen off of someone. What does it say? Duh, duh, duh. Is it the red, the red hot chili peppers? So oh, that's, right. that's not too bad. It's a big T-shirt there. Um, oh, do, 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 do. on DVD. This, uh, should you be giving this away? This looks like it's the film. Don't say a word. Yeah. And it's um, it doesn't have all the proper packaging. It's literally the. Uh, the disc, the DVD disc, just loose. So enjoy that. The current album from Oasis, uh, Heathen Chemistry, uh, DVD, on DVD, The Life of Mammals, the complete series, the David Attenborough recent DVD, uh, that. Walking with Cavemen, which I think is a DVD, it's all currently on TV, isn't it? And, well, there um, you go. Not also bad. the X List, which is a good new compilation, double CD compilation from XFM with loads of stuff on there, including Nerd, Snoop Doggy Dog, uh, Athlete, all sorts. Go on then, Carl. So not bad, actually. Nice stuff. one. Why right, then? so, uh, yeah, it's a phrase that, that's been said. At some point, I've said a lot on the show. We've had like airy Chinese kid. We went back to uh, my mum had wind for five minutes and that. Uh, today we're looking at uh, my neighbour had a horse in a house, right? Yep. If you remember, we were talking about that probably about a year and a half ago now. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, of course, right. people, of course, people remember. They've been talking about it ever since, Carl, I imagine. Yeah. Well, so it's famous. It's, the, it's a world famous phrase, my neighbour had a horse in her house. <laughs> right, so this is uh, this week's songs of phrase, and what I've done is I've got songs with those words in that make up that sentence. Yeah. You get all email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. There's six different songs, right? You email in with what? I what don't know, there is six. Me neighbour had horse in house. Is it really that sentence? My neighbour had a horse in a, a, a house. It does work, honestly, it works. Okay, yeah, right? okay, don't bother explaining it, just ready? play it. Right, yeah. so here's the, uh, here it is. We're just gonna do it. Head horse in a house. Right? <laughs> what <laughs> in <laughs> God's and name just, was that? Yeah, name the six songs. My neighbour had horse in a house. Huh? <laughs> Are we naming the artists or the songs? Either. A artists. Anyone who really. gets anything can get a prize. What's more cool? Artists, here we go. My neighbor had horse in a house. <sighs> That's tricky, Carl. That's very hard. What's more? My neighbor had horse in a house. Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'll give it. Another let down. Another let down. It's brilliant, this. No. No. How can you just say that after I've just been stuffing grapes in my face and well, that? Well, you found- you found- you didn't get one burger in, right? Even when you tried to- to chop it up, there's three, right? So that's it. it Steve, out of the goodness of his heart, went to McDonald's, okay? I got some grapes, you- at 62. That's got nothing to do with this, though. This is my game show here. Bob Olness didn't say, yeah, Blockbusters is good, but I never see him eating grapes. <laughs> So this yeah. is a different thing, forget that. Right? <laughs> Here's Eclipse again, here's Eclipse. <laughs> oh, you know I said I was gonna turn over a new leaf and not criticise your ideas? I think it's the end of this one, mate. We should give, um, the prizes away. Yeah, well Carl. this is- this has been dreadful, that, this thing. We started <laughs> off well with him trying to force burgers in his mouth, and then he'd come up with this tat. I mean, this is- this is the end of this, cos it's- I mean, it was shoddy to start with, and I had a deal a couple, well this is- oh, yeah. not only- well, uh, 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 I'm just saying. This is what I was saying in the pub yesterday when you tried to be sick on my leg. I was saying, come up with new ideas if you don't like them, but you diss them on air. Well, it's just disappointing, isn't it? And I was in my What's that? I was disappointed when I was choking before. <laughs> <laughs> we were disappointed as well. Yeah. You didn't try. You didn't try with the grapes. You were just like right, chewing on right. that. You meant to just throw them in and swallow them. Songs a phrase. It was six songs. It yeah, sounded like this. Boring. Head balls in a house. Well, what are they? Just give you answers. Six songs there. We had uh, Lionel Richie, My Destiny for my. Tricky. Neighbour. Oh, that's XFM. Ooh. My neighbour was. Uh, space. Space. Yeah. Neighbourhood. Mm. Had. Uh, Ari Connick Jr. Had to be you. Yeah. Right. It had. Your neighbour had. A horse. Horse from America. Name. America, yeah. Uh, a horse. In, in, in was Lisa Sansfield with uh, <laughs> pathetic in all the right places. Oh, <laughs> pathetic! Did anyone get that? Did anyone get that? And no one got. No that. one got that. Animals. That was pointless. All right. Well, the most, well, any the most anyone got was three, yeah. and so uh, we're going to give it to Deborah. Uh, okay, prizes to give away this week. You've uh, excelled yourself again. We've got once again Scotland rocks, the very best of Scottish music, Texas Deacon Blue, Brilliant. and uh, Jerry Rafferty. Proclaim's on there, or not? <laughs> Proclaim is there, don't worry, Delamitri's well, on there as well, don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. It's oh. based on there, it's based on there. I'm just checking to see if Midgeur and Hugh and Gry feature, but they do, thankfully. I don't know. Uh, the Rizillos as well. Oh, and Gun. brilliant. Brilliant, that That's is brilliant. So look forward to that. Is Lulu on there or not? Oh, is she not on there? I can't no, see she's her not actually. on there. She's not on there. But, uh, the, no wet, are the wets. Are the wets on there? All well, the wets or not? The Fair ground infraction. Uh, brilliant. Brilliant. That's on there, so. Uh, is we Hootie McToove <laughs> on there? And is, uh, is, uh, Jamboree? <laughs> uh, what's this? This is another arbitrary compilation uh, called Brilliant. Strange and Beautiful. The Brilliant. Exodus album, which is quite good. Yeah. The new album by the White Stripes. Uh, the DVD Walking with Cavemen, that TV the show that's on. On VHS, uh, it's, it's still got the price on there. On VHS, in case you haven't seen it. Uh, Fight Club and the best selling book from Michael Moore's Stupid White Men. So actually, some quite good prizes there, Carl. Not yeah. bad. Alright, Carl, what's this? What's this competition? Right, Songs of Phrase. It's where I, uh, Get a line that sort of s is said a lot on the show, or has been said on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but what we're doing is um, my favourite. Uh, the Elephant Man's my favourite film. Is that the phrase? Yeah, that's the phrase that we're looking at today. The Elephant Man's my favourite film. It is as well. It's yeah. his favourite film. I know. I know. What yeah. is that again? So, cause it's funny and sad, and it, it's uh, you know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. They promise you an elephant man, that's exactly what you get. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Have you seen it, Steve? I have seen it, It yeah. is good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you remember at the beginning of the elephant man? Think of that! 
having a, that as your favourite film, of all the hundreds of amazing films, I mean, yeah. the, uh, I mean, I mean, just it's a good film and it's yeah. a moving film. Yeah, but I can't imagine it's a film I would watch endlessly again I don't and again. Care about a bloke with a no, elephant head? Watched a little bit of it again huh? the other night. It's one of them that you know just sort of reminds you. You know what annoys me when he goes, yeah. "I am not an animal." Mm. He is. Well, <laughs> I mean, he speaks like one. <laughs> and what does an elf? He's got, got he looks like one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was a bit unfair because they never let him look in a mirror because he's a bit odd looking and it upset him. Yeah. So his hair was always a mess. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. made him look worse than he actually was. Yeah, 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 yeah. But a good film, get it out if you haven't seen it. That's the phrase today. Do you uh, know, um, my, uh, I remember my friend introduced me to that film and if you remember at the beginning there's a big montage because he is, uh, working in a, in a zoo, isn't he, or he's been kept in a zoo. And there's a sequence of, uh, of various, of elephants, I think, actual elephants kind of rampaging and it's just quite a sort of moody, atmospheric montage. Is he king of the elephants? Can well, he my friend, my friend said to me when we watched this, he said, what happens is he gets trampled on by some elephants and that's what makes him look like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, right, and I watched it and I thought, that's not the case, and I tried to explain it to him and he's, to this day, still convinced that the Elephant Man, it's like a, it's like when Spider-Man like, gets bitten, bitten by a spider. Yeah, yeah. It was his man, wasn't the it? The Elephant Man. <laughs> the power of an elephant. <laughs> Wait, his, was it his mum who got- He never forgets. Anyway. Be careful. Is it, his mum what? Wasn't it his mum who was pregnant and then they ran over her and- No, I don't think so. That's the impression I got from it. No. You are joking, aren't you? <laughs> no. I thought, I, I honestly, th anyway, right, so the phrase is, my favourite films, The Elephant Man. Oh, well, well, yeah. Uh, there's five songs make up that, that sentence. Yep. Yeah. Right, this week. Have a listen, see if you can work out the songs. Email in, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, right? Mm. And you win all that stuff, mm. Steve just said, so, uh, mm. right, here we go then. The Elephant Man <laughs> that was mostly done. Genius. Right. Let's hear it again. Yes. Here we go. Five songs there, The it's Elephant not, Man not is so hard, my favourite film. Well, I thought we'd make it a bit easier. Make it a bit easier, yeah. yeah. Just, right. just one more. The Elephant Man Uh, email only <laughs> ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. We got the result of the uh, quiz, Carl. Or? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just play it one more time. It was Songs of Phrase. Is this <laughs> the last time we're doing this? Oh, I thought so. I thought it worked better this week because it was actually doable. Yeah. I think that makes a difference, Carl. We haven't done Carl's an idiot yet. Carl, you're an idiot, have we? Oh, well, that's a reason to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can end with that one right. when you come back. Right. right, well, the five songs that made up this little thing here was Mysteries, Beautiful Blues, Eels. Innocent Man, Billy Joel, in my favourite waste of time, Owen, Owen Paul, Boom Rhapsody, Queen, mm -hmm. Girls on Film, Duran Duran, it sounded like this. The Elephant Man is my favourite film. Hang on, was Bohemian Rhapsody in there? Yeah, yeah. it is. It is, is this the oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, well, we're going to give that to uh, Piley. He just calls himself Piley, Ian Pyle. Uh, good work, Piley. What's happened to Anders? Well, I, I was just going to say, actually, we've not had correspondence from Richard Dicky Anders for some time. The Dickmeister, Dickmeister yeah. General, I in his, his naughty, naughty, insulting ways. Yeah, Anderson used to email regularly. Anders, get on your computer. Get in touch, mate. What just do you think of, what think of the show? Uh, hold on, though. To be fair, um, he was listening w when we were pretty shoddy. Yeah, uh, if he's listened to the last three weeks, I think we're owed a little apology from you, Dickster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, listen, Piley, um, we want to send you all those goodies, including Scottish rock, um, but uh, we don't have your uh, address, so uh, email in your address. That was the Travis and some flowers through my window. <laughs> this is uh, XFM 104.9 of a Saturday afternoon, just gone six minutes past one. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello there, hi. Good to talk to you. Uh, Carl Pilkington is over there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Keeps it real.
<laughs> yeah. Respect, Carl. Oh. Rick, um, I just think, you know, we want to lift off the show straight away. Yeah. Into the, uh, stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. the best way to do that, it seemed to me, was to resurrect a game we used to play when we first began the show in old XFM days. Do you oh, remember the yeah. game, do you remember the game Make rub, Ricky rub, Gervais Rub me laugh? hard. Rub you hard? No, no. No, no, no what, what, that was only in the pilot. We never <laughs> actually used that on live Okay, right. Um, no, it was the game Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Oh, I remember, and We yeah. used to get people, uh, Carl, you probably didn't hear it, we used to get people to sort of send in pictures and, uh, jokes and stuff. And if I could make Ricky laugh, on air with those. He won a toffee. Things, then they won a gift of some kind. Yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of, a lot of emails actually say people love your laugh, Rick. So I was, in a sense, we're giving they, the public what they we want. They must be taking the mickey. But this is a picture I found in today's copy of the Sun. So if, if, uh, you're listening at home and you want to know what the picture looks like, rush out and buy a copy, only 40p. Yeah. And, uh, it Are we sponsored by the sun? <laughs> we do white van, man. Exactly. <laughs> it immediately straight away this, because bear in mind, right. it is one of the world's biggest rock stars. Okay. Just check out the face. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fantastic! Look at that. Oh, that is Michael Stipe. Oh dear, with sort of glasses, looking like I don't know, some sort of Nazi officer. That's <laughs> not libelous. That's not libelous. Mike, you, in your opinion, Michael Stipe. Yeah. He's outside there during the press conference yeah. for Peter Bucks. It's picture. not a good picture. I love. I think I love R.E.M. I and mean, I love most of I think he's a lovely man, but that's a bad picture, isn't it? He's <laughs> got <laughs> big glasses on and yeah. stubble. Obviously, he's got bald head. He doesn't appear to be looking at anything. He's <laughs> no, looking right he's beyond like everyone else. Can you <laughs> see that? <Carl? laughs> I'll tell you what he looks like. He looks like Zig, I think, from Zig and Zag. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like well, he's a muppet go. made of foam. Oh, I love I mean, it. Nice the, to see that game the, come back. Yeah, the, 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 the medium success. of radio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a good picture that is. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it. Coming up soon, we've got <laughs> Sir David of Bowie, <laughs> Nicholas Cave, uh, <laughs> and Travis Flowers in the Window again. <laughs> Play a song. Uh, Aerodynamic on XFM 104.9. It's alright. It's alright then. Uneventful, wasn't it? Really? <laughs> so, like, I, like, I left a sequence to go in. Yeah. <laughs> Popped out for a coffee. Yeah. I don't want to diss the funny little French lads. Sure. But, uh, you know. Try harder. Are they French? Yeah, oh god, yeah. Sorry. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak much French, Rick? I speak un peur. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can ask, where is the Tourist Information Bureau? And, um, uh, I like, I can express my preference in music tastes, yeah. and I can order an Orangina, and that's all I can do. I, I know, um, yeah, blonde. Press the on, I think. That means, um, draft your friends. <laughs> <laughs> to, to Emily Music Folk? Oh, that's <laughs> filthy. So <laughs> that means, Carl. No, go on. Really dirty. <laughs> really dirty. To Emily Music Folk. Yeah, you dirty. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you filthy little f <laughs> Frenchy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. But, um, do you know, do you, want, do you know much French, Carl? Um, have you got any fromage? <laughs> <laughs> That'd work. That's cheese fine. or fish. <laughs> it's it's cheese, cheese or fish. It's cheese. Would you not care which one you were given? You like both. I it's think, the, I think that's a whole different kettle of poisson. Yeah. <laughs> I just think when you're in, in a country, you should have a, have a little go. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's a very little go. Yeah. You, you mean like football hooligans have a little go? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, try and have, have a go at their, uh, yeah. their language. And well, that. what I do is I go in there and I point and talk a bit louder than usual in perfect English. <laughs> and if they don't get it, I go mental. <laughs> exactly. Securing the fact that I've tried my best and now I'm <laughs> in a laugh. And oh. that is, the, that is the, the prerogative of all Englishmen. Or just yeah. point. Point and shout. Yeah, yeah. point and shout. Don't yeah. forget, you, you know, because you can never be foreign if you're English. Anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're speaking funny. Just remember that. Yeah? Yeah. God save <laughs> me. <laughs> Sorry, go on then. You were gonna say something else. Yeah. Um, that's the picture you showed me. Yeah. Uh, I wish we could post one on the website of Carl. Remember we won that, we won an award ages ago. Uh, what was it called? The British Radio Authority Award. Yeah. And, um, we made Carl get in the picture. And he was a bit medicine, a bit it, it came us. But, his head, his perfectly circular. <laughs> I put a coin on it, and it, and only the ears popped out from behind the coin. Isn't it perfectly round? Isn't it? I mean, it? W when you've been saying I've, I've got a round head, I was a bit like, yeah, everyone has. Stop having a go. Yeah. And I saw this picture last week. I thought, God, he's right. Can we? Uh, can we? Can't we just pop it on the XLM website? I'd rather not. I'll go on. Just Steve, get someone. Have you seen that that man in a jar without a brain? <laughs> 
Sorry, you have, you have, is that something? Is that a product you can buy? <laughs> <laughs> in like Sainsbury's? Uh, is it a dream you had yesterday? And you wonder if you could. Can I? Uh, yes, hello. Um, could you make my dream into <laughs> reality, <laughs> please? <laughs> well, we can't actually, sir. <laughs> in uh, plastic would be good. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you mean? In the future, you'd be able to download your dreams and then just like act them out again, probably in the year two thousand or something. Yeah. Yeah. Soothsayer. Now there's some museum somewhere. Yeah. That's got this little fella who was born without a brain, and he's in a jar, <laughs> and it's just that like, he's got a really round head. Right. And when I saw this picture, I thought, God, it, it, it just reminded me of this little fella yeah. in a jar. Oh, and <laughs> what do you mean he's born without a brain? He was born without a brain. So it's a baby? Uh, it's not a little fella. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Do you know the difference? Do you, do you have conversations with, like, people in prams thinking, that fella's little, and he doesn't talk much. Yeah. You know babies aren't, like, little people. Well, maybe... Well, they are little people, but, I mean, they're not, they're not very small adults. They're not, like, midgets. They don't do a job of work, is what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're very, yeah. What do you mean? I didn't read about it, I just saw the picture. And this is where you're going mind. wrong, Carl. This is always your mistake. You see the picture, you don't read the little caption. But what do you mean? How do you, you think... You guess what you think the meaning is. But how did you know he didn't have a brain? He said something like the brainless man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, people say that about you. It doesn't mean you, literally you haven't no, got no, a spinal cord. I, I, I bet somebody's seen it and, and knows what I mean. It's a famous picture. Right, like... call in 08700 800 1234. Once again, uh, you win a prize if you can tell us what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Just in general. It's an ongoing competition. <laughs> We're trying to find some CDs to anyone who knows what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas, two times. Well, we've had calls confirming that there was indeed, um, a fetus or, or a stillborn child. A pickled born, baby. A pickled baby. No wonder it died. Uh, born without a brain. Um, but everyone has, um, you know, pointed out that it wasn't a little fella. <laughs> it certainly wasn't a little fella. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> because it had been in the jar for a long time, I think it had aged a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you basing you, that on? You do carry on growing, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, your ears and your nose. Your ears and your nose. And your eyes don't grow, so, uh, yeah. you could probably, uh, yeah. I'll dig it out for you. Yeah. Imagine if, if, like, there was an experiment where <laughs> they were raising a child just based on the information that we said on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. kind of a person it was like download, yeah, 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 yeah. And what it kind just, of information would they And have? it took everything literally. Exactly. And I think, yeah, there was no, there's no irony or, uh, yeah, it was just... They just, everything we said they assumed was fact. Everything and, and Carl said And any question, fact, any question out about the world, it could only ask Carl. Exactly. And it See, would now, be... See, now, this worries me because without wishing to be disrespectful in any way, Carl, you know I think you're the best man on earth. When you have a child, we could be in a situation a bit like that. Do you know, is it a concern for you, do you think, that, like, when your son's growing up or your daughter and they're asking you questions, you're conscious, I mean, you yourself have admitted that yeah, you, have a, you have a sphere of knowledge which you are an expert on. Ask your mother. You'd say, ask your mother. <laughs> That's good. That's great, fair enough. That's good. And I'd play with it. I think I'd be a good dad. Yeah, cool. I think you would. But I wouldn't be the one who's shouting at it. No. No. I Who would you get to shout at? Yeah. Probably Windsor Davis. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be good, wouldn't he? You horrible little man! <laughs> well, you know, I'd tell it the rights and wrong. You don't have to be a really bright person to know the rights and wrong in the world. Yeah. yeah. No. I think you are bright, Carl. You are. And at what point in their, um, in their life would you tell them about the evolution of the baguette? <laughs> <laughs> Which you told us. Or the me. story of the bee. Yes. That you <laughs> scored, scored once. Or the two children. Would you ever get them to meet <laughs> yeah. a bit like that? They could be godparents. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the friends you had at school. Yeah. The webbed the, hands. The, <laughs> big heads and big webbed heads. hands. That weren't friends. That weren't friends. I wish we could track them, Dave. Oh, that'd be great. I imagine they're in a zoo. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Oh, yeah. two big That's jars. Park, yeah. Two big jars. Industrial strength jars. Oh, dear. Man. Guess what? Go on. Um, this is one of our last shows. We're going away, I'm afraid, on the, um, 4th of May, isn't it? I can't remember. That's our last show, the 4th of May. Um, yeah, not forever. I, I brought a downer on the whole thing then, yeah. didn't I? There's people cheering. Well, guess who's taking over from us? And I found this out. I was watching Liquid News the other night. Right. No one had called me. Zoe Ball. Well, she's a good presenter, but is, is this confirmed? I don't know. How should I have said that? Is this true? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, you've done it now. Good. Yeah. She, she was in the other day. You watched it on the telly, so. Yeah. But what annoys me is this is rather like when we got, according to last week's uh, Media Guardian, we got wrapped for uh, saying the word cock on the radio. And, um, oh. what we never did, did we? That was, we had to read that on the internet. We yeah. never told us. That, that just slipped out of your mouth, didn't it? What's that, cock? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. And, um, now we don't even get told face to face that Zoe Ball's gonna take over. Yeah, but it was only, like, sorted out the other day, and then uh, when I saw you. We're allowed to say Ball, aren't we? Yeah. When I saw right. you yesterday, I said, yeah, it's. So we're not allowed to say 
Oh. No, no. I'm not going to say the word. And we're not going to say the, we're, we're not allowed to say the, we are allowed to say the male bird is a cock. We're not allowed to say the other yeah. one. But we are allowed to say ball. Yeah. What if her and her dad, Bobby, uh, would they be, would we be able to say a pair of balls? We'll be able to say that, and uh, I don't know. I don't think he's part of the deal. <laughs> so you don't need to. In fact, if if she's listening, call in and confirm it. We're let on the air, won't we? As long as she doesn't swear. Yeah, don't be rude. Yeah, don't be rude, Zoe. No. Yeah. <laughs> don't I mean, be better, chief, basically. Better warn as well not to leave too much, no, nothing lying around. Because it'll be gone. <laughs> Especially if it's scag. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft, Science of Silence. Steve, if there was a record of the week, that would be a record of the week. You're a big fan, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's make it record of the week. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's record of the week. Richard Ashcroft. Excellent. Science of silence. Brilliant. No one gives us anything anyway. Are these pluggers, they come in. We get things like homemade bands that they've pressed it in their garage. Yeah. You can hear their mum in the background going, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Mum! <laughs> we're recording this for XFM! <laughs> yeah. 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, what have you got for us? I was just thinking, the irony is, we're the only people on this station, I think, who play their own records, aren't we? I know. Oh, there's loads of people who do. Rubbish. John Kennedy plays what he wants. Yeah, he's on in yeah, the Yeah, he's, he's on three o'clock in the morning, no one's up. Plays. Zoe, on drive, she plays some uh, stuff. Uh, what do you mean, what does she play? Fat Boy well, Slim, probably. Here's another remix. You know. I won't say who it's by. Christian <laughs> plays some of his own. Does he? Yeah, so. Yeah, but they're probably novelty songs, aren't they, boy? Right, <laughs> listen, right, um, yeah, New Year and all that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's great, isn't he? Rock really? Busters, rock Busters is on the way, we're getting some good stuff coming in. I have so. to say, I'm, I'm amazed. Every answer I've had so far has been correct. I listen to the clues, I've got no idea. And I know you, Carl, I spend time with you. Have I you know seen how you the work. XFM listeners? <laughs> well, of course they're the same as Carl. Sure. Of course they've got the same mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. Right. So what did you do for New Year, incidentally? Well, I met- I cocked it up a bit. Right. You're joking. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> You're joking, mate. Go on. I went and, uh, booked the <laughs> You table. got the wrong day. No, <laughs> <laughs> booked, booked a table at a restaurant that was shut. <laughs> right? What? I booked a, a table at a restaurant, and the one that I called, it wasn't the one. The call had been diverted. So <laughs> Suzanne said, call them up and see what they're serving, right? Because I forgot to do that when I booked the table, right? Mm -hmm. That's so, great anyway. So I got, because the thing is, right, it's a restaurant in Covent Garden, but they've got one in Victoria. But when they answered and they said, no, 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 Victoria, I thought that was the person who was answering the phone. Do you know how some people say the name? Right. Right? So then when I called them up and said, what you, you thought, saying? You thought he sounded a bit funny. Right? <laughs> so, uh... I'm confused, Carl, but probably not more. Well, no, it was, a, bran you okay, on the, it was a branch of a, um... All right, all right, uh, all right, right you, you want to give the restaurant away. So he phoned it up, there's one in Common Garden, they answered the so phone. So it's not, the restaurant's not called no, 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 no. No, no, they, they are, they, they said, no, 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 Victoria. Why can't we name the restaurant? I don't know why. It's not libelous. Are we scared that, like, are you scared people are going to sort of see you in there because it's your regular home? No, it's just that, uh, you know, you got paid for stuff, haven't you? Right. I mean, it's... Okay, anyway, so you've I got- I mentioned it before New Year, but it's not- So no, did you go all the way now, to it? the restaurant to find out that it was closed? No, no, no. What happened is- I Was that the name of the restaurant again? <laughs> 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 right, the restaurant's <laughs> called Christopher's. They've got one in Covent Garden, they've got one in Victoria. He right. phoned up, he went to book, it's a lovely restaurant, I've been there often, I recommend it to him. He phones up, he says, can I have a table for new, uh, new Year? He said, no problem, sir. Right? And then, uh, so then I said, oh, you better call up to see if they'd, to see if they've got any haddock on the, <laughs> uh, menu. Uh, and he went, hello, and they went, hello, uh, Christopher's. Victoria went, Victoria? They went, yeah, he went, oh, no. That's it, innit? So then, I just said, no, forget it. I'm not going all the way over there. <laughs> so I cancelled it, right? So, <sighs> then I called up Suzanne and said, look, I made an error. Uh, the yes. place we were going to is shut. Was she so, surprised again, or? So I went up going, so she said, oh. Try some other places, and I did. They were all booked up, yeah. right? I was fed up anyway. I ate New Year. It's always like this, isn't it? So, <laughs> so uh, I said, look. You know the common factor in all these stories? <laughs> you hate Christmas, you hate birthday, it's you hate New Year. It is you. Right. Yeah. So, I said, I'll sort something out. Yeah. So I went to Tesco. Leave it with me. Went to Tesco's, booth went was to shut. Tesco. Got, yeah. a, got a lovely plate of condoms. Did you just stay in and play with the, her birthday <laughs> <laughs> Christmas gifts? <laughs> Blowing them up. Yeah. Yeah. I've done, look, look, I've done some balloons. <laughs> well, it, it was. I think we did stay in. And I watched, uh, that thing that, you know, under greatest moments, which was annoying me. Did you see, um, there was a nudist on it. You know how I feel about them. Mm, yeah. Right? Um, did you man, see him? Man with two knobs. There was a man with two knobs on it. And, uh, a nudist who, uh, 
just like wanders about the house. But it said, it said, uh, and when he visits people, uh, they, I was thinking, who, who lets him visit? I go, exactly, yeah. But, yeah. but he must go there with trousers on and go, hello, lovely to see you. Can I just pop all these off? <laughs> well, not really, no. And I'll tell you what, what annoyed me the most, he had a white sofa. If you were a nudist, you'd get, you'd get a darker one. <laughs> right? So anyway, right, so we ended up watching that. That annoyed me. And then, um, I was tired by about eleven and I said, oh, let's go to bed. And she said, you can't. And that annoys me, the fact that, because it's New Year, you gotta stay up. And it's like, well, why? Can't we just, you should bring it forward. So in case you want to- To quarter to ten, quarter to ten. <laughs> well, you say, yeah, well, you stay up and it's like, my eyes were dead heavy and I was like, oh, I wanna go to sleep. So just stay up and then it's midnight and you go up in New Year, then you go to bed. Yeah. Well, not everyone, Carl. Some uh, people have a little party. Uh, um, so- So it's over with anyway. Uh, uh, yeah. So- oh, yeah. Are you 86 years old? <laughs> 86 minutes. Do you ever enjoy- okay, you never seem to have any fun, Carl. This is what disappoints me, this is what worries me. I feel like you're gonna die- You're here, young, to, you're, you're here, Carl. With us two, we've got three, as I was just saying to Steve, three of the greatest comedy minds ever in one room, and Steve pointed out since the goodies. True. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean it should you, be party central. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, right, so this is when I spent time thinking of new ideas. Right. So that's when I came up with, uh, what did I come up with? Rituals. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is about, uh, it's good to have a flathead in India. Hi there, just blow yeah. us past just that. Just yeah. It's good to have a flathead in India. Is that it? Um, well what they do is they put wood round your head and sort of clamp it and the flatter head you've got apparently the more attractive in some part of India, can't remember. So that's like a, that's a ritual. So I don't know where to start with this. No. Well leave it, leave it. Um, we've, we, we'll be doing that, well we've done it. That's, that's so that was the first week. one, was That's it? what happened this week! <laughs> right, we've also got, um, we've also got the doing Edom, which yeah. we carried on from last year, okay, which is finding out, you know, what animals we need in the world, which ones we can get rid of, I'm talking to experts and that, finding yeah. that out. We're doing Rockbusters, that's on the way, we're getting emails in. And, uh, what do you think of that then? What do you think of that then, of course? <laughs> I love this that he treats this show like it's a checklist for what he's got to pack for holiday. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, he just goes, sun cream, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all <laughs> like, it's done. Look, look at his face! No, but I try and come up with stuff that people will remember and go, that's interesting, I'll tell my mates that in the pub. Another one I'm, I'm thinking of doing, do you know the film Around the World in 80 Days? Ooh. Around the World in 80 Gervais. And yeah, what I do, I give you like little, uh, things like little bits of information about countries, so that if you go, you go like, oh, I don't, don't want to go there. This is terrible thing to say, and I apologise. I, I, I can't think of the PC word for it, but I think car is slightly retarded. Yes, I was just going to think. I was just thinking the same. Yeah, yeah. Is there something we can do about that? Is just play a record. Just keep the. Could talking. we get ourselves registered as a charity? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Badly drawn boy, born again. On XFM, 104.9. I was just sorry, I was just looking to see if that's a new single. It looks like it probably yeah, is, right, if that's of interest to you. It's a new one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, well, first of our, um, regular features with Carl. We've got Rockbusters, that's rolling. There's, uh, people coming in, they're, they're getting them right. I don't, I don't understand well, myself. Well, as ever, Rick, you'll be, uh, you'll be amazed and confounded. So I don't know the answer and I haven't looked at the answers. I, I just like that moment. It's like when you go down Christmas and you're excited about a present and it's like some condoms. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, yeah. I love that, that. <laughs> that moment. Yeah. Um, I, right. just, I don't know how he's gonna top that next year. I don't know how he's gonna top that. All I can think of is some corn plasters. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, it's alright, love. The batteries are included. Got your pumice stone. <laughs> right, now, do we need them? Do we need them? It's something we started a few weeks ago, uh, we're always talking about animals and insects and that, and um, it's like, you know, if you took an animal out of the world, would would we have problems, right? Would it That's, make any difference? Yeah, would it make any difference? We That's did jellyfish last time, didn't we? Yeah. We the, sorted that out. The woman said we've got to keep them. We do uh, need them, because turtles eat them. Yeah. Um, so, I've moved on. Octopus. Do we need the octopus? Yeah. Let's find out. working through um, a load of animals, right, that, uh, and, and finding out whether we need them or not, right? Right. Because like, jellyfish to me, I'm a bit puzzled by them, I don't really know why we need jellyfish, and I spoke to some experts. Turtles eat them. 
What? Turtles eat them. Yeah, I know, but do we need turtles? Do you know what I mean? It, it goes on and on, doesn't it? We need humans. Well, you know, I mean, that, I might get to that bit, but yeah. I need to sort out the animals first, I've got right. a lot on. So, the thing is, I've, I've left the jellyfish, we know we need them, right? right. So, octopus. Yeah. Right, I know they're pretty brainy. Incredibly brainy. Um, a story that I heard, I don't know if it's true, but uh, there was some science lab somewhere, right? Yeah. Where they had some octopus in it, and they had some crabs. Yeah. And at night, the octopus was like getting a bit bored on its own in the dark and that, and they, they sort of come alive in the dark, don't they? Yeah. They like the dark. Yeah. And the octopus had, like, had its eye on the crabs, and at night when it's dark, it was getting out of its little cage, crawling along the floor, getting in the crab's cage, getting them out and eating them. I don't doubt it. We put jam jars with the lids on, with crabs in, and they'll open the jam jar and... You're joking? Yeah. You and I sometimes struggle with them. <laughs> yeah, we don't do it... R well, well, you don't do it really, really tight, but... Oh, right, so they're not that clever, then? Well, they would, if they were strong enough, they'd open it, but just not that strong. Oh, that's mad. Right, I also know that uh, if they get hungry, they, they eat their own legs. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, the death. No, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They don't live very long. Um, they can squash themselves into small jugs. Oh, yeah, they can go in a demijohn through the narrow neck and that. Why Why do they need to do that? Because they're the sort of crevices and holes that they're hunting for crabs and things through. So, would they be better if they were smaller? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I really don't know. It's... Yeah. But octopus then, if if Noah said to you, you know, we're, we're, we're having a clear out. Yeah. We've got too many animals to look after and that in the sea, taking up too much room. Right. Do we need them? I think there's other l less useful things in the sea than octopus. Limpets, they could go. Limpets? Yeah, they just sit on a rock and do nothing for 50 years. But they're not getting in the way then, how big are they? Well, not very big. Yeah, you see, I, I might come round to them, but I, I, I never think, oh, you know, I'm sick of seeing these limpets. Whereas octopus, you know, crawling about, opening jam jars and that. You'd never see them, though, they're pretty, really rare. Well... If we get two or three caught a year, it's a, you know, it's quite amazing. Do we need them? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we'll just have to keep them then. What is your favourite word? Uh, I don't think I've got a favourite. Because you only use them when you need to, don't you? I don't just go about saying the same word. So, uh Well, alright. Yeah, it's not my favourite, it's just that it does the job. It's, it does the, the necessary job for that time, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, how are you? I'm alright. It's a greeting. What about, um... I think serendipity was voted England's favourite word. Never used it. No, stupid word. Who decided that? I don't know, it was a poll, but I will suggest things. I'm, I can't believe people coming up going, um, favourite word, <laughs> serendipity. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So, yeah, but, yeah. but the thing is, say if it meant, oh, I'm fed up, would it still be the best word? Is it based on how it sounds and how it's put together or what it means? Bit I think both. everything. But then loads of words are being left out on, you know, which are probably brilliant words, and they're not getting a look in. Such as? Uh, well, like that one, fed up. I'm fed up. It two, sums two it words, up, doesn't it? Two well, words. two, you know. Uh, it just sums it up. When someone goes, how are you? You go, I'm fed up, me. Sick of it. It's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to it. Come on, two, two of you are the favourite, right? I've had enough. It's just all stuff These like aren't words, they're <laughs> phrases. They're uh, all negative, they're yeah. all whinging. These aren't, exactly, these aren't words. What's your favourite thing? My favourite thing to do is moan. Yeah. That would be the favourite, well, it's not one word, it's loads of words. Fed up, sick of it, ah, oh, that's enough, ah, oh, <laughs> jeez. Whinge should be your favourite word. Yeah. Whinge is a good word. I like NGEs. Mm. Lozenge, <laughs> whinge, flange. Yeah. What is your least favourite word? Uh, it might be serendipity. <laughs> that would be up there for me. I tell you what, that would be up there for me. Uh, probably that like a... French words that have made it into the English thing. Blamange. Just, just. There's a mange. There's an mange there. <laughs> so you know. How could you dislike it? How could you dislike blamange? <laughs> but just, just you know, as if we haven't got enough words in our books. 
Go on. Because I was thinking about, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Alph alphabet, right? Why have we got that many? When other countries get by without that many letters in it. We got more words than any other yeah, languages well, now. Yeah, but that's because we got more, we more letters. Well, I don't know So that. if we've created a headache, I reckon you could at least half it. Well, you probably could half it. Well, you only use about half a dozen of them. No, but stuff like an X, you look at words that have got X in, and they're always words that you go, what does that mean? How's someone come up with that? <laughs> that's how it comes across to me, and th there's loads of big words, it's like dinosaur names. It's like, well, look, nobody was about when they were knocking about, so let's You've make up some- have learned that Let's make up some names for them using the letters that hardly get used. They've all got Y's and X's in them. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah! That's what I'm saying, it's like, well, let's use it for that. Yeah. So you, 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 you just, it's not so much what is your least favourite word, you just don't really like just, most just, of the just words. Just, saying, just cut mean. down the words. Stop adding. Stop adding new words. I get by, I don't know how many words there are in the world, but I reckon I hardly use any of them. Well, I'll tell you what, this year's word must be podcast. Yeah, but That'll it's- That'll be in the dictionary and uh But it's made up, innit? It wasn't here before, it's just another one. This is what I'm saying about- But what else would you call this? You know, just there broadcast. is a new concept called podcasting. There yeah, is a podcast. But it's also a broadcast. We had a word for it. It's still a broadcast. Yeah, but they go, oh, you're a broadcaster. Oh, what, what radio station? No, I don't work on a radio station. I, um, I, um, I do a radio show, but I don't understand. Well, I do a radio show and I upload on, I don't understand. It's called a podcast! Done! <laughs> Here's another idea. Go Add on. a new one, get rid of an old one. Last one in, first one out, or whatever. Do it that way. That's a good way. What would you get rid of then? So, we brought in podcast this year, but what, <laughs> but what uh, word would you lose? Well, uh, what's the name? Those birds that died out. Dodos. Get rid of it. <laughs> if the bird's gone, the word can, surely. <laughs>which show this was that we were discussing this, but we talked about um, well-known phrases and um, quotes from the past. We talked about Benjamin Franklin. People have, uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. Or oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that, I don't, I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Um, willy-nilly. <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Willy nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them. Like, like last week, I've heard of it, but but I've what does willy nilly mean? Just sort of like throwing it about all over the place. What? What, what do you mean? But what someone said, what? What does what does the term willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. So okay, but what good. does a stitch so in time you, say? So you understood willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, but it sounds I mean, nice, you used it. it. You said it willy nilly. But um, uh, <laughs> you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so okay, if, it's not that clear. So it's if you got so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Soon right. your sleeve falls off. So, you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. If you leave something that, that, that needs attention or repair, it'll get worse. So do it now. Do it in time. Yeah, they could have said a tile in so time saves nine on the roof. They just used a, you know, a sewing analogy. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because <laughs> if, you've got, <laughs> if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done because you're messing about putting something out of a hole in your coat, is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away, so maybe, I don't know, I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching- A stitch sometimes time, today. Say in 15 or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than, than a stitch in time saves nine? So yours is, this is what you want it to be a quote, right? Well, well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then, uh, you know, look, well, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same, that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like, I never go to the doctors, 
Unless it's really That is sensible. Dark. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, particularly working class people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know, um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like, you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this, and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What, they what just pop- What are we in? They- <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Well, it's 2006. Yeah. Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? No, what I mean no! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick, you-, you Yeah, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb, a robot good. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Or something that they can- have, Well, they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away- No, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your- uh, 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 up your back passage, they- What I are just, you worried I, about? I don't think- they, they need to do Are that you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fella popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there, you yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour I'm gonna have a finger up the arse, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is the problem And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably- <laughs> Check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang, you, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they- <laughs> Wow! How can they teach- Imagine you, squatting in a corner, with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse, going, it seems to be alright. Carl, you don't understand the phrase, a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But, but then- Who knows what trouble you're gonna cause? No, but then at you least- You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> XFM 104.9, lovely that one. Brilliant, isn't it? The acoustic version of Just Like Heaven from yeah. uh, The Cure's uh, like double it. CD. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. Collection. Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. <sighs> I had lunch with him. And uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in and he go, gee, I can't- Yeah. Oh, God. Kurt so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, he was probably the only- and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the way, but I told him this story, um, it was a, it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, what it was, it started off just there'd been a car crash, you see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror, and then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions in the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking that film, but it's two chickens in horrendous car crash. <laughs> Their would, own fault for driving me. <laughs> it would work, no. No, he wasn't having that, yeah. no, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, about five minutes, he went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly and something like when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he's annoyed, yeah. Like, I, I, I want to see it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But they should have thought it through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? I can't remember them all. Right. 
this woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he says, I can get you out of here. So what you've got to do, right, you've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bow toll, you know, that what, means there's, a, there's been a, yeah, a uh, dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into, like, the, uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out and you can run away and escape, yeah. right? So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. It right, really matters. Okay. Listen, yeah. I, I don't right. know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back, and she has to get no, buried alive. Be better than yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, she, right. she, she does it. She gets into the coffin. Yes. Yeah, Go on. Right. So she gets in the coffin. And uh, she's lying there for ages. She's and she buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking, this is it, I'm getting out. And, uh, I mean, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd, he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is. <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> So it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive and yeah. can't get out. Yeah. 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 It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, actually, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. Look at Carl's face, having told yeah. that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up, he's beaming like yeah. a child. Is, Have that, you seen any? is that your favourite horror thing ever? That, that's a good one. And, um... Let's see if anyone knows what the finger is. When that bloke oh, was yeah. underground, wiggling we're, his finger. We were talking about one with, uh, some fella who's stuck in the ground or something. <laughs> There's a, this is a motif I know, it's in the, your, your favourite ones. <laughs> yeah. Right. People no. stuck in the ground. Go yeah, on. Yeah, right, so she's, she... Uh, it's a fella, see, it? Yeah, it's, yeah, a fella stuck. Now, I seem to remember it just being his foot, to be honest, being stuck in a hole. I'm no, he was under the ground and he had a, he got a little thing out of the pavement and he put his finger up and wiggled it to try and attract attention. Then you see a woman come along and her stiletto hill just knocks his finger off. <laughs> You see, I'm wondering whether it's the same one as I saw. Yeah, it could be two like that, couldn't it? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, they were running out of ideas by the <laughs> last series. It's a, it's a big theme in Hollywood. <laughs> or, um, what was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, this is, now, this we? is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales in Space, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they looked look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like it might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died, and he owes, a uh, uh, hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff, and, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want them to say, just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And they did, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist, and Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. <laughs> yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Look at him nodded like yeah. he's caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do 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 Your meter needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises. Occasional groans. Yeah. Right. You could listen through the wall at your neighbours. He does. I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. But I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. Now, have you thought of that? Look, feel the lumps on that. Exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now she's a good-looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got a uh, white van, Carl. All right. Dar sailor, poor misguided fool. Well, it's time. Well, go on. That time, isn't it? Yeah. Play go the on. jingle. Yeah. 
What a van man. Carl. <laughs> Brilliant. We called it at great expense, that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where we just, uh, hijack an idea from the sun, which is, um, white van man, where the sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is, ours is, uh, ours is slightly different because the sun sort of like, um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the, yeah. <laughs> the upper <laughs> hand. Yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, you're just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sisson's Not asked and probing what questions? Uh, no, I thought it wore a burgundy tie. I thought, that's it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See, that, that's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage, <laughs> and showing, you know, what a, a, publicity. What, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like, funeral cards and that, and and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think, you know, when you send well, a what, card- What would you, what would you suggest? Well, you know, uh um, Whoopee cushion but on the vicar's chair, what, what, how would you live it up with the funeral? Just little, little things in the card, I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive, or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy- So, oh, that'd be good. So when, so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe, like, if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah. Or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why, have, why has everyone got to be so sad about someone dying? No, you know what mean? annoys me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone na na dies. She was 102. And, um, what, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I don't understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of, uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the, uh, the funeral. Uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday, and there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's just she tired and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just what are we doing? When their nan dies, exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tiny tubbies? No. <laughs> the Queen Mum. Oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh yeah. dear. I yeah. mean, I, I know, I'm sure, you know, I don't know much about her, I don't know if she was a great woman, and obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies, but it's like, it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing for hours upon hours to see her yeah. lying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting if you're over from Sweden and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's like, Oh, I mean, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh... <laughs> Well, that bootleg's going under the name of, uh, um, Nothing Miss Jackson, I think, by, uh, Meats and Poultry. So there you go. I do love these bootleg things, because they're so pointless, but they're so enjoyable. Yeah, it's great. It's fun to do. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're, 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 really they're great. But, um, not as much fun as Wide Van Car. Wide Van Car, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some of uh, the son, ask someone else, and ask Carl. It's simple as that. That's the right. son of just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're going to ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot? Is this uh, a big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cos, you know, to, to like, be in a World Cup is like the main thing for him, innit? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up, uh, he'll be alright, and, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You're not like David, I'm not gonna slug him off. <laughs> what <laughs> is <laughs> words? <laughs> yeah. He says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. But, um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday, I think, maybe, maybe Thursday, uh, the Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm -hmm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Do you have any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gallery route, aren't you? Sure. I know, it's, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything, it sort of 
cheers everyone up. Hold on, <clears throat> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and um, licking toads? How, uh, wh why, why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh, you make of that? it's a huge thing and you just, you, you live on it and it's, I mean, in theory. How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do you it's know like huge a town climate. in the centre. Do you know how like people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger and, yeah. No, but actual line is a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was the biggest then, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 God! <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but do you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. Oh God! Oh, that's they fantastic. steal your tires. That ship's so big that was <laughs> rough areas. Oh, how how big is this one that, that you're talking about? Oh <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't give me the spe specifications here, but they stay huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's it's that thing with um. Oh, it's obviously marketing, but um, they're gonna um. Uh, solve uh, the uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I can see that because I mean, <laughs> think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was hoping to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the all the wasted space, like with the Thames. All it's doing is like collecting crisp packets and stuff and coke yeah. cans, and people have to clean it up. Whereas if you think if you got a load of boats on there, yeah, problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you Problem live on a solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergerac? Noah. Oh. <laughs> Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat. I think it's quite- was That it was a shoestring. Yeah, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> Noah! What? I'd like to see you, um, living in, in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and it's gonna be no water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because yeah, that, 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 that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is melt? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they said, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. Do you, are you with me? Not that, really. Go on. go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that. it's gonna, Stick back on again, innit? Well, no, it uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, well, it will it's freeze up. The water's well, gonna get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put, <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice not, not, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, I'm using my fables. Imagine a world. <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world, imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's, we're all right, I don't know why everyone's worrying. <laughs> God, thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Should we play some more music and then come back to work? Yeah, this is, this, this is better this, than this, ever. This is this dynamite, this should be. My name here, on XFM 104.9, we're doing White Van Carl. Got another one there? Uh, well, it just, uh, another, your thoughts really on, uh, the Queen Mum's, uh, very British send-off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all these people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a, I, I don't quite understand why there were so many people there, um, who were, like, getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset crying and stuff and, you know, you can lose someone who's, r like, related to you and you don't, you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff and, and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was, 
wasn't it like miles long and stuff? Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this with Twelve Superman. hours, queuing. Yeah. He never got to I'd, twelve hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, but how you know, long is a queue when they're just like, you know, walking along? Think how far you can sort of like, s you know, stagger in twelve hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. God. Yeah. But, again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have, it's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they used their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done, remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right? Um, and don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? <laughs> yes, they, they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, would they, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and trace other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the to people, like, one to... Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, like, no, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to... Well, to a little bit like that, a little bit like that, I've, like, I six can cues, see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But, they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. <laughs> and it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand. Can I just say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to, to cut down the queues. So don't phone in, he's not suggesting we should have done this, he genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or, or, you know, he thinks this is a good idea, so... Can just I just try to do with Che Guevara, who was like a, a powerful man who did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you? Yeah, yeah. And... Have you, are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this, because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues. Each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. Because she's, she's had about nine of them. Yeah. So it'd just be, uh, uh, if you want to see the whole body, it's a 12-hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I've just thought. <laughs> right? But instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley? <laughs> And wheeler past everyone else running. So <laughs> yeah, you could have you could have some students on rag week and you can buy it. <laughs> like when they're always pushing a bed, yeah. you know they could just run it along oh. the queue. No, that'd, that'd be fantastic. That'd, that'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So sure. Right. right, but just just an idea. Just I apologise now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Anyone offended? I'm sorry. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> finally, um, this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low apparently at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press. Now that she's had a child, that's a good place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elton John's out. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton. John, yeah, they? Every they, celebrity they, they pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort? But of... it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict, he went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and it was the other fellow that went there as well. What someone to you know to recuperate and uh, quite a shoulder to cry on? Is he, is he giving out false yeah. f passports? But I don't like, know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of you know. I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but you know, and maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you I, think, I think it's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's just like a friendly bloke. She's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part of the problem. <laughs> High five, Carl. That was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was no, my man, Carl. You, why, why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. So that was good, yeah. Very good, oh. yeah. Right, what music we got? We got, uh... Got a Flaming Licks. Flaming Licks, excellent. There's the, the classic Race for the Prize. Should have been a big hit, never was, sadly. Sadly. The Flaming Lips and Race for the Prize. Just playing that rip for everyone who emails us thing. We get a lot of emails every week, but uh, obviously don't we respond to them because we're very lazy people. But uh, we obviously appreciate it. And I play that particularly for uh, Claire, who's emailed in saying uh, her friend Sarah Prosser would like some Beatles. We're not going to play the Beatles this week, but uh, Sarah apparently loves us more than words can express. More than Carl could express. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> what turns you on, creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Uh, learning. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Learning, Excellent. Learning Will stuff. you say that? Yeah, but I, 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 everything you teach me, I take it in. It's just that sometimes I go, I don't, I don't get it. But that still counts as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, it doesn't. Learning is, uh, the knowledge is, uh, the, there must be some sort of retention. You can't say I've got a great memory for a second. 
You can't say that. You know, it has to stay there. And then, then knowledge has to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, applied. You can't just have all this knowledge that isn't applicable because it's useless. I mean, trivia is useless to a large extent. It's not real knowledge because it, it doesn't really help you in, it, it, it practically. No, but there's a lot of that going on. You're always reading stuff that you go, I've just read that. It's got me thinking for a minute. It's not going to help me in any way, but it gets a reaction, doesn't it? Well, that's good, yeah. That's, that's, that's what, yeah, that's, that's that's what, what art mean. does, and yeah, sometimes education's good for its sake, if it really does inflame, but... But then sometimes, like I've said before, you can know too much where it gets you down. Go on. Uh, I just was reading something about an octopus. That's, that's like a killer octopus. Yeah. And it annoyed me that this was knocking about now. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> you, whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like, they, they sort of brought the whole, sort of, uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? No, what do you mean? Well, just, just, you know, when, when you see them in films, they, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one that's on the- it, it was- it was your fault, really, cos you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, yeah. There's, uh, some octopus that's in the sea, uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water, and if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm, I, mm. So in a way it's good knowledge, because, I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that, but that's <laughs> just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> Uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't harmed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. What is your favourite curse word? Um, I don't. I don't think I, I do anything like that. I just. I think people can tell by my face when I'm like fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed up because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> That sums everything up, and I think it's. But it you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh, but she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? If she really annoyed well, you? Well, knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she, she, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead! All right, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, so that sums it up. But I don't, I don't really. Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, in it? Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> After, you, you know I know I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it, and that, that's, that's... What would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing, you were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you just see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say well, to it? well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, you knobhead. I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> and then you kick it and call it a knobhead <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh God! Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> <laughs> it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got I don't no like it. I don't like change and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't, do you? Know. You're like Rain Man. Yeah. He really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change, it, 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 it's got to get in a little routine, you can't uh, no, I don't like to, I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you, where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it where, you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg and chips no matter where I am. <laughs> that's, that's what they're like. Right. That's, yeah. what that's what they'll remember, actually. When I'm saying about stuff about Live 8 and all that, you know, people will remember 
If people said to a dad, you know, you remember live eight? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday when I had sausage and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. But the thing is today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like, Rockbusters have been done early. Right. So that's, that's normally done at that's about really that time. Is that really throwing you out? Uh-oh, uh-oh, I just uh -oh. don't, uh, I don't like all this change and that. It's messing about, isn't it? Rain Man. Sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine. Don't, don't, uh, you know, I'm never gonna use that, I don't think, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Suzanne You're never gonna understand it fully, well, are Suzanne you? Suzanne repairs me stuff anyway. It, <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what about the one, um, <laughs> About the one in, in greenhouses and that. People who live really in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. What do you- what that? Does that confuse you? You've never understood that one? No, that's- that's a lot clearer, isn't it? It's sort of saying, don't be chucking stuff about if you're surrounded by glass and what have you. Yeah, but don't forget, it, it's an analogy, it's a metaphor, it, it's not to be taken literally. It's not really just talking to people who live in glass houses. It's saying, uh, uh, uh Hang um, on, sorry, before you say that, Rick, I just, I'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this. Okay. Just give us your explanation again of what you'd take that to mean. Well, just don't be chucking stuff about. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, if that was it, they'd just say no, no, that. No, no, but, but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 What they mean whoa. now? Now he's ever lived in a sorry, glass house. So this, they went, cavemen went from rock to a nice crystal structure, did they? That, what, what are you talking about? When did people live in glass well, no, houses? What they mean now, when, when that saying's used now, they mean sort of, you know, plasma tellies, <laughs> uh, ornaments. No, they don't. They're saying don't chuck stuff about because no, you'll break don't. it. No, no it's, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. It means don't be having a go at people if you yourself have got uh, 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 more to lose. Do you know what I mean? It, it means it, it. It could be. It could be anything. Don't don't start a war where you could come off bad as well. It's about how fragile your situation is. If you live in a glass house, metaphorically, don't throw stones at someone else. Because when he throws it back at you, your house is more easily damaged than his. It Again, metaphorically. It doesn't mean that if you're living in a glass house. Or in a house with other precious objects, you don't in your own home throw bricks about, because that would be a very specific audience that I was trying to reach. That phrase, I mean, let's be honest. Okay. What kind of a mental? Do you know case? what? I think we've got the crux to this. Right? I, I think I can answer. Right, right. Carl, what is an analogy? Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? All right, here we are then. Oh. 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 Scorpio Rising, Death in Vegas, on XFM 104.9, about five past one, Saturday. Here we are again then, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I can't believe our luck. <laughs> oh, alright Carl? Alright. Yeah, so what are we doing today then? Producer. <laughs> right, <laughs> oh, sorry, I always laugh instinctively when I hear Carl's name and that word. Yeah. Seriously. Right, well... Why is that? Because it is- I, I had to come up with some new features again for this new year. Okay. I'm excited. What have you come up with? <laughs> oh, we, said, oh. we, we are the backbone of this show, Carl. Yeah. We're gonna- we're tell- we're tell- you- we, we've come up with some pretty- what's yours first? Right. Go on. Right, well, Rockbusters. That's old, that's not a new feature. Yeah, but we'll keep it. Right. Another, so another you're bit. just keeping an old feature. Okay, okay. Now it's an old favourite. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going, phew, I was worried that he'd lose Rockbusters. Rick, I just come up with a new idea. Why don't we just play some records that we like? There's a new idea for the 2003. Yeah. Oh, oh you know what we can't, Steve? Because the live is out of order. Oh yeah, the record live, but we can't get in there. We're we, not allowed to get in there. We had to scrounge something from Capital Gold. So anyway. Right. Go on. So we got Rockbusters. What are they doing with the library? They're getting some records in that we want to play. <laughs> Is that their new idea? I know. Let's get some records in. Yeah, they're they fitting out the uh, the Gina G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four non blondes. Goodbye. <laughs> Give that to Foxy. Go on. So sorry, Carl. We'll do. Um, <coughs> we started do we need them in two thousand and two. Do we need them? Do we need them? Yeah. We'll, we'll continue got, that. Got a new one, haven't you? Explain that later. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the new stuff comes in. Ooh. Right. Um. As always, I like to sort of get words and tweak them and stuff. Sure, yeah. So, I was thinking of either doing something <laughs> with, um, there's a lot of weird rituals, <laughs> isn't there? 
A lot right. of weird rituals. Yeah, there's weird stuff going on around the world. Okay. There is, yeah. Um, and I was gonna tweak that to Rick Chules. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Again, okay, start with the title, the pun first, then working out what it is. And well, then, I found uh, some stuff. And, oh, right, so it's, it's specifically... Just stuff what? that goes on, like, um... Rick Chules. There was, uh... Most of the weird stuff I've heard about happened to you in Manchester. Yeah. In your early years. Well, in India, apparently it's good to have uh, a flat head. <laughs> so the, uh... <laughs> Again, just <laughs> flirting, just bordering on the racist, <laughs> yeah. but never really gets there, always... Well, because there's no, there's no intent. There's no hate, there's no hate, it's, it's just, just clumsy, it's just, it's yeah, it's just stupidity. Yeah. yeah. Go on, what, Sorry, do, you so what do you mean, what do you mean, what do you mean, it's good to have a flat head? What do you mean it's good to have a flat in India? We'll, we'll talk about it later. Brilliant. That's, that's rituals. <laughs> so, uh, you've, you've hooked a few people, already. you've hooked a few in, go on. Alright, so I'll have that later. So, it's essentially like educating Ricky, only is specifically about rituals. Is that... Is that, strictly speaking, what it is? Okay. I suppose so, but then again, yeah. you could say radio is all the same because it's people talking. <laughs> okay, Carl, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant no, comeback. Yeah, so, brilliant comeback. Not all talking nonsense, though. Well... So that's where we're different. Go on. Um, also, right, I like teaching you stuff. Yeah. And you've yeah. done well. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is, rather than just touching on a topic, T sort of giving you a few bits of information on one See, topic. this is what I'd like to do, because the last thing you taught me, I remember, was there was a blind girl, she hit her head and she could see, and that's all I got. Yeah. So if you could go into that a little bit more, that would have been educating me. Well, today, we're featuring, uh, stuff on World War One and Two. Blind. Right? Oh, So that's, on. that's, uh, that little title for all this little thing is, uh, <laughs> what do you think of that then? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that then? <laughs> Play a record. So that's Rick, that's I have just sort of a joke. Go on. What's the similarity between Lord of the Rings and this show? They're both rubbish. Watch that man, David Bowie, off Aladdin Sane, my favourite David Bowie album. What's yours, Carl? Yeah, that one, that one's good. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, right, we've got, um, Rockbusters coming up. Do you want to say what we've got to give away there, Not Steve? Not really, Rick. Is it really bad? Well... What's the film? What's the featured film? The featured film's not bad, I have to say, actually, you, you've resold yourself there. Again, it's just one of those things where I think, what kind of XFM listener would want this particular goodie bag? I know before Christmas, Carl, you explained that the reason you were giving away- Look he's disgusted, cos he, he just said, I do a lot of work to get, to get these prizes, and I went, no you didn't, I saw you, he went over to a drawer and went, I'll give that one, that one, and that one. That's what work you put in, you nicked, you nicked some, there's about twelve Jerry Halliwell videos, one of which we're giving away. It's oh, really, like, you've given it away? Oh no! Yeah, if you'd like uh, Jerry Halliwell's, uh, body yoga, DVD, uh, then, you know, that's one of the treats you can win. Um, but it does it like, if you notice, if you remember before Christmas, he said that, um, he was giving away a kind of bumper pack of, uh, gifts that you might want to wrap up and oh, give to various people. one for uncle, one for uncle, one for auntie. Yeah. But obviously Christmas has passed, so I don't know really what your well, excuse is this you time. you eat a lot over Christmas, don't you? Get a bit fat. Fair point. Yeah. So, uh, um, we, yeah, Jerry Body Yoga is one of them. Um, the <laughs> recent, on DVD, the recent series of, of We Design Pet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that I mean, Could you give me that reaction again? Well, no, I just... Don't uh, just give me that reaction again. No, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and actually, I have to say, this this isn't bad at all. This is the uh, very best of the Stone Roses CD Well, you can't knock that. Which, uh, you can't knock that. But I'll tell you what, we should we should play Elephant Stone at some point. Yeah, play again, we'll have that. Go on. Um, Madness. I think this is actually tunes from them and not from the musical, although it is uh, tied into he the musical. He went to see that musical. Really? Yeah, on New Year's, uh, you know it's like, on New Year's Day, there's nothing to do. Sure. So, so you go and see some people out. doing madness songs? No, I took Suzanne out for a walk, right? Yeah. Went round, um, Covent Garden. Right. Mm -hmm. Past the place where it was on. The stage door was open, you snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said madness are alright. And, because when you think about it, madness songs are quite sort of musical anyway, aren't they? So you can't- They're quite do musical. Do you know what I mean? They sort he of- means they're like oh, a musical, right, they're like yeah. Like a musical. Knees up Mother Brown. I thought yeah. it was alright, enjoyed it. Blur, Blur, the, Blur the musical would be good, wouldn't it? Blur the musical would be excellent. Yeah, so, little cockney um, So you, what, you bought tickets there and then and just went in? Yeah. They're not selling, are they? Um, <laughs> it's fa it fairly quiet, cos no. we only paid the, the lower price and we got upgraded for free. Nice. So- You I'd enjoyed it, did you? No, I'd loved it. And Sorry. would anyone like to come on stage with us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little bald fella. <laughs> yeah, go on, I'll give you a go. Yeah. <laughs> and what home are you from? Where, we, where are you- what are you doing tomorrow? Well, I'm going, well, I'm going no, you're coming here tomorrow. <laughs> Come here tomorrow. <laughs> was it not, is he not doing well? That's a disappointment. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was New Year's Day, so maybe that's why it was quiet. Okay, well, well if, uh, if anyone hasn't sorry. seen this or didn't receive it for Christmas- I said, all is quiet on New Year's Day, Carl. Yeah. Um, 
Also, we've got to give away Minority Report by uh, I like that. Steven I enjoyed Spielberg that. with uh, Tom Cruise, um, which is on VHS. It's a good Rick Roaring sort of film. It's not that. bad. That's probably the best thing we're giving away, but uh, as I say, we can always leave some out if you don't I'm want. arresting you for the future murder of Sarah Marks. Yeah. Brilliant. That's the sort of uh, excitement and drama you'll be getting, in it? It's not brilliant. little taste there. I did, I got that with Paul Anderson. He right. said there's something to watch over Christmas. So watch you've actually it. watched this already? Yeah. Alright. I've oh. rewound it. That's probably added to it though, yeah. isn't it? It's touched by the great man himself, yeah. Carl Pilkington. And it's alright, I'd say. It's worth, worth a watch. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to give us a quick film review? Just give it a wipe down and maybe some tripe on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, bit unrealistic. Sure. A bit unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Genius. <laughs> a man yeah. who can fi who finds people who can see into the future. Whereas, our house, that really <laughs> happened. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, prize is uh, giving away. What, what's the competition? It's Rockbusters. We're doing Rockbusters. We're still doing Rockbusters. Oh, well, look forward to that. We'll do that in like 15 minutes. I need a bit of Coldplay first. I'm doing, honestly. Really? Yeah. Oh, Coldplay, the scientists. I think they wrote that about Carl. Yes. Uh, yes. On XFM 104.9. Right. Uh, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Can I just ask Carl how he got on uh, over Christmas? Because oh. the last time I spoke to him, you hadn't bought a present for your girlfriend. Yeah. Like, I have to say, I was on Tenterhooks all Christmas. Well, you changed it. Uh, after that show, I felt bad, even though I shouldn't have done, because <laughs> because I, you hadn't bought your girlfriend a Christmas. Yeah, but present. I said to you, I booked a table at a hotel in Covent Garden, had Christmas dinner there, which was nice, right? Mm. It's good food and everything. Um, mm. it didn't feel like enough to me. Well, then I went out and treated some stuff, and then no, no, no. The a couple of days before Christmas, he went. Uh, I took to Suzanne to that hotel we're going to go to for Christmas dinner. We had tea and cakes. And I went, oh, you treated her? He went, no, she paid for it, but I was just showing her what it was going to be like. <laughs> that was her extra treat. She paid for it. I love that. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, it was a bit, it was like 150 quid for a meal for two, which is pretty dear. So I'm not going to buy her cakes as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! Alright, love, have everything you want. You pay for your own pudding, I'm not mental. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so you, yeah. But so you, you did, you treated her to some other yeah, stuff? Yeah, some didn't? bits and bobs. What, and so you, she bought, she chose them and you paid for them? What, the presents? Yeah. No, or no. you chose them and she paid for them, but, you know, it's the, it's the <laughs> no, door that counts. I, I, I got them on the way home that Saturday. Well done. And what did you buy? Well, just some bits. It might be personal, Steve. Well, I don't care. Just some bits. Yeah, just but bits and bits. Leave out the personal bits. What, what bits? Uh, just little things. And then yesterday, right? A monkey wrench and a new washer for the shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some recordable CDs. <laughs> <laughs> that you need for your job. <laughs> oh so, dear. Uh, now, did, now, when you gave those prisons to her, did her fi face light up? Right. I, I don't want to tell you what they were, right, but she wasn't that impressed. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell us what they are now, tell Carl. us what they are. You even know what they are, she told you, on Christmas Day. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. But right. it doesn't matter what they are. It does matter what they are. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It does, matter. Carl, it's you, mate. It no, course it, it does. doesn't matter. Oh, God! Have you just remembered? Yeah! Right, but don't... There's I've no got, need. I've got to tell him, Carl. I've, I, I really, I really want your permission because I don't want to be a, you know, I know it's not, but we know it's not that embarrassing. It's really quite sweet. Yeah, but in a way, right, <laughs> the way I look at it is, right, Christmas, even when I was a little kid, right, it's not- Please let me tell him, Carl. Well, let me just tell you first, oh. though. Let me tell you why I didn't go all out on the whole present from- Right. <laughs> Justify yourself. Right. Oh, first God. of all, I've covered it up since then anyway. Right, with that present, because I bought her some shoes yesterday, and she did say I'll give you the money for them, but when I get home I said it's alright. <laughs> I said you can have them. <laughs> right? So, so, not only, not only did I buy her some food on Christmas Day, I got her shoes, she's probably had a table. And then you treat her like yeah. a horse! <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like, yeah, there you go, there's your shoes, there's your food, right, bed yeah. down, yeah. see you later. Yeah, but I, what I'm saying is so she's done- By a fed and clothed Yeah, did you, did you comb her hair? She's done well this year, right? Uh, uh, so, <laughs> The thing she is, so well this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're a single parent living on a council estate with a smack problem, <laughs> and you still managed to buy them <laughs> some right. Lego. When I, I was a kid, right, oh, it God. wasn't about what you got. I remember one year when I was about eight. Right, <laughs> oh, this is going to me crying at this. It's no, good. it's not. I'm just saying the way it is. Right, I woke up at about four in the morning. And I was like, oh, what have I got? And I couldn't sleep, I was that on edge. Mm. It's the excitement of Christmas, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, what's wrapped up, I need to know. Sure. Yeah. And it's the fact that people are saying, no, you won't know until tomorrow. Yes. Sure. That annoys you and winds you up. Okay. So, so I got up at four in the morning, yeah. opened my presents, and then went, right, I know now, I went back to bed, had a great sleep. Yes. Right? So it's nothing to do with the excitement of what you get, it's the excitement of not knowing what you've got. And then what happened when you got up 
and to go down with a so what you're, but hang on so oh, what you're saying to me is that you could wrap up a brick because the thrill of Christmas is in hoping and ex being excited about what it is not the actual gift itself yeah is that, is, is that what you did last <laughs> Rick did you, did you get a brick no let me tell you now what he got he got her a present right and she said she had to go and I said uh, yeah he got me it was it was an industrial sized packet of condoms it was a joke gift. No, it, no, wasn't, it wasn't a, a joke, wasn't a joke. Gift. It wasn't even a joke. I mm. went home that Saturday afternoon, yeah, past boots, <laughs> thought, might have something in here. They were on, like, some value. Right, you, you passed the makeup. Were used? <laughs> you, <laughs> passed anyway. the make -up. you passed all the other... You yeah. passed the makeup, passed the lovely vanity cases, yeah, yeah the foot spas. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. How much are these, love, for hundred? <laughs> yeah. Four ninety nine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do I get them reduced if I buy in bulk? <laughs> so how many do you buy? What was it? I don't know, probably about hundred. Right, okay. And is she allowed to use those with anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Did you wrap them? Can she yeah, just go out and have a walk? Well, you don't need to wrap They're already wrapped, aren't they? Oh. And then what did she say so when she opened them? I'm no, just... wait, wait, I'll, um, let, God, what did she say? <laughs> right, play a record and we'll come back to this. <laughs> You're worse than my father, that's genius. <laughs> Made famous, of course, by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. That's all along the Watchtower, as originally done by Mr. Bob Dylan. On XFM 104.9. So, Carl, just just take us through the moment where you gave this gift. Firstly, so you, so you, 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 you went into Boots, right? You thought, all right, 100 condoms. Brilliant. Mm. Okay. Did you wrap it up? I don't know if it was 100. Probably 80. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. You gotta so, go mad, uh, do you? <laughs> Wrap them up. I'm just, I, you know, I'm just resting easy knowing that he's not trying to breed. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no. Yeah. So, uh, I got her them. I got her, uh, Grease on DVD, cause okay. she's always watching that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so I just think of, uh, when her mum said, what did Carl get you? Some condoms and grease. <laughs> I was just, I'm glad he said on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, she was surprised anyway, right? Because <laughs> yeah, I bet she was. No, when when she got <laughs> she she was she was thinking like jewellery. No, so right. with that that showed her. <laughs> <laughs> that surprised you, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. Oh, so hang on, wait a minute. You thought it was a holiday, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, look at your face. You don't know me at all. <laughs> Um, so hang on, so did you give these on Christmas Day? Right, what <laughs> happened is, she got in from work that Saturday, <coughs> right? And I said, look under the tree. Knack her door, right? at least it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah. At least I'm gonna get a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, said, I said, look, you got some stuff under the tree, right? <laughs> so, uh, she, Did you surprised. give her a sugar lump? Right, she was really chuffed with that. But she said, she was a bit, a bit puzzled because I didn't know we had any wrapping paper, right? So I ended up using wallpaper. <laughs> You didn't take it off the wall though. You had no, some. No, it was some left over, right? So she said, Why have you used wallpaper? I said, Well, I didn't have any paper and you were getting in in a bit and I wanted you to have a surprise. <laughs> so she said, Can I have a feel of them? <laughs> I said, <"Yeah."> The present. <laughs> she thought, Right, I've got the right thing. Yeah. Right. And uh, then Christmas Day, um, I said, No, don't get carried away. It's nothing really good. You know, we said we weren't going to buy each other much. Uh, so there you go, open them. Yeah, go on. And, uh, Can I just ask, had you received your present from her yet? Yeah. So what have you received? Um, what did they have? Had some shoes. Nice. Right. Um, getaway game for PlayStation. Nice. Just I'm just tightening up just the value of those. Yeah. Yeah. And right. just also think about how much fun and pleasure you get from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah Although, yeah, yeah. of course, condoms, I can see the, <laughs> well, yeah. see the appeal. Well, right. Okay, um, yeah, that's yeah. it. I think but I can... also add to that bit 150 quid for a meal. <laughs> If you're gonna start totting up, 150 quid for a meal, I bought some shoes, 72 quid. Yeah, that was after the event then. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Alright, so you received these, dare I say it, thoughtful and nice gifts. You handed over the box of, uh, condoms. They were wrapped up, she well, unwrapped them. Uh, yeah. Go on, take us through it. Walk well, us through it. Well, it's not, it's not something you play with on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh. But, right. But when she opened what them, what did she say? Did what did she say? She's, well, I wrapped them twice as well, so she thought it was something really good. Extra like, protection. Oh. Right. And, uh, so she thought it was something really good. And then, and so then, the disappointment would be doubled. <laughs> oh yeah, go on, yeah. And then she just opened it and went, "Oh yeah, so what's on the telly?" And that's cool, that. Ungrateful. What, that? what an ungrateful woman that is. Well, fancy she got not, stuff. Fancy not wanting. I told her- A, a box of economy condoms from Boots. I said to her about the thing about, you know, it's all about the surprise and that, innit? 
Yeah. You explained that to her. Yeah. What after she'd unwrapped it? Yeah. Four, and four. she was she was all right about it. Yeah. <laughs> she understood. Rick, you know I suggested to him that he buy his girlfriend a gift. I'm worried I've done more damage to the relationship by suggesting that than if he had just forgotten. <laughs> Next time you've got to go shopping for yourself, Steve. I think I might do. You've better go shopping for yourself. It's, I'm glad it's all over though. It's it's mental. Yeah. I, it annoys me. The whole thing <laughs> annoys me. And she knows that as well. Yeah. <laughs> she should know. What is she? Is she still insists on having Christmas once a year. Well. Wow. Well. I'm, 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 you know. No, but, uh, well, anyway, what did you get? I can't think what you, what you bring to the relationship, <laughs> Carl. I don't know what it is she's getting from you in this relationship. It's like uh, she's I doing all the know. work. Uh, <laughs> 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 Eighty times. <laughs> Oh. oh God, God! I love oh. it. You're brilliant. I know what she's getting. He's the, he's the, he's the. Uh, he's what? No, he's not thoughtful. No, he, no, but he's, he's thoughtful. He's the best he can do with the brain he's got. Do you know what I mean? Right. He's doing his best. Mm. He's mm. absolutely doing his best. There's no. <laughs> he's working at the limits of his power. Do you know what I mean? Though he's done as well as he can with what he was given. Sure. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's admirable. Yeah. It's like, I think he's done better than you'd, you'd expect. I bet his teachers didn't even think he'd get this far. Do you know what I mean? What, find a girl? No, well, yeah, a job, a girl. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Clothed himself. He's done, he's done really well. What do you think, Carl? You think you've done well? I, I think I've done alright compared to some of the mates. What are they doing now? Probably not that much. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? The, the Mrs. Matthew said I wouldn't be an eye flyer. I think I'm doing alright. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I have a holiday every year. <laughs> uh, got somewhere to live and that. Yeah. yeah. Got a new flat, haven't you? Yeah, so... So where are they then, the condoms? Are they- did she show them to her family and friends? No, Take no. them into work? Look what Carl I'm surprised she told Ricky, actually. I was a bit disappointed in that. Yeah. Cos I didn't go shouting <laughs> well, at Well, she was so excited, <laughs> Carl, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> she was just so pleased and proud. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, play a record, we come back to it. No, that's it now. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, no, that's it. That's Streets, don't mug yourself. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, a regular Santa Claus. <laughs> I'll, leave I'll leave it. Oh dear. So, Rockbusters. Rockbusters, uh, first one of the year. Um, Do you want to explain it? Okay, so yeah, we've got some new, some new listeners. Like might it. have, might have. Like you never it. know. Like Chance to win some stuff. Um, I'll give you like a cryptic clue and some initials. And it sort of makes up a band, so an easy one that we did at the start was, uh, an exploding pet, A.K. Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Right? That's how it works. So there's three of them, um, it's email only, you email in ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk and, uh, you win all that stuff Steve was talking about. Right, first one, uh, £42 for a torch. <laughs> £42 for a torch, that's a bit pricey. Uh, that's D. Right. That's D. Yeah, so right. just give us a- give right us that again. down. So £42 for a torch, that, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of enhancement. <laughs> yeah. Digging up his grub. Oh, okay, God. That's, that's D. D. Uh, the second one, um, he'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Say that again? He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Is that he will fit some chocolate to your feet? He'll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. And the initial there is A. That's A. Yeah, and uh, the third and final one, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? <laughs> do you right. think- say again? Do you think, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? That's <laughs> WP. Right, now, I'd better warn people, um, you really gotta get into the mindset of Carl here. These are not real cryptic clues. These are not cryptic clues that you do in the Guardian or the, the Times crossword. Um, there's usually something wrong with them. Uh, it is usually, um, uh, what's the word? Um, completely change the word in order to make it fit. Yes. Often. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just be careful. Don't be surprised. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Um, do you want to give us a, them again very quickly? Alright, uh, first one, 42 quid for a torch. That's, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? Alright, that's <laughs> D. Uh, second one, it'll fit some chocolate to your feet. I can't think of any, I can't a, think. That's A. a. And, uh, do you think, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? W.P. Right, so, uh, Ricky Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, some great prizes to be won. Yeah. <sighs> right, Rockbusters then, uh, wrapping it up, um, It needs some work, that game, but I see it's got a lot of mileage. Um, <laughs> right, here uh, we go then, the first one, uh, £42 for a torch, that's a bit pricey. Go on. That was D, yeah. that was Daylight. 
Wait, I thought delight, and I thought uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I actually thought delight doesn't work. Second one. There's no one. Um, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Dear light, it doesn't work. It's delight. Second one was. No, no, Carl, it doesn't work. Yeah, but if we're gonna continue with this feature, you've got to tweak them a bit, right? <laughs> People have got it. We've had loads of emails, more than ever. So, do you know what I mean? Let them decide. Mm. If they don't like it, they won't email in. But they lo they're loving it. They've right? all come from the same institution. Um, <laughs> go on. He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. That was A. That was Aerosmith. No? Aerosmith. Yeah. You've heard of a blacksmith. But a smith is just yeah. a workman. It doesn't uh, necessarily- No, no, you can have anything. You can have a locksmith. You... A smith doesn't just mean it does shoes. Right. Do you think- you... Aero Cobbler oh. would have worked. Unfortunately, there isn't a band called Aero Cobbler. Get ready, get ready with a winner. Um, do you think your kid will, uh, get that strawberry for me? That's Wilson Pickett. <laughs> it's it a little is, story it? told quickly. Right. To what end? Well, it depends what the story is. Okay. Depends. Give me a give me an analogy. Well, for me, I thought a one with the greenhouse. Yeah. Right. Um. It's no, it's a greenhouse. It before it's just a glass <laughs> house. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then a glass house. Okay. Right. You, do, do what I mean is that glass house is metaphorical. <laughs> it's about the fragility of your situation as compared to your aggression or your- You see, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean, so people in- who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because you, you, because you may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. Okay, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you because it's a glass house. But what- eh? But you literally mean, don't you? There's no analogy there or metaphor for you. You literally mean, if you live in a glass house you and someone the knocks door. the door- So there's no- there's no hidden meaning there, is there? Well, no. Couldn't that also- you don't- but you have to add a number of other thi- uh, another- other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in a- <laughs> th These are literal. See, if you- now, you could make- you could actually make that into quite a nice- uh, um, uh, uh, saying there, because if that meant, if someone said that to me and they weren't a shaved chimp, right, <laughs> if they said people who live in glass houses have to answer the door, I think that means, oh, yeah, it means that, um, there are no secrets, you can't hide behind anything. If you're, if you're very open, if you've chosen to be totally open all the time, you can't go back on it. So people, if you wear everything on your sleeve, if you shout around and you tell the truth, and uh, you can't go back on it. They can see, they can see through yeah, you. You can mean that as well, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's handy. But uh, just the idea that in your head there are, you need that there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no, house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about them. It's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's let's get to the real problems they've got. <laughs> Still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the no, metaphor or the simile. People who live in glass houses should live near a glazier. Right. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learnt recently from a mate, right? Um, well, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like, um, when you when something's going on in a room, right, but no one's mentioning it because everyone's a bit too... Sort of, but in a way, it's better that it's out. It's like how you know you. Whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. it's normally after about five minutes the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, right? I can't resist the shape of your head. Right. So you're you're happy. It's talking not just about the shape it. though, is it? It's the state of it as no, well. But what I'm, what Outside I'm, and in. But, I mean, it's a fascinating little <laughs> objet d'art. <laughs> his what, head. But what I'm it's re perfectly round. Uh, it's got no hair where it should have. Um, and it's well, hollow. <laughs> <laughs> the features are slightly too small for the face. Yeah, no, unbelievable. No, but what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's the talk of the town. <laughs> it's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in going, well, yeah, it's round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, <laughs> and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in a room. <laughs> Oh. So you you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the or the lack of hair. Um, you would feel better. You would feel happier that they didn't mention that. Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way you know we were talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah. Yeah. He got weaker without hair. Mm. Whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger, because 
you know, it's almost like it's treated like a disability. Everybody's sort of mentioning it and talking about it. What's it like having a bald head? And you know what I mean. <laughs> so it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, right? And it was annoying that I was sat on the jury right in front of like these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on, right? <laughs> It is a disgu that's a disguise, that's why judges wear them, right? So no! Well then why they print their name in the paper and have a picture of it? What do you mean it's a disguise? Well, it's a disguise, isn't no, it? No! If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those um, uh, glasses with a nose and the beard attached if it was a disguise. All judges would look like Groucho Marx if it was a disguise. Well, th I'm just saying that's, that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, <laughs> that, right? I was sat there and I thought... Why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> I would have loved to have seen you in the front row at Crown Court. No, because I'd love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom, so there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen 11 people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, I would love to see the, uh, the uh, artists doing a view because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks like a character for, and then just a little round head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> Went home and looked up Freud on the internet. Didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle. Why have you just listed some philosophers? Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. That's just that's learning a, their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, oh, what's your favourite philosopher? I'll go, hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why have you got <laughs> Wait a minute, one? I'll go home and get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. But when they say, well, why do you like him? Yeah, why you, do you, you just run away? Well, I, I noticed you put, um, Socrates first. Why is he your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> just is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when, say if you were phoning someone up and they said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, the old name, Socrates, did he ever go, cheers? Without going, can you spell that for me? But I don't know what else point you're making. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's a name that's awkward. You're always going to have to go. Can you spell that for me? You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're from a different country and a different era. You know, no, but the names I've been to Rome and stuff, and you sort of go. Well, ancient Rome. Just just <laughs> Rome. It hasn't changed, has it? Rome. So it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. The same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around in his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that. If you're going to watch, don't stand around the start line. Go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, it again. Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a with with a step. Yeah. So, um, uh, which is to, who am I talking to now? You or your brain? Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if, if you're into ra I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay, but is this you or your brain I'm talking to now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch- Are you using- are you gonna- are you, are you gonna bring the brain into it, or is it- is there's no- I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is- Right. If I was to watch a race- Yeah. I wouldn't hang about the start line, cause- well, I, you just said you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that's the place to start, because every, every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> right, I okay. wouldn't watch any race. The brain definitely hasn't been used yet. Yeah. Is this you or your brain you're talking about now? 
It was- I'm just saying about me, if I was on holiday- Yeah. And Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road- Yeah. I'd go, well let's go- keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? Lazo, yeah. I'd say, well hang on a minute, every s race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then, it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what not do you think really. of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what- but I wrote down three of his, that one isn't my favourite, that was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well I didn't send you away, you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh I've just walked into a big hole. I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole. But they've learnt a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> New Order and Here to Stay on XFM 104.9. Well, we're here to stay, aren't we, Steve? True enough. Well, for another four weeks anyway, then we're, uh, then we're off. The four more right. shows. They'll have to order a new DJ. Or <laughs> <laughs> right? That was genius. <laughs> hey? Oh, wow. Oh, I'm Ricky, simple as that. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, and <laughs> oh. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh, man. Did anyone, uh, read The, uh, Guardian yesterday? It was Steve's big ch- we, we were interviewed together. Steve I've never been interviewed before in the paper. I've certainly never had my photo in a national We were very excited. Before. We loved the interview. It was talking about our top ten albums between us. We loved it. We talked really fast, like school kids. We were excited. It was a great interview, and all the way through, it was Ricky Gervais <laughs> with his writing partner, Steve. Steve Mitchell. <laughs> Stephen Mitchell. It's he not even gutted. like Merchant. He phoned me up the night before and he was gutted. I know, no, it's, it's awful. And it was big letters and just all the way through in the caption. And it's just like, oh God. But it's embarrassing. Do you know what I mean? It's embarrassing because it's like I was trying to get in the paper. I couldn't believe my luck. And then that just draws attention to the fact that I'm not a celebrity <laughs> and consequently they can't even remember my name. Uh, but the worst thing was that um, uh, one of my favourite albums of all time, like I said in there, was um, uh, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. And I said, because, you know, I think one of those beautiful songs ever is if you see her say, hello. And of course these people were sort of transcribing it from, you know, a dictaphone. It came out, um, my, my favourite song of all time was If You See a Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> if, you see if You See a Sailor. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Fruity. Oh, Bob, Bob Drillboids. Uh, <laughs> up on the trab with, where's the sailor gone to? <laughs> uh, with Ricky Gervais and Steve LeMichling. <laughs> Oh. I don't know. They must have thought my name was, was Mitchell all along. They obviously well, never uh, knew. Uh, the evidence is there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know why. It was like they, they reported in the paper that we'd be nominated for a Sony, and it said, uh, Ricky Gervais, who hosts the breakfast show on XFM, and it's that sort of, it's just guessing. It's like, uh, uh, presumably someone's gone, does he host the breakfast show? And someone's gone, yeah. And that's, that's their research done. <laughs> yeah. But there was a thing about, um, uh, The Office set in Swindon. That's someone going, I'm just writing an article about The Office. Where's it set? Swindon, I think, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Okay, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Even <laughs> we research the show now and again, don't we? Yeah. Even we look things up while actually people phone in. Usually yeah. that fella. What's that fella's name that calls in who's not got the website? He's got a funny name. Oh. Gilwell <laughs> or something. James. Phone in if you remember uh, what his name is. Yeah. He's James. All... James at Lose Control. Yeah, what's his surname though? Oh, for goodness sake, this is just oh. gonna be interesting to him yeah. and his friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember? We better play another record. Yes. Come, oh, I'll tell you what, if Johnny you Johnny like Mango. Mango, that's it, yeah. Now, if you like Alvis Costello's Allison, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> Rick, Freeze, you. Freeze, um, My Brother Jake. One of my favourites. Stay tuned. Badly Drawn Boy, Silent Side. Cracking tune, man. XFM 104.9. Maybe there'll be a few Silent Sides around London on the 4th of May when, uh, that's it, we're off the air for we three are months. Yeah. Wow, you're really getting into the DJ patter today. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. D d d <laughs> it's only things. taken, what is it, five years? <laughs> yeah. Now you're finally uh, as good as Foxy. Coming up. Yes. That anecdote that Carl didn't get to last week about Neil Armstrong. <laughs> right. I can't wait. <laughs> It's because he took three links telling us about the horse. Yes, of course. Of the course. horse. Think yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, I went out with Carl on Thursday night. Right. Right. It was one of the most enjoyable nights. I, 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 we just, I'd like went out for about what five or six pints, a little crawl, and adventures happened around Carl. Yeah. And just me sitting talking to him was just incredible. I'm thinking that a competition would be win a pint with Carl. Yes. 
just, you know, be they just have to go for a pint and they can ask him anything they want. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> he's just great. Um, we met my friend, didn't we? Tell him all about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah? What? Yeah. Did you enjoy it as much as Ricky, Carl? Um, yeah, there was things I learned as well, like, which was, which was good. Okay. You, you know his mate Robin, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, You'll I'll, discuss that later. I'll tell you later about He's got all his near-death experiences to come. Win a pipe, and of course coming up, um, uh, Carl, so homework was uh, the quotes, and Carl's come up with a great idea to show that anyone can do quotes. He's he's invented a thing like faking it, where he's got two real quotes, right, right and he's made one up. Okay, and he's going to fall us. I I bet we won't be having it. Oh, right. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, what was the challenge you last? Look looking at us. What's the matter with you? It's just that before you were like, no, this is good for you, but what? now it's turned into a game. <laughs> <laughs> At your yeah. expense. Yeah. Have you only just, is that only just dawned on you? <laughs> Carl, well, I'm joking. It's great, honestly. It's really good. What was the Carl challenge last week? You said it, I thought we did the quotes last week. No, but, um, it, 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 I gave him a, um, a happiness. happiness. It's all about happiness right. and what, the, 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 you know, pursuit of happiness. Mm. And it's in sort of like quote form and everything. But, um, Carl's gonna do a couple of ones and faking it just to show. I mean, cause he's been coming up with fables all week as well now. He comes up with something, he goes, that's a fable, isn't it? <laughs> and he tells me the other, so he's, he's getting good. Looking now. To it all. Should we play another track? Or have you got something, you got something special? Oh, I brought in, um, uh, I saw, um, uh, Alvis Costello and Jonathan Ross a couple of weeks ago, and he did just an acoustic version of Alison. And I forgot what an amazing song it is. Mm. And it, it's just, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he's, he's the man. Listen, this is an guitar sound. It's so beautiful. My aim is true, to provide quality <laughs> entertainment <laughs> of a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Alvis Costello and his attractions, and Alison on XFM <laughs> 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Mitchell here, yeah. and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Oh. I, uh, well, isn't it? It's going all right, it's going all right. I, um, obviously been doing some acting, as you know, I mentioned it last week, doing this, uh, this sort of comedy pilot. This week, Carl, you're gonna be loving this, I've been doing stunts. I swear to God, I've been doing my own stunts with the guy that once made Christopher Reeve fly as Superman, right? And I was doing stunts. I had to do a thing where I, that my character has to, commit, has to commit suicide. <laughs> I wonder Don't think we didn't bring that up. <laughs> Were you anywhere near that horse? No? Fine, let's carry on. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, I had to, my character has to commit suicide and he has to sort of, uh, leap off a building. Mm. So the first Don't think shot- think that's a, that's something for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were up on a roof and, uh, obviously they had the crash mats and stuff and I had to kind of leap off, um, and land on the mats and stuff. And obviously I was petrified the whole time because I was wearing my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> petrified that they might get broken. So I was like not really doing it properly and kind of leaping like, like, what, you know people when they can't dive into a swimming pool and so they put that one foot out first to sort of is break it you, Was it you that told me that, that you, you could never get into fights? No, I could never get into fights or go in a mosh pit because of my glasses. <laughs> I've That's missed out right. in life because I can't, That's because right. if, if I was in a fight and I say, come on then, you are, you know, and, and I was in a pub or something, they'd just have to whiff, whiff off the glasses, <laughs> just knock them off, I'm done for. <laughs> I, I got, I love nothing. Are you really short-sighted, are you? Yeah, but, if, if, but anything's an advantage in a fight, isn't it? And the fact that they're just a blur <laughs> is bound to hamper my otherwise brilliant, you know, ninja skills. Uh, so, yeah. um, so yeah, I've never got into a fight, I've never been in a fight at all, I've never Sorry, been, been in the on, on the wire. So this was making me sort of a bit worried, um, yeah. uh, and anyway, so then I think, well fine, I've, got I've done my stunt, and I did it, and everyone clapped, they were pleased with it, and the guy who said I was very good. So then they drive us to the next location, right, I'm thinking I've done my stunts now. There's a crane, I think, what's going on here? Now they need to shoot me, like, I've already done the stunt where I've sort of f leapt off the building, now they've got to actually see me falling, right? So I have to get strapped in with this huge belt, and they click wires onto me, and they hoist me about 30, 40 foot into the air, on this wire, and I have to, and then they drop me at great speed, and I have to scream and shout. You know, it was partly acting. <laughs> <laughs> and, glasses um, on. Glasses. Uh, by this time, I managed to get some wire fixed to my glasses, so they wouldn't come off my head. I so they was they were on stunt glasses. <laughs> they, they were stunt doing glasses. stunts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right, yeah. Okay. So um. So they hoist me into the air on this thing, they do a couple of sort of, uh, sort of demo versions, you know, and just gradually ease me up higher and higher so I kind of become acclimatised to it. And, um, they get, they get me about 30 feet up, and they've got these huge crash mats, like those great big ones you always see sort of stunt people have. And they set up the camera and stuff down below, and I'm, while I'm up in the air dangling there, they remove those crash mats, and they replace them with those really thin ones that you always see, like, um, teenage gymnasts using on Blue Peter. Do you know what I mean? The really yeah. thin ones they used to have at school, right? And I'm looking down at this, and I'm thinking, now, they may as well have shouted it up, if you fall, you're done for, but we might be able to protect the equipment. Do you know what I mean? It was what, so rubbish. But you weren't gonna land on the floor, presumably. 
Well, the idea was that the wire would stop there. Yeah. Oh, I see. But yeah. there was no safety. That, that was their safety. That was the safety net. Why did they then? not leave the real ones in? Because they they had to. They, I don't know if they had a shot the and stuff. They I had to. Uh, well. They had to do it. But anyway, what was particularly joyful is one of the other actors pointed this out. Right, this is the. Um, <laughs> this is the health and safety statement from the stunt guys, right? And they, they obviously have to write up this health and safety statement about how they do it. And it says, We confirm that we have proper safety policies, procedures to comply with the Health and Safety Act 1974, and that we will not do anything which compromises the health, safety and welfare of your production crew, actors or members of the public. If the above situation changes, we'll advise you immediately. <laughs> I mean, if they think that maybe they do want to hurt members of the public. <laughs> Look at that fat one over there, just try and hit her yeah. and bring him down. Don't worry about that one. Don't yeah. worry. She can take it. She can take it. But, uh, so that reassured me, obviously, and, um, now my whole body's racked with pain. Limbs, arms, head, neck. Uh, well, unbelievable. Well, is the shot worth having? You, I mean, you, probably you, not. you, you wish you had- Do you want the cameraman whisper to me? The cameraman whisper to me, he'd probably never use it. <laughs> I love that, that Carl can confuse the scientist. Yeah. Yeah, because all systems of logic break down. I know, I, the, even the scientist was going, well, oh, get me the limpets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That now, is who brilliant. was that guy? Uh, I think his name was Chris. And where was he from? In a uh, place called Megavissi, where I went one year. Megavissi. And he's, he, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a scientist, is he? Uh, I think he's got a fish shop or something like that. He's got a fish shop? No, he doesn't. Well, like an aquarium type place. Oh, right. So. A <laughs> fish shop. <laughs> <laughs> it would have mentioned him. It would have been fast in that he, uh, uh, a, a yeah. winkle store. He's got a winkle store at Paul Arbor. Yeah, that's an expert. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But, what's uh, what have you learned from that then? Well, the uh, we don't know whether they're deaf or not, because the scientist, the bloke in the chip oh, shop yeah. couldn't confirm it. <laughs> um, they eat their own legs. Yeah, Look at that. It's a bit weird. Yeah. They eat weird. their own legs? They eat their own legs if they get hungry. Right. Um, and they grow back, don't they? Yeah, I think so, yeah. If, if you, if you eat one, they'll grow back. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you can put them in, in little jars and that. Uh, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? It's like, um, <laughs> no, but do you know, like, you know, people have a go about being cruel to animals and that, but what he was saying there is, right, what they've watched an octopus do, they've, they've got hold of a crab, right? So that'll be being stressed out because it's out of the water. <laughs> yep. They've then stressed it out even more by putting it in a jar. Right. Which you didn't like. Uh. Which you didn't like. And then an octopus is crawling about on the jar. Yeah. And the crab knows that the octopus wants to eat it. Right? Yeah. So then it's having more threats. Yeah. Because of that. And then they let the octopus eat it. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty... Do we need crabs? Uh. See them next week, yeah. Well, I wanna sort out snails first. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your pitch with snails? What do you know about snails? Um, I know that, um, bats eat them. <laughs> um, they can sleep for thirteen years. Right. <laughs> oh, you do it. Can you believe that? <laughs> he said to me, he said to me, snails can sleep for thirteen years. And I went, right. He went, oh, thing is though, if it was a scientist, and he was, you know, he was, he was looking at it, and he put it in a quiet place. It might well doze off. <laughs> he said it wouldn't be the same if it lived on the streets. <laughs> and then we went on to a whole thing about homeless. He wants to do a game show with celebrities being homeless for a week. What do you think? Actually, I've got to say that's not bad at it's all. It's not bad, is it? No. Do, do you know how like Lenny Henry went to the jungle? Yep. Right, and you've got. Uh, You've got, what, who else did it? Um, John, uh, John, the John the Lundy 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 made slippers out of a bra. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, get a celebrity and say to him, no, just because, I'll tell you why, right? I'll tell yeah. you why all this came about. When I was walking back from that Christmas meal that I bought my girlfriend for 150 quid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Lest we forget. Right? Um, I was walking down Mortimer Street and there was an homeless fella there and it was like, oh, you know, it's really, really bad. But the weird thing is, it was, it was about, I don't know, probably about eight, eight o'clock. Yeah. No, about, about nine. Right. And he was asleep. And I just thought, do homeless people ever think, do you know, I think I'll, I'll have an early one tonight. <laughs> right, that's, that's what got me thinking, it's a bit weird, the whole lifestyle of it, the yeah. fact that he had an early one. So, uh, the fact, what, what, if it's a bit weird that he's sleeping not in a home? But on the street? No, it's just that if it's I- interesting. If I was homeless, I'd probably stay up quite late. Because it's not nice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What are you talking about? 
Just being homeless isn't a good thing, is it? No. People forget how bad it is. Yeah. Right? But surely sleeping gets you out of reality. They sleep because they're tired, they can't sleep very well, so they need all the sleep they can get. Yeah, but sleeping's nice if you've got a nice big bed. What, you think they can go, I'll stay up, I'll go to bed at two, I'll go straight to sleep and I'll pop up at eight <laughs> when the alarm clock goes off? Well, that's just what I was thinking. Right? <laughs> so, I was thinking how bad it is, and it's, you know, especially this time of the year, you know. Yeah, uh, it's terrible. It's the, uh, it's it's the really worst nice. thing. And to sort of give it some publicity and get a bit of help behind it, get celebrities, yeah. someone like I've... Phil Mitchell, <laughs> maybe, yeah. off, off EastEnders, yeah. who's a big fella, he can look after himself, put him in a shop doorway, right. have some cameras set far away in a building or something, Yeah. they can film him, right. and it's up to him how he raises money for food to eat. He could sign autographs. <laughs> well, they wouldn't know him though, would they? Because the, you, you never look Who at could a homeless person. you get? You person. get, uh, what's her name? Gail you Porter. Yep. Gabby Roslin. Right, yeah. Narinda from Big Brother. Yeah. Uh, who else would do it? Um... I got a game show Les idea Dennis, called... I reckon I got it. a game show idea called On The Game. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what happens here? You get Narinda from Big Brother. Sugar Cane. By Sonic Youth on XFM 104.9, Richard Ray, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Go on, Carl. What, what's what's next? Are you going to do your um, war feature? War. What is it called? War. Do you think of that then? You can do that now. I just it annoys me a bit, right? Because we said before Christmas that we'd come back with new stuff. Yeah. Um, gave you a title to work on that Ricky Ridiculous. Right. You came in today. I said, have you sorted it out? You say no. Steve, you're having a go at me for getting, wanting to get music out of the library for you. Yeah. You haven't got any new ideas. Sure. But you're dissing mine. I'm not dissing yours. Well, well I, I, I'm a massive fan of them. Good vibe off you. <laughs> oh, I think that's very harsh. I, I just asked you when were we going to have war, do you think of that? I'm a big oh, fan, I'm excited. Well, it's not that good, to be honest, with you. <laughs> well, I disagree, it sounds brilliant. Right, well, it's, it's a bit of a tweak of educating Ricky. Uh. Right. Just some information on, on wars. Yeah. Um, okay. World War Two. World War Two. All right. Um, the world champion chess player. Um, he helped uh, someone out. Um, <laughs> in the war. <laughs> it's the detail I like. <laughs> No, he had, you know, he, it's, it's nearly a history program, isn't it? <laughs> I was watching those repeats of the World at War yeah. that were on in the mornings. You know, incredibly. Did you like got nothing on? Cars. Did you write a lot of that David Sharma series? <laughs> he, he was able to use his skills that he has to play chess because apparently chess is all about probabilities of like where, you know, where a piece will be put. Right. And uh, they got him in, and they said, "Can you help us out?" He said, "Yeah." And uh, he said, right, where, sh where should we like- Hitler like has just moved his queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that, that's yeah. A, that's a he fact. sent in a bishop that ran diagonally <laughs> yeah, exactly. through the troops, <laughs> knocking him over. Sorry, wait a minute, Carl. So they got a chess Sorry, that's, that's it! Well, yeah. It's just like, oh, what do you think of that? Again, that's not a story! But it angers me that he says that I'm down on the ideas when that- I mean, that's beginning to shape up as quite interesting. I thought you were going to tell me which battle or which event was two. you- World War Two. There's not a battle. But which bit of you World War Two? Like, the, the middle bit. <laughs> a six years worth. <laughs> yeah, well, probably about a bit in Guessing. Thought, let's... Guessing. Well, alright, yeah, there is a bit of guesswork, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> That could have been an interesting thing if you told me it had an impact well, on the normal landings. Well, when you look at these things, do you go, uh, bloke wants help chess, oh, he's that, and run away from the computer? No, or I run out it. of the bookshop? I read the first line where I get enough information, I just think- What do you mean you read the first line where you get enough information? Imagine if you were someone's defence lawyer, <laughs> exactly. and he was like, he's on death row, and <laughs> yeah. went, oh, I don't think he did it. <laughs> yeah. I read the first line, I didn't read the file it's completely. He was in a hotel in Texas, right? Go on. It's enough. Oh, some other it's stuff. Enough, it's enough, enough. It's, it's enough. enough, it's enough, it's enough. Yeah, no, I just thought they always took ages on deciding where to go. It's just like, you know, but there's a better I way. don't know what you're saying now, I don't know what- I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I actually takes, don't when, know when what you're talking about. play chess, they take ages to make the move. So I'm just thinking, there's probably a quicker way. <laughs> of what? Than finding where a boat is, than getting a chess player in. I don't know- I don't know what you mean now. Right, Are you talking about battleships now? They should have got an expert battleships player in. Right. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! What- but Carl, right, what- Forget that one. Also no, 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 I'm not being funny, but what is that? What are you telling me there? 
Someone who's really good at risk. <laughs> I should have brought them in. <laughs> yeah. Cluedo. Right, yeah. another fact. Oh, I thought that's enough then, is it? Well, they use expert Cluedo players, um, but the police use oh, expert they, Cluedo they players. do use, yeah, 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 yeah. If ever there's a murder in a country house. Do you think they use that old Chinese fella? Um, on the front of, um, uh, Mastermind. The mastermind, yeah. 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 Yeah, for logic problems. The, <laughs> the Enigma code was broken by top Mastermind <laughs> players. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Right, second fact. And a fact. guy who's had a couple of rounds of Yahtzee and done very well. Second yeah. Second fact about the war. They, um, for engineering, they use a lot of Jenga players. Absolutely. Yeah, whenever they want will the building collapse? Uh, I don't know, let's pull this, let's see. If yes, they it wanted will. to identify, uh, <laughs> what, what are you doing? If they wanted to identify spies, yeah. bring me the champion of guess who. <laughs> Was it one with glasses? No, it might sit <laughs> down. Has he got a beard? Is it Bernard? <laughs> <laughs> right, Carl, sorry, right, go on. Another war fact. Go so on. You're saying it's rubbish, but look, you, you love that. Yeah. Right? yeah. Second you're one. You're right. Um, yeah. the first bomb that was dropped on Berlin. Yeah. It didn't kill a person, but it killed an elephant. <laughs> I think that's true. That is true. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and the last one. Is that all you know about that? See, that's interesting, isn't it? But what that's was enough. But, but no, it's not, it's though. Not cause I, no, because, I mean, listen, most people want to go, oh, what was the elephant doing there? Did oh, it land in a zoo? Was it a pet? Oh. Was it a lost elephant? Did they aim at the elephant? How did it kill it? Did was it, it hit, hit it on his the favourite edge? elephant? <laughs> yeah, yeah, was it hit his favourite elephant? Did it then have one ball? Yeah. I mean, these are the things, you know, why didn't he catch it with his mm. trunk? Did it have an effect on German morale? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. elephant is <laughs> Um, oh, Jumbo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fight anymore! <laughs> anyway, listen, Rob's question is this, Carl, and it's specifically to you. Carl, if you could have a superpower, like Superman, what would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> so, that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, x-ray vision. Flight. Invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. Intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, <laughs> for God's <laughs> sake! No, no, but I'm just saying- It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or, do you know what I mean? No, oh, I'd what would you- what because, do you wish you no, could do that's no, impossible because, is the question? No, because, or, uh, uh, out of- what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> With I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it- w well, would you like spidey senses? Is that what you're saying? Uh, would you like some senses? Would you like some sense? The power of sense? Um... Come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes, because they can- they can- I know, but it always- freeze been, things, they're never they... happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider-Man that wanted to tell that girl that he had- he could climb walls and that, he's like, I can't. Superman didn't never tell Lewis and that. Who's <laughs> Lewis? Who's Lewis? Lewis? Who's Lewis? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just a pen pal of Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis! His little secret yeah, chum! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh, Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. Yeah. Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> so. But you're being allowed to choose the superpower. You mm. don't have to get it forced upon you like the Hulk. <laughs> happy! <laughs> it's true, he's got a theme! <laughs> he has got a theme! There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpowers do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Everyone around the world now uh, is thinking, what can Carl choose? Let's, let's, let's deliver it to him now, Carl. Think about it and give us the answer, please. Just, let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> It's a brilliant power! It's a brilliant- and, and, it's put, and it's put to such brilliant, brilliant use! It's really well done! And why- why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh What would you gain from that? Don't know, you could sort of go in- go in shops when they're shut, so you don't have to go- How would you get in? Just get in just before they lock up. Oh yeah! And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. 
Brilliant. So, hang on. So, that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> yeah. They found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak oh, into... Bear in mind. No, hang on. Let's just... You want to sneak into HMV, right? Wait for 12 hours <laughs> and then buy something. Ah, I love it. Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't, I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> I love this! It's like, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. Oh, Not no. happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Like, when's the exams? June? Something like that, yeah. We're registered, we're trying to register next week, and I reckon you can get an A or B in I'm history. Busy. I'm busy. In history. No, I'm don't worry about it, it's just easy. You get your Brody's notes. If Heat, Heat magazine, they, 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 they love you, Carl. They could probably sort something out. They could probably pay for a tutor. They've got a lot of money, they sell a lot of magazines. I mean, it is always, almost always, and you found that out, I discovered this, it's always the Tudors and Stuarts. There's no fear for that, they're not coming up. Now, what do you know, what do you already know about them? You must know already know stuff about Henry VIII and Elizabeth. No, because it just, it's too long ago to even get interested in. Do you know what I mean? You can't is that why you didn't? It. Okay. You, the Anderson thing, it was like, God, you know, I bet my mum and dad were in an Anderson shelter. You know, this is interesting. What, when they... Oh, my granddad would have, like, had something to do with this. <laughs> but the Tudors, it's like, I don't know even if they had a family back then. God. <laughs> 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 Play record! He's got... Uh, the problem with the moon is... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a statement. The problem with the moon is... Dot, yeah. dot, dot. Yeah. The problem with the Earth is there's too much water. Yeah. No, the moon... It's been, been around ages, hasn't it? Yeah. But it's got no history. It's got nothing to show for it. <laughs> Just a load of old rocks and stuff. Yeah. And for me, history is created by stuff happening on it. So really, the moon, even though it's old, in a way it's new. <laughs> because it's untouched and that. But uh, we're not go we don't go to the moon to visit museums. <laughs> <laughs> or arcades. No, but, but say, or say, say like historical Henry, Henry, Henry VIII, right? Uh, you watch Antiques Roadshow or whatever, and some woman goes, Oh, this plate you've got, this was, uh, Henry VIII's. Uh, and y as you can see, you can see the knife marks on it. Uh, oh look, there's some chicken on it, right? And you go, oh god, yeah, that's amazing. Then someone goes in and goes, here's a plate of Henry VIII's, but it hasn't been used, it's still in the box. You'd go, well, it's not as good, that. No, it's got, it's got no, no history. No, because very often on the Antiques Roadshow, they have Henry VIII's plate with a bit of chicken on it. <laughs> they kept that. Don't throw that away. Why? Arthur Negus are like that in a few hundred years' time. No, but do you understand what I'm saying? Things are only good if stuff's happened on it. The moon, you're up there, you're having a look, you're going, no one else has even been here. If but you go to the moon for research purposes, for scientific research. There, Steve. This what is do you what mean I'm there's saying. nothing there? They're examining the soil and the environment soil, and the air. Uh, it's, it's just a lot well, of they're not doing that, are they? They're just, they're just not doing that. Well, well, they're not, are they? Because last time they went up, they were playing golf or something. There's golf balls up there that they've been whacking about. What sort of research is that? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing up there, so wh why why else would you go all that way and go, Oh, nothing here. Fancy a knockabout? <laughs> why are they knocking golf balls about if, if there's really important stuff to look at? You don't see people in museums going, Fancy having a knock? Uh, knock some golf balls about now. I'm looking at this vase. Oh, right, that's interesting. But on the moon, nothing. Nothing to look at. What other games have you brought? That's what I mean. And then we went, went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got 36 of them to look at. <laughs> How many did you look at before you realised that you've, you know, pretty much, you've seen one volcano, you've seen them all? Probably about six or seven. Really? And yeah. then when you go to the eight, you thought, now I know what this is going to be, Suzanne. This is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well. It's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> fill the so, rest in! Yeah, no, yeah. While getting some builders. No, seriously though. Okay, four death million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. <laughs> yeah, what, well, yeah. What do you mean, fill them in? Do you know what a volcano is? Just a hole, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's more than a hole. It's more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened, volcanoes were made a lot longer no, ago no, no. than 1730. No, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. <laughs> what do you suggest? Well, How can they all... fill it in? It's joined, it's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is... Uh, it was the a, big it was... plates of the earth are all joined, it was all the magma's disaster, joined. With the, with the trade centre thing, that happened, they cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. 
That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in no, 1730. You misunderstand me. How in the name of God can you fill in a volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the, the holes, they've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. It's not just the big holes, there's lava everywhere. But it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're like a carpet. Put it in the holes, the holes are there ready, just push it all in. <laughs> the world's oldest tortoise, a 250 year old tortoise, died last week. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, in a zoo in India. 250 years old. So would, th would that have had that thing that they say about how you get a, like a flashback of, of your life? <laughs> <laughs> you mean your life flashes before your eyes? Yeah, they say, don't they? Just like on your last breath or whatever. You like, like, see you coming out of the womb and everything. Well, well, one, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe your life flashes before you. I don't know, I don't know what evidence we've got. People who die say, you know, you never guess what's happening. No, but there's, there's loads of things that have happened where people go, oh, that's, that's weird, that's, that goes to show that we've been around before, or... No, it doesn't. There's none that, I have no evidence for that. Well, I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes? Well, it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close, it's the next, next thing next to flashbacks. It was, um, <laughs> I was having a bath, right, and, uh, my mum had, like, run the bath and that, and, uh, she said, is that, is that too warm? And I said something like, no, it's, it's all right, this, it's a lot better than when I used to have a, have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire. <laughs> okay. And she was like, what? And I said, you know, well, it happened years ago. <laughs> and she was a bit like, oh. And I, I can't remember that now, but she talks about it and, you know, that just goes to show that. Because I, I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of fires. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. Well, you- I didn't know about wooden baths, so why would I have invented that? But Carl, we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So... She put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just, just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark I and his wooden bath when he was- No, around? I don't want to go there, because that's when you start digging out all sorts it's of- It's rubbish. Trouble, isn't it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, it is rubbish. What sort of stuff There's might you no discover? scientific evidence No, just like I've said about family trees and that, don't, don't be looking at them, because you you're only going to find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, innit? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If, if, you, if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it, because your family would be shouting about it. If he was a bad one, you'd go, oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees and it's the same, don't be looking back in your past lives. <laughs> There's no God past knows what lives. You've been up to. Well... Carl and the Wooden Bath. Proof. If Carl proof Bilkington, uh, live on air, talking shit again. <laughs> right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right. Can I ask very quickly, did your life flash before your eyes like they say it did? No, I just sort of went really calm and like, I'm ready for this now. Right. I wasn't bothered, do you know what I mean? I you had no scared. regrets? No. No. Um, it was weird. It was really weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you oh. know, you, you, you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. <laughs> Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, <laughs> You're sort of You're spreading information well, yeah. to people, yeah. vital information. Giving a service, yeah. and no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's <laughs> driving around. <laughs> I know, I can't. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and, uh, go and do the round, and, um. Why'd you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at 5.30, so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then, then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah, so is it a good job or not? Go so 4.30 4 I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, a really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. 
<laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on with the third on. I had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out and tried to open the door and it was locked. So, oh, God, so, I, I, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out the window, and I'd, 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 I'm like, trying to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, yeah. The yeah, alarm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding onto the, like, the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just hold on for your dear life and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's right. at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, <laughs> not messing around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is to Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, cause that, I must have been about 30 foot in the air. Yeah. And I would have, you know, that would have been nasty for Phil. Fell to the concrete peg sure. in, so. Well, and, um, there's, more, there's more to come. Should we play a record and mm. come back to this? Because he's got more. Oh, yeah, no. no, no, no there there must be one of them where you did fall on your head. This is the one I'm waiting for. There's got to be one. That was explained so much. Yeah. I nearly did. I nearly broke me back. Jeez. Once. My dad said, I bet I can't kick me out. And I said, I bet I can. And, uh, I, <laughs> I don't remember this. You didn't tell me this one. You no, I bet you can what? I was in the garden, summer's day, and uh, it was that era when, like, doing kung fu and all that was really popular. Sure. And I was, like, messing about in the garden, punching the tree and, and stuff. <laughs> and my dad said... <laughs> what a kid he must have been! <laughs> my, my dad said, I bet you can't kick your height. Kick and, your height? What, yeah, you mean yeah. kick as high as yourself? Yeah. yeah, so I must have been, like, five foot or something yeah. then. And, uh, I said, of course I can. So I bet you can't. But instead of doing it on the grass, I did it on, like, the, the concrete bit. <laughs> Kicked it. Actually did it. I went, there you go! But then, like... Get me foot down quick enough and land oh, on you, back. Oh, you pause to, pause to say there, I've done it. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to putting your foot back on the ground. And, uh, landed on my back and uh, I'd, I'd still get back trouble now. Do you? Because you say that, don't you? So, he's, uh, uh, I'll just cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> Right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, always check your balls. Do you Why check your like the feel? Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track, let's come back to it. Oh, right, I've brought in this, uh, this is, uh, free, um, you know, uh, you'll know from the Jeans commercial. Yeah, all right now. Long time ago, yeah. all right now, yeah. But this is a great little track. This is, uh, My Brother Jack. Stereophonics, Vegas two times, XFM 104.9, into the last hour. Yeah. And then three shows to go. That's true enough. Until we're off the air. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> With him, Steve Merchant. Carl. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go and tell you. Um, you we we cut short last week, weren't we? You you had a you had an amazing story about Neil Armstrong, didn't you? Well, we've been doing quotes, haven't we? Like famous quotes. Sure. Yes. I've you know gone down in history. Yeah. And um, I was saying you know quotes don't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more the situation that you're in than than the quote itself. Go on. So like Neil Armstrong, yeah. if he'd have said what. Um, I, 
you know, tie bacon round your head. I'm as happy as a pig in dust. Yeah, that would have yeah. still gone down in history as like being the thing that Neil Armstrong said, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But space is driven but, in mental, probably. But, but, been, yeah. but, but, but he chose to say something <laughs> profound and yeah. meaningful uh, to uh, befit the situation. It's wow, well, he got it wrong. Actually, it's uh, uh, a small, small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But he was meant to say. Yeah, we discussed this last week. Well, yeah, it's yeah. Showing off. Well, no, but people might not have listened last week. Yeah, it I doesn't mean, matter. I can't imagine. Well, people we better tell them every week then. Yeah, but uh, he said uh, he should have said this is one uh, small step for a man. Yeah. But anyway, he had a good effort, and that's quite. And, and that's that's an example of, and, of what I'm saying. The fact yeah. that he got it wrong, but it still went down in history. Right. But anyway, the bit that uh, and it didn't happen anyway, did it? What do you mean it didn't happen anyway? That's what a lot of people say. That no one's actually been on the moon. Ah, yes, of course. They they filmed it in Teddington Studios. Well, they were saying something about there was shadow on the film and you wouldn't get shadow on the film. And uh, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things. You know, these people that you always quote as they. <laughs> Who are they? Are, are they living in jars? Are they little fellas in jars? Go oh. on. You know, do they appear to you in dreams? I've spoken <laughs> to different people about it, and there's loads of little things that if you watch that program, that uh, you know, of of them being on the moon, there is no way they could have done it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yeah, Done. Anyway. That's put to bed. Yeah. But Good. anyway, as he was getting back in the spaceship on the moon, or whether it be a TV studio, yep. he said, uh, "Good luck, Mr. Croucher." Right. Have you heard this? No. And the reason he said that was because when he was a young kid, and he was pl I think it was Croucher, but when he was playing as a young kid in, in his garden, he was playing baseball with his mate, <laughs> and he chucked the ball to his mate, and his mate hit the ball, and the ball went over the fence to the next door neighbour, right? So he goes, right, I'll have to snip over and get the ball. And as he was getting the ball, the window was open to his neighbour's house, and he heard, like, the woman shouting at her husband, saying, I'm not going to be giving you uh, a bit rude, so if you've got a kid in the car or whatever, turn it down. What, what yeah, that's covered that, yeah. Right, um. Genius. I'm not, I'm not, um. No matter how many times you ask me, I'm not going to be giving you oral sex. <coughs> the day I do that, man would have walked on the moon. Right. right, yeah. He grows up, he gets on the moon, and he remembers all that story, and as he gets back in the spaceship, he says, Good luck, Mr. Croucher. <laughs> now, do you know, now we'll have to say, I've heard that story before, but when I heard it, the woman said, da -da 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 -da, I give you a blowjob, is the day the boy next door walks on the moon. Which makes it all the more profane Impossible. and enjoyable. Yeah, and unlikely. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard the same story, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. I love that. Right, so not only have you remembered that anecdote, which may or may not be true, but of course you've also proven the that, uh, I'll give you a never even... That kid in the garden's probably gonna walk on the moon and say something about <laughs> giant leaps. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, he must have heard the thing that it never actually happened. Yes, we've all heard yeah. it. We've all dismissed it as nonsense. <laughs> and moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And got on with our life. Right, Carl. What? Should we do uh, White Van Man? Well, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't prepare me for that. We better play a track and then I'll uh, okay. it, I'll fish out the newspaper and stuff. Oh, oh this is uh, oh, this is a good little um, a little bootleg track here from um, uh, Meats and Poultry. Here they've um, mixed um, um, A with uh, Outcast. Right. Of course, it's great. Is it highly illegal? It is. So people shouldn't rush to their tape machines now and press okay. Play and so whatever you do, don't don't record this now. If you're no, hold on, don't say anything. Cheering breaks, painkiller, on XFM. Carl's getting a little bit stressed, aren't you? No, I, I just, I just, you know, got to keep focus, got to keep the show good and that. Yeah. You know, and in the yeah, new year, yeah. the idea was come up with some good snappy stuff. Yeah. And today, I just think it's it's been a mess with you, to be honest. I mean, this is the sort of thing I'd prefer to do after the show as as the producer. Yeah. But. You know, I, think, it, well, I, I think it's a discipline problem. <laughs> is I'm it because sure is, is, is it I just put cellar tape on your head? Well, that that's a bit to do with it. But just, you know, let's, let's just focus but on- But I didn't put it when there was any hair on your eyebrows, I put it across your forehead. Right. What do you think of that then? Yeah. We've got one more bit left. Brilliant. One more fact. Um, the French, right, when they were at war, um- <laughs> <laughs> David Charm, I just imagine him just introducing him, amazing. Which, which war was this? It was still the World War, uh, one or well, two. Well, go on, it's fifty-fifty. Go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. right. World War Two. Uh, what the French did. Uh, the, everyone needs a code. <laughs> everyone needs a code. <laughs> yep. A code. When you when you're in the army. This is a Disney song. Right. <laughs> um, 
and, you know, to sort of give the go-ahead if you want to go into battle and stuff. Okay. Right? So, uh, <laughs> But the weird thing is, right, the weird thing is, do you know what, do you know what theirs was? Go on. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. It's so what was the, the French code? For what? To sort of say, right, yeah, go on. But they had more than one. <laughs> on, on this day. But I don't know what day it is. <laughs> On All this right. day. And um, what, it's, it's like saying, what am I thinking of? <laughs> what was the battle? What was the... Okay, right. so, alright, what... Look, look at him, look at him, look, he's genuinely confused that I've asked this question. Right. It was... No! No, no, if you ask me a question, ask me the question correctly. Um, what was the, what was the code for battle during what battle? World War Two. No, that's not a battle. That's a war. Yeah, it was in a war, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I don't know what to do. He right. confuses people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. What was it, Carl? What was the yeah? Code? What, what, what was are the you thinking code? of? Right. John's got a moustache. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what oh, are you talking my about? Lungs are that, burst. that was was a code that the French used. You know, like I mean, I, I just think it's a bit daft, right? Uh, because you could come up with that by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two French blokes talking in the trenches, and they see they see a major walk past, and they go, oh, "Look, John's got a moustache," and they all go, and go "No, I was just talking." <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the way I, I don't think that's a good code. I, I'm not. I don't know. believe it is the code. No, it is seriously. And what? Uh, and it's would just it, like would it have been, would it have been it. said in French? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. The, guessing. The, guessing. The, yeah. 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 No, but. What? You see, I can't even be, be bothered. <laughs> what? what are you saying, Carl? Because it's not a very good code. Do you know, like, we've talked in the past about, you know, things you don't <laughs> see and I said, an old man eating a Swix. <laughs> yeah. If they use that, that wouldn't, that's safe. Because no one is ever going to see a man having an old, you know, an old man having a Swix. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, use that as a code. Don't use a saying, <laughs> John's got a moustache, that could crop up. <laughs> it's like the war's kicked off. Why did, how, how did that happen? Well, I said John had a moustache. Oh. <laughs> Two French folks would never be saying, John's got a moustache. Why well, would they? they? Because well, back then they were fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> it nearly makes sense, doesn't he? I assume it would have been Jean. Yeah. No, probably John. And I, I, how would this, how would this code have been... <laughs> I mean, who would have announced know, this to everyone? It. I read it like that, Steve. That's what was on the internet. This is a code <laughs> that was used. John's got well, a Don't be angry with me! I know, but you're always asking questions. It's <laughs> because I'm interested in history. <laughs> yeah. No, it's genu you're genuinely interested in bloke calm. We'd like to know- I'd like to film you, secretly. You know, like they do, like, Nature Watch, when they put it in a, uh, like a, you know, <laughs> I mean, a badger's sort of thing, One, right? Yeah. And they just, they just watch it. I'd like to see what you do, pot around with <laughs> I wish I could download the music in your head, cos it'd be <laughs> and you see something weird, you go <laughs> and then you read that and you go <laughs> and you write it down and that's what comes out. John's got a moustache. They I'd could like have, to see they next could Christmas. Have, imagine the French, right, for their battle cry, for their battle code, no, it's going ahead, they're going over the top, is you never see an old bloke eating a Twix. <laughs> Imagine that! Yeah, but the, all these things are things that I think in my head. Right? <laughs> Keep <laughs> them in there! Do you know, Please. like before, before when I was talking about going out on, you know, Christmas Day, yeah. having a meal on the way back, seeing a homeless person. Yeah. And then I think, God, that wouldn't be good. I don't know, TV show. Right? <laughs> you can think of things like that. When I saw the homeless fella, then I got talking to Suzanne about when I had to sleep in my car. What do you mean? Go on. Let's play a record and come oh, back to any sleeping in the Oh, God, I can't wait. Play a song for the I was watching last night uh, <sighs> on cable TV, 1987's amazing Sign of the Times Prince in Concert film. It was dynamite. I thought to myself, how brilliant he is. It reminded me of the gig I went to see last year. He played this tune. It's from the album Parade. Okay, I don't want to discuss whether or not Prince is acceptable on XFM or whether he's a genius. He is a genius. That's the end. That's the end of the discussion. Play the tune. He's dynamite. It's a song for the ladies. I, was, I remember, um... I'm gonna tell you, um, I was on the way here. You know, um, do you remember John? He's got a moustache now. I can't believe it. What, lads, no! <laughs> Don't- <laughs> It's not on! It's, it was- <laughs> The battle's not on! <laughs> Look at your face, Carl. The, the elephant did die. Yeah, no, I'm, I believe that. that. Yeah.
Sometimes it snows in April from the lovely Prince. Brilliant. Uh, from the album Parade. Uh, he doesn't always have to get up and have a rock about. He can just sit there at the piano. You can't argue with that. After, after the, the break, Steve, a brand new feature I've just done. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You see, you say Ricky Gervais doesn't put any work into this show. He's just done that. I'm gonna that tell song. Carl some amazing facts from the world of science, nature, politics. Four are real. One is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Cat Stevens from the Catch Bullet 4 album, Sitting. Little interesting fact for the nerds. We got it down to two songs to, uh, do this intro music to The Office. It was that one, and How Bags and Glad Rags, we went for How Bags and Glad Rags. Interesting, isn't it? It is a fascinating fact, except, yeah. of course, we want- I still feel we should use that one, except we couldn't, cos, uh, Cat Stevens's people wouldn't let us. Or it was too expensive, or something. I don't know, we re-recorded, so well, Stuart one, that I, it was I, too expensive. I still- I still prefer that one. Yeah. Difficult. <laughs> Difficult. Decision. <laughs> anyway. Decisions. That's ridiculous, right. Five facts. Right, one is totally made up. Alright? Just do three. Three and Oh, well one. there's- okay, right, um, um, oh, let's see, what shall I do then? Uh, there this are more was moves- carefully planned. There are more moves possible in a game of chess than there are particles in the universe. Um, you can't get any colder than liquid nitrogen. I think it's minus two, seven, three. You can't, you can't, and it's impossible to get colder than that. Um, the honey badger has got skin so loose that if you grabbed it by the neck, it could uh, come away from its skin, turn round and bite you out of its anus. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rockbusters then, uh, wrapping it up. Um, it needs some work, that game, but I see it's got a lot of mileage. Um, <laughs> uh, right, here uh, we go then. The first one, uh, £42 for a torch, that's a bit pricey. Go on. That was D. Yeah. That was Daylight. Wait, I thought Daylight, and I thought uh, it doesn't the work. It doesn't work. I actually thought Daylight doesn't work. Second one. There's um, no one. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Daylight. It doesn't work. It's Daylight. Second one was. No, no, Carl. It doesn't work. Yeah, but if we're going to continue with this feature, you've got to tweak them a bit, right? <laughs> People have got it. We've had loads of emails, more than ever. So, do you know what I mean? Let them decide. Mm. If they don't like it, they won't email in, but they lo they're loving it. They've right? all come from the same institution. Um, <laughs> right, go on. It'll fit some chocolate to your feet. That was A. That was Aerosmith. Right? Aerosmith. You've yeah. heard of a blacksmith? But a smith is just yeah. a workman. It doesn't um, necessarily- No, you can have anything. You can have a locksmith. You... A smith doesn't just mean it does shoes. Right. Do you think- you... Aero cobbler oh. would have worked. Unfortunately, there isn't a band called Aero cobbler. Get ready, get ready with a winner. Um, do you think your kid will, uh, get that strawberry for me? That's Wilson Pickett. <laughs> Will son pick it. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to say that I don't know if these guys have won in the past, but they were the first people to email in. They, I mean, normally I just give it to anyone, but these guys, literally, you've given the clues, Carl. Get I'm amazed. Everyone seemed to get Aerosmith. Oh. Everyone got D Light. Everyone got Wilson Pickett. I, I'm absolutely stunned. I, I just, I, you know, they deserve it. They deserve the junk. <laughs> <laughs> Prizes, right? <laughs> so we'll give it to Jonathan and Louise, who, as I say, may have won in the past, but as I say, they were very, very quick. You've got oh. to be them if you want to win. Yeah. Uh, and they're from Wrexham. Brilliant. So good luck to them. So that's I hope that, they then. enjoy uh, Jerry's yoga diet. Back next week, then. Yeah. See you later. See ya. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> but this, this tortoise, so if that's- And also its flashbacks would just be, uh, you know, the same wall. I mean, it basically spent, <laughs> I don't know how many years, in a cage. It was in the zoo, so, uh, it died of liver failure. Which is a problem if you're a tortoise, because with us they can cut you open and have a look at the liver. With that, it's going, forget it, we're not getting in there. It's like you when you didn't want the plumbers to knock through the tiles to check out the piping. It's around with the tortoise. If it's a liver, we're not going through that. It's not worth it. If it's your head or your feet, we'll have a look, mate. But we're not looking at internal organs with a giant tortoise. Why not? Because, what do you mean? Well, How can't, can't you drill into those things? It's only, it is only a shell. That is easier to replace than, than skin. Carl, I was joking. You can't do a liver operation on a tortoise. Why not? It's got all the same parts, hasn't it? All the same body parts and that. Well, I don't think that's the point. Well, not really, but, um, yeah, it's just But, but, better speaking. ones, in a way, because they live longer. So they're doing something right, aren't mm -hmm. they? If they can live 250-odd years, our, our art can't do that. 
Right. Which is what I say about how a tortoise has got it right in a way, that it's, it's taking its time on everything. We're rushing about, getting stressed out. That's just, you know, getting on with it. It's not rushing. Uh, it eats healthy, doesn't it? It eats lettuce and stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's probably doing it right, but to be honest, it's too much. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live 250 years. Just eating lettuce. Let's not forget that all a tortoise does is eat lettuce. <laughs> it's not like it's jet skiing weekends and then getting its lettuce on a Monday. That's all it does is eat lettuce. Yeah. And that appeals to you, does it? Uh, no. I'm just saying that it must be doing something right, though. Of course it's doing something right. Because it's living 250 years. But all animals do something right, however long they live. Mayflies live a day, but they're doing something right. Well, they're not, are they? They haven't got a chance to learn how to do it right. And then, and then they're dead. It's, you know, that's from one extreme to another, isn't it? That just mm. seems a bit mental to me, that living a day. I wouldn't bother, so forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be bothered? You know, just as you get to know someone. <laughs> yeah, another mayfly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if we had that, if that's how we lived our lives, you wouldn't have a chance to make a mark or anything, would you? It's just... It's would just you try and pack a lot in that day? Uh, Disneyland, whatever. No, I'd prefer to make it miserable so I don't miss it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you or are you controlling the brain? I don't know if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making- But you I are was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did Something that. went an onion, was it yeah, Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain <laughs> sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion, that's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away. Putting my coat on, ready to go, ready but to go and get the rice. Right. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what, so you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear then from it nowhere, was just like, it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list, it's in my pocket, I'm thinking, do I need my gloves, it's cold out. Yeah. Suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion, yeah, I had to get the paper out. So yeah, what I'm saying thing. is, it was, in, the, it was in charge. The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the- what are you doing but who's in that's charge? that's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and then you remember the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did! <laughs> yeah, but I'm not- <laughs> No, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, uh, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain, you how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes- Do you mean well, you give it information? It, well, it's if I, it, if it? I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, there's this thing but that then, there's two yous, it's this thing that there's- There's, there's Carl this, and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not- there's not a duality in this. If you- if, if you go- if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's- it, it's not- there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think? Oh, then you were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? It's last yeah. week we promised people that you'd research yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah, but I, I had a look, but uh, I didn't find him that interesting. So, but well, that's not. But this is this is what irrelevant. I mean. This is what we were talking about. You you say you wish you could go back and learn stuff in school because you didn't. You want knowledge. You always say about you want to learn. Yeah, some I want to learn something interesting every day. Yeah, but you've got that. <sighs> I gave him. I had a look at the website. It, it just oh got, oh sigmundfreud dot com. Yeah, he started that. I just didn't had he? a look. I just did a search on like famous quotes from philosophers. quotes. Brilliant. That get you everything you need. A quote. That's well, I, don't, a, I don't need to know his history. That sums I up just, a man's life work. A quote. No, but that's what you remembered for, isn't it? Churchill. 
we'll go on the beaches and all that. <laughs> uh, Sigmund didn't really have any any sort of catchphrases. Is what yeah, you mean? Yeah, that's, yeah, things that you hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sound bites. Yeah. He, he wasn't good with the press. <laughs> Brilliant. So you well, won't bother to learn about it. Well, you didn't even pick up a book. I wouldn't know where to start. Do you feel like you're thinking in your head? Sometimes, like then, I was. But I don't know if I am because it's got a mind of its own, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I did look at some of the things that he'd said, and the do one. Do it now. Do it now. Right. What have you learned about Freud? Okay. Here we go. This is Carl educates Ricky and Steve. Number one, Sigmund Freud. Carl, tell us what you learned about Sigmund Freud. Right. All I remember oh. was, like he said, a baby. You, know, you look at a little baby having some milk from its mum's breast, right? It looks well happy. Uh, it has enough. It's full up. Uh, it goes to sleep. It's got a smile on its face, right? He said, <laughs> that's what happens when you're older as well. That's all I remember from all the things that he was saying on his thing. He just said it's weird how, like, it's, it's like... Absolute. Now, to be fair, Rick, that is obviously in translation. Yeah, I know. From the original, so I don't want you No, I'm not having a go at Freud. Him, but, you know. I mean, Freud has been discredited on, on some issues and we've moved on with experimental psychology and, and But and that's, that's the you. one that was interesting. I don't quite follow- so what do you take from that? Explain that to us in layman's terms. Um, I don't know, you- Well, that's pointless. Without application, knowledge is pointless. But it's not knowledge, is it? He's just saying drink milk all your life. It's good for you. Can't no, he's see not it. saying drink milk all your life. What <laughs> is this? Is, is this an advert he's doing he now? He also came up with go to work on an egg. Yeah. Oh Christ Almighty! But but like I said, I wasn't that impressed by uh, by his by his work. So unbelievable. Carl is allowed to vote. <laughs> I know, he's yeah. allowed to cast a vote That's in this true. country. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, no. I wish I hadn't. I've only done it once, and look what happened. I got called up for jury duty. <laughs> not doing it again. People do what they do anyway. It's, I think they only let us vote, so they, so we feel like we're having a say in what's going on. But really, it just carries on, doesn't it? I haven't seen a big change. But that's exactly why you vote. No, the best thing you can do is look after yourself. Get on with it. Brilliant. Okay, well, I, I hope that's a quote. I hope someone out there who's, uh, you know, maybe making a, a dictionary of quotes or an encyclopedia and they, they've finished with Freud, they've done Freud, they've done Pavlov, he hit a dog on the head with a stick, next, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, what would, what do you say about the world? Just get on with it. Mm. Well, we're not, in, we're not in charge of it, is what I'm saying. That's it? nearly as good as, let's go to the beach. <sighs> Winston spoke, Churchill. I spoke to my dad about it, and he, he called up saying, oh, I'm sick oh, of well, hearing about Oh, we're gonna get some, some quality thinking here. <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. No, he was saying, uh, about global warming and that. Yeah. He was saying he's sick of hearing about it. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's just the world in it. We're all getting old, and the world's getting old. That's, that's the end of it. Brilliant. What an, another amazing quote. Well, it is. What, what, what we're trying to do. This is what I'm saying about, we don't like people to get old, we're always saying, oh, we can change that face, we can lift your chin up, we can put a wig on you. And Why are you saying, so annoyed about people wanting to live a little bit longer? Because enough's enough, is what I'm saying. The world, the world's the same, it's just getting old, and, <sighs> you know, it used to have more green on it, but now it's gone a bit bald, so it hasn't got as much green, it's got more soil. Treat the world like a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing quote. Treat the That's world so like you, a head. You've actually come up with one there. <laughs>
<laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel 4. <laughs> just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, come in, Carl. come in. Yeah, TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right. <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then. Go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know. Don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, 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 we, we know, we know, we can't see yet. Can I call my bluff? Yeah, okay. go on in. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! My head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang no, on. this might not be Carl. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put it with the rain. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. No. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, go on. He stinks of it. But if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Imagine this is faking it. Imagine their faces when he says that. And they're going, oh my god. Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's just amazing, Carl. Just read them again. Two, two were real, one was fake. Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is, uh, nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, I swear um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put it with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yeah. make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food <laughs> doesn't smell good, <laughs> but... If you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. right. No, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with a, Rain and the rainbow, but well, that's good. Why do you think that? Well, what what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right. So, so I, a, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? That? I I kind of thought. Was yours more specifically about cat food <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> right. you know, normally they like it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something. You know. Well, be. well, no. The way I, I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather. Conditions. No, it was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. What, what, I've used what, an everyday thing. Yeah, and put it with today's problems. Right. Go on. So, like, um, <laughs> my girlfriend. Yeah. Um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, you you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you got to feed it, but because you love it, you go well. You know, I'll pull with this just for a few minutes, and then I can like squeeze its head later and give it a little. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Can we can we go back? You know, stroke its head and stuff. Oh right, yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a slip, was it? <laughs> squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's just the thing that I do. With cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against the <laughs> exactly. wall. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but that's Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a nutter! 
I mean, he came up with the life is a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you'd say, oh, yeah, brilliant, you know, good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Cos I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, Obviously planning to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on his mind, and it's, the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the like the lid ripped up a little bit. Like mm -hmm. he's got nothing else to think about. <laughs> and I'll be looking up there. Yeah, and it's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking? This salamander. It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I can have eaten me down the market. <laughs> Well, oh, oh God! Are they, are they dangerous? Can I just say something? Are they dangerous? I think the salamander's thinking exactly the same things as you. I mean, to look at you, you've got the same expression on your face. You know what I mean? Uh, you're dressed in green as well. He's, you've got a little round sort of Hamburglar type head, like the salamander, very similar. And yet you, you know, you. I think and you bonded with it, didn't you? you yeah, were... but I, I probably would have tried to get out, but my little paper round bag would just hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, um, can we have more nepotism on the show? I know Go that on. we uh, did that earlier with the uh, teacher. We have long, have we? We have my uh, housemate. You remember I was working out with him last week to uh, Helen from Big Brother's dance size video. That's just frightening. Yeah, we, we, we've 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 kind of let that slip a little bit. I've got to be honest. But anyway, he's joined this band. They're called uh, Fujia and Miyagi. Slightly difficult to pronounce. But uh, anyway, this is a track that I think's been getting some play by uh, Nick Luscombe and John Kennedy on XFM. They got a gig this week at the Pool on Curtain Road. Uh, that's 18th of April, Thursday. Uh, let's play it. Can I've got a fridge freezer for sale. 400 <laughs> quid or nearest offer. <laughs> Fujia and Miyagi performing live uh, Thursday the 18th of April uh, at The Pool on Curtain Road. Admission is free, Rick, so you'll, I imagine you'll be heading down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Well, I've enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's been a good one. It's great. It's been great. Carl, any more? I'll oh, tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about, well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, the Forrest Gump types, when my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do, y do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. Forrest, the Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. people to, to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forrest Gump people? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> for them to be referred to a like. mini bus with <laughs> exactly. uh, life is a box of chocolates yeah, exactly. dot com. Well, oh, it's gump type. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people. It these was, pe yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the people with learning difficulties. Yeah, 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 and they used to get so fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so he got five of them in the, uh, in the cab. Yeah. And he had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff, but there was one. It was just causing loads of trouble and he couldn't control him. Oh, and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's, it's not good for them. It stresses them out and, and you could end up with a bit Thanks, of- Thanks, Dr. Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now. And he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool, and, um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Oh, he did what? Oh, He God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. in a wheelie bin. He was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Could you stop saying it? Him. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked him <laughs> up, and he, he was fine. He had a good. What? Time. He left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool. No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. Some of those one. <laughs> what you know, he tied him up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella, and like he, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that. So he was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but anyway, that's I didn't really want to talk about it. You just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you did do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time they have heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> he, yeah. he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away and um, he took him there. There was no problem. About about ten old women in a in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled over. 
<laughs> no, right, so he's there. Uh, Everything's fine. He dropped him off. They had a lovely night. Yeah. Right, they had a lovely night. Won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, I want to be dropped off here. Take me there. I want to be dropped off first. I've got to get up early. Blah, blah. You know, <laughs> my husband's expecting me. I'm already late. Take me here first. Take me there. And he just pulled up <laughs> in the middle of nowhere to get out. <laughs> and uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis. <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking them home in the minibus, and he got the sack. Jeez. Well, a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I want to be to dropped off first, take me here first, take me. Yeah, so he acts what? like a madman. <laughs> 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 good. Oh, that was all right, great. We've got, uh, we've got a crack on, haven't we, really? We've got There's uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Goodbye. Yeah, Goodbye. See you next time. Bye. Libertines, time for heroes and XFM 104.9. Right, okay, so have you got anything that is science as opposed to nonsense? Well, um... Kid went off with some monkeys, grew air, yeah. came back, shaved him, it didn't grow back. I mean, just think. Right, something else? Um, there's a few things I found. Yeah. Um, there's a fella... Oh, God. Uh, who had hiccups for 69 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a bit annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. there's the dog with the wig that we've discussed. Um, <laughs> Imagine if you just tuned in. <laughs> yeah. There's the dog with the wig that we've already discussed. Uh, did we discuss that? that? Not really. Did I not tell you what he said? I did, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Well, there's something here that you sort of know. Is this going out live? Yeah, the this minute? is happening. Right. right, go on. But, remember when you talked about, um, Sponges. Yeah. If you get a red sponge and a blue sponge. You liquidise them, pour them back into a tank, after a few hours, they, they know which was which and they, they reform as a red sponge and a, and a blue sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was weird when you told me. Yeah. Looked it up, did a bit of research. Yeah. Thought that's sort of sciency. Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with a mouse's brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain a bit more. No, you can't. Uh, if, if you get a dead mouse. Yep. Um, put its brain into a blender, you know, blend it up, um, leave it standing for a bit. Making that up, aren't you? You get your confusing this, you watch Nigella Lawson make some sort of pudding. No, <laughs> What no. do you mean? What do you, wait, it, it, wait, it won't work with the brain. Well, it, it does with a, I mean, not, not a human brain. Don't be trying although, that. Although. But, no, a mouse, a mouse one. <laughs> a mouse one. And what happens? It sort of reforms. Goes back together again. No, it's, it's, you know, because apparently it's made up of the same stuff as. But it doesn't, does it? Because if it's dead, if it's a if it's a dead brain, the cells can't act anyway. The fact the sponge is that it doesn't kill the cells; it liquidizes them. It doesn't kill the cells, yeah. so it couldn't be a dead brain anyway. It would have to be a live brain taken out from a live mouse for the cells to be getting oxygen and working and and being sensitive to each other. And that I I don't see how that could work like it does in sponges. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, do you know what I mean? You're not a scientist. I, I've cool. just sort of read it and yeah. gone, oh, that's, that's interesting, I'll tell Ricky and Steve about it. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're quizzing me as it. if I've come up with it. No. It's someone else has done it and said yeah. it works. Mm. Sure. So I'm not- do you, think, I'm not do you think ghosts are behind it or do you think there's a scientific explanation for it? No, it's just, uh, it's just one of them weird things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's what you sort of science covered yeah. for this yeah. one. Well, that was another barnstorming feature. <laughs> 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 is that it? Is that the two things you've got this week? Thanks very much for that. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, there's... They're, they're there's the nothing that... behind them, do you know what I mean by this? There's not a, there's not like a weight of intellect behind these facts. Why don't it... you make that your science project for this week? Find a dead mouse somewhere, Carl, and a blender, <laughs> and we'll bring that in next week, we'll do it live on air, see what happens. <laughs> oh. Well. Do you feel sort of let down a little bit sometimes with our reactions? Well, what I... are you expecting us to do? What, are you expecting us to just, like, look at you, open-mouthed, staring at you in awe? Just like, oh, God, yeah, where did you find that out? And, like, yeah, but we know, we you know, tell us. we know where you found it out. You looked on the internet and a strange homemade website by a maniac somewhere, uh, who puts on stupid things that he heard through Chinese whispers. It's, that's where you get your information from. I, I doubt that anything you've ever come up with is, is verified. If it is, it's luck. But what, what do you expect me to, 
<laughs> do for you. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just- <laughs> You know, I'd like to know what the source of the information is. I'd like it to be, you know, a research study by the University of Columbia, rather than, you know, a guy who calls himself Mr. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> on a website somewhere, <laughs> www.lunatics.com. <laughs> I mean, oh god, some, some kind of evidence. Do you know what I mean? I'll go, I must warn you now. You know that Steven Spielberg thing's coming, Taken. Yeah, about alien abduction. When you watch it, I just remember this: it's not a documentary. Okay. All right. And All right. You remember our ET? We were yeah. discussing that earlier. You know that's not fact. <laughs> fact or fact? Brilliant. Black Star Radiohead from the Benz on XFM 104.9. Rick, John has emailed in. Yeah. It looks here like he's maybe trolled the web himself. I mean, I don't know if people just immediately leap onto the web every time Carl says something in, 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 in his defence. I think our listeners are always on the web. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, he seems like he's reprinted here a news story, which seems to confirm Carl's monkey boy story. Yeah, what was the news Doctors story? Doctors baffled by boy six covered in ape-like hair. Doctors in Kazakhstan are baffled after finding a six-year-old boy covered in ape-like hair. Yeah. The boy, called Able, was found in a remote mountain village close to the Chinese border. He's covered in thick hair from head to toe and has an oval-shaped skull. Doctors suspect nuclear radiation or a genetic disorder may be responsible. Fine. Um, but it's an interesting bit But, there, but sorry, it's not that you could have genetic defects. I've seen lots of people born with, um, long noses, five feet, etc. I'm saying that he wasn't story. normal. <laughs> he, he wasn't normal, and then went to live with um, monkeys and grew the hair. <laughs> well, that's no, my true. point. But it says his mother and father are distant relatives. Such marriages are common in the Kazakhstan mountain hamlets. Now, uh, the village elders were consulted as to what to do with him. Right now, these are the village elders. These are the, these are the wise men of the village. These are people, presumably, that all year long are telling the the village how to live, how to survive. Yeah, you're in charge because you've lived longest. You're, yeah, exactly. You're presumably are solving any kind of moral conundrums. Yeah. Any sort of awkward things. Do you know what they suggested that they do with their hairy son? Go on. Send him to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> the cow's not in. Put him in the circus. <laughs> that was what they suggested, and uh, the mother actually wanted him to go to school. Um, Instead of the circus. I don't know, school or circus, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's better for him. <laughs> exactly. I'm not sure. <laughs> we must consult the elders. What do you think, Carl? Uh, it's not a bad life, is it? <laughs> what, the circus? Yeah. Well, you That's ran away from it. it. Yeah. I love it. But remember that thing that I saw? By that fella who, uh, Come I don't on. know if you talk about it really, so yeah. Go on. Tell us now. You hooked me. Come on. <sighs> you can say it. It's okay. What, are you worried that it might be insulting to someone? Well, it's not, it's not nice, but... It, well, you're not taking the mickey out of it, you're telling us, go on. It's just, it was in that book again that you got me, you know, the book full of weird people. Go on. And, and things that are wrong with them, and airy people, and... Yeah. Like, with three legs and that. There's a fella... Mm. Um, basically just a head. And, uh, and a little body on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. Right? Picture of him having a shave. <laughs> and he was shaving with his, with his mouth bit. Uh, with his tongue. Like that on the radio. Yeah. Just like shaving Carl is now doing an impression of a man shaving with his mouth. Yeah. Well, it's just a head, bear in mind. He's doing an impression. Imagine a head <laughs> with a very tiny body on a skateboard shaving with its tongue. That's what Carl was doing. Oh, uh, and he was depressed because he kept getting hats for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if you were him, you would just grow a beard, wouldn't you, rather than... <laughs> Oh, Why? Well, rather than go through all but that hassle. But the wheels of his skateboard. <laughs> Clash. Rock the Casbah on XFM 104.9. Nearly it. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Plumpton. So the answers to this week's Rockbusters. Yeah, yeah. Can we give us uh, the clues again in the answers? Yeah. Uh, the first one was, um, don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. The initials there were AA. That's Adamant. Adamant. Yeah. All right. That's Stop good. That's, That's a good, good one. Uh, second one, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. Uh, that was P. Uh, that was Pixies. Right? <laughs> Picks his. Picks his, it kind of works, yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, third one... I'll oh, well, let you have that one. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to put that woman in an oven. That was AB, that was Anita Baker. <laughs> Anita Baker. <laughs> it's good. Anita Baker. Anita yeah, Baker. I'll let you have all three today. So, uh, You've done well. So, do you want to pick a winner, Steve? Well done to Mark Ledder from Bo. He wins those fairly mediocre prizes. <laughs> 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 Enjoy them. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, we've had a few laughs. A few we've had a few laughs, a few tears, a few scientific breakthroughs. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll get a picture of Carl somewhere in the national press, just his little round head there. Has an email here. 
Carl is trying to distract attention from the fact that he is a monkey raised among humans and horses and has failed to develop hair. It's, uh, I can just imagine him yeah. being the second cleverest in a troop of monkeys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Second cleverest. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, it, 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 it flees out of there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his little face. I'll tell you what, Pete, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a picture of you. Just put it in the radio section of Pete. Just, this is what Carl looks like. Oh, another email. Someone said, um, when the monkey boy went to the shops, he was naked. Where did he keep his money? Good point, it didn't happen then. Right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that's that, we didn't even do all, all uh... What do you we mean? Get, we didn't get around to ritual. Oh, come on, give no, us we ritual. Haven't, we haven't really we have, time. quickly, quickly! No, it's... We have got time, just do it! Why haven't we got time? It's ten-two! Right, well we've got a long track to finish on. Well, just do it. It's... Do are, it! Are you familiar with the place called, uh... <laughs> Go on. Easter Island. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you know what they do out there? Uh, eat eggs. I right, don't know. Well, Go, that's on. Close. Go on. Go on. Right. What they do, right, is, uh, there's a load of people living on an island. Yeah. Easter Island? And <laughs> to find out who's gonna be running the place, <laughs> <laughs> they, um... They don't hold elections, do they? They have these, well, they have these birds that lay, like, expensive eggs on a, on an island. Expensive eggs! Yeah. They lay expensive eggs! Fabergé eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. On this island. Yeah. Uh, Easter once Island? A year, once a year. No, off, off it, like, oh, about, yeah. about two miles out. Right? Oh, yeah. And Whitson Island. And the yeah. sea, the sea. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, back Tuesday. Right. Right. Tell right. us! No, 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 you, no, 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 tell us, if I finish it now. Next you, week. don't you dare, oh, I'll, I'll see you later. Right. Johnny Mitchell. You. Blue Motel Room from the other oh, Nigeria to the Song Guys this week. But then, you've got to make sure you, you try and get a job, and school was sort of saying... So, 15 now. Hang on, why the Twiggies? Why did you stop going down Twiggies? Well, it was short, wasn't it? Amazing. Oh, it closed down? It closed down, it had a load of toilet rolls in there, it'd been turned into, like, a storage unit. I've never really had a, had, like, a dream, I've just bumbled along. Mm. Because, the, the, like I've said, it's bumbled. that, it's that thing of, Clackered, sort of, bumbled, um... Limsy. It's like, call my fucking bluff. <laughs> there's no point, sort of, wishing for too much, because if you don't get it, you'll be fed up. So it's better just to sort of go, well, let's see what's around the corner. This is what I've said to you about a sat-nav system. Right. It? It's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, sure, I have the sat-nav. Type in where you want to go, and it'll take you straight there. Mm. But what I say is, use the back streets. Mm. Have a look around, turn off. Don't go straight ahead, turn right. Mm. The little dead ends. Yeah, have a look. Well, you might get mugged. Have a look. Don't go down the dead ends. Why not? You've got a reverse back There's nothing there, dead end. No, but have a look. Well, there's nothing there, it's dead end. What's the road doing there then? Well, it's a dead end. There's yeah, but there must ends. be something down there. There's nothing. It's, dead. it's just ends. It's just a wall. Right, so it's not a problem. Reverse. Do, 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 well, don't go down in the first place if you know it's a dead end. Don't tell people to go down a dead end. They've got to reverse out. Difficult. Well, I'd say just have a look, you see. That's the difference between me and you. I'd right. have a look down the dead it's end. It's dead end, don't worry. It's What's dead end. Dead end. nothing, mate. Dead end. Rubbish? Just yeah, no, rubbish. nothing. Dead nothing end. at all? Yeah, no, put ground down there. Dead end. Right, so I'll go, well, I'll just have a look for myself, because I don't believe you. Okay, well, go on then. Right, I'll have a look. Yeah, oh, look. look at this I've found. What have you found? Just a box of money that you didn't know about. <laughs> All I'm saying is it could be He anything. has still got the brain of a ten-year-old, <laughs> hasn't he? Of money. He's still got the brain of a ten-year-old. <laughs> I'm just, uh, set your stall out. Right. So where's the store? Where are you sitting the store? Not in the dead end. Because there's no there's free traffic. There's no thoroughfare, yeah. You want, you want to be on this a sort of public highway. Where are you sitting the stall out? What are you selling? What are you selling? Well, this is what I'm saying to you. What are you selling I'm first? selling a mixture of stuff. What? Like what? O all sorts. What have you bought it with? A bag of money you found in the dead end? Leg warmers. Right, you got, you got le new leg warmers with, um, do you want, have you got, do you want cufflinks with them? <laughs> what? Do you want cufflinks with them leg warmers? <laughs> well, now, why would I do that? Well, you got to fucking look smart, ain't you, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so you're selling, uh, what are you selling? In... So, oh, you, yeah. set, you set your stall out. Yeah, right. Now, yes. isn't it dangerous to sell all the same product in that shop? Right. Okay, where's the analogy going? This yeah. is a metaphor. I think it's a metaphor. Yeah. Um, a simile. Yeah, what, 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 what are you selling? What are you selling first? Bang. No, two, three, four. No, but Quick, this is, is what I'm saying to you. This is what I'm saying to you, though. I right. just said to you. Yeah. You. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you wanted to do. You haven't told me. Right. I'm saying. Do you want me to tell you what I wanted to be when I wanted to be well, at five years old? I wanted to own a sweet shop until my mum said, you know, you got to buy the sweets first. Right. From ten, I wanted to be like a scientist. Fifteen, a vet kicked in. But Carry at some on. point, you jettisoned all of that to try and pursue a pop career. Twenty, I wanted to be a pop star. Twenty-five, I thought I'd better get a job. <laughs> well, at thirty, I did. 
me saying turn off the main road and do a right yes is saying just have a look around in the same way that if you go into a shop it was a metaphor wasn't it yeah Right. It was, yeah. Yeah. In the same way that if you go into a shop, mm. you're thinking I'm getting a quarter of bonbons. Right, bonbons. <laughs> bomb bombs. Well, by the time you get to the counter, you're clackered. And you get some licorice all sorts instead because you yeah. thought, actually, I forgot about them. Sorry, now this isn't a metaphor, is it? This is re this is a real shop now, isn't it? I just, uh, I just mean you're gonna be, you're gonna be let down. You're gonna be very very disappointed with life mm. if um, you know. What? Be what? what? If what? If what? If if what? If if, if what? The thing you're aiming for yeah. doesn't happen. But what if it does happen? I'd like to take issue with this, because there's a lot of young people who listen to our podcasts, and if they listen to you, this tripe, that if you try for something in life it won't happen, so don't bother, I think it's a bloody disgrace. No. Imagine if Leona Lewis had thought that when she went on the bloody X Factor. She wouldn't have got punched by that bloke in that... <laughs> 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 well, that doesn't make sense. But you know what I mean, she would not be living her dreams. Yeah, but we don't know what Leona wanted to do. She might she have wanted a backup to be a singer, plan. that's why she's done it! She might have had a backup plan. Yeah, but she fulfilled the main ambition, which was to sing. That's why she went on the show. She didn't go there because she thought I might want to work down a branch of Waterstones. Do you think she went in there and said, uh, "Quarter of bomb bombs"? She's like, "Oh, this is uh, X Factor." But she went, "Oh, go on in." <laughs> well, I was saying. Well, what about the, the 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 girl who looked like a fat baby? She went on there with a dream. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh yeah. But nah. the point is, I'm not saying you all have to go on the X Factor if you're a hopeless idiot. I'm saying if you've got a little bit of talent and you pursue it, it might take you somewhere. If you want to be a vet or a doctor or pop star, you might have a chance. You may as well have a stab for it. Then said, "Oh, it's all right. I'll just sit around in my underpants." Yeah, they're doing a new one, the X-ray factor, where you can actually, you know, become a uh, top radiologist. <laughs> <laughs> but I've said this for for an idea. I think go on. They should do that. Because how many singers do we need in the world? You see, that's the thing. We're talking yeah. about the future. Yeah. I, I think it, we're not going to talk anymore. I think we're, we're all... We're, we're, it's going to be like living in an opera. The way yeah. things are going on now, everyone wants to sing. Yeah. Whereas, if you did a TV programme to try and get a doctor, you know... X-ray factor. You know, yeah. it's all about, you know, getting in young kids, do live surgery. You know, there's big queues anyway. People are queuing up to have operations done. Yeah. So you say, look, Hilda... You have got a problem with your, with your left bun bunion. You can either wait for your proper doctor and hospital, but it's going to be a, a two-year waiting list. Or you can or have Jedward do it for you. are you free Saturday night, live? Because <laughs> we've got two 17-year-olds who are going to do it. Hilda! She comes out, they... they <laughs> start... little voice! I've never heard him do a little voice before! So do I'm going wait, I'm Okay, good. So this is, okay, what is this? This is a talent show where people can have a go at being a doctor. doctor. Right, well, this is like something from the Middle Ages. But they need, but they need volunteers who would rather have um, an apprentice, someone have a go. Well, it's not even an apprentice. It's someone no. with no training at all. Yeah, they learn how to do major operations in a week. But no, not major ones. That's for the final. You do a heart, <laughs> oh, of course, you yeah, you've got heart transplant. That, sure. But you a build heart up. transplant for the final. <laughs> That's so anyway, amazing. so it's Hilda, and Hilda's not the person, she's not operating, she's just the person who needs a bunch of food. No, she's the foot problem, yeah. So she right. comes in, they have a quick chat with have her. Have a chat with her, how's your life been? Bit of co-play under her. She's yeah, going, yeah. oh, it's terrible, I can hardly walk and all that, and they right. go, right. Here's a fowl who looks like a baby. <laughs> and then... And you think this is a good, you don't see any problems with this so far, you've not, not identified any concerns yet. If it means you get younger people into other jobs other than singing, mm. I agree with you. I think it's crazy that everyone now just wants to be uh, a famous, a singer or something, and we don't need them. They're just contriving it. They're, all they're doing singers. is knocking the last one off the top number one. So it's just a factory. But I'm not talking about everyone should try and be a singer, am I? What I'm saying is sometimes you're allowed to pursue your dreams and they might be, you may, you may fulfil those dreams. Yeah, There's nothing Steve, wrong with that. Steve, it may be that you Steve. want to operate on a woman called Hilda or a bunion. Steve. Pursue that Go dream. On. But according Steve. to your negative views, we shouldn't even try and do that Steve. either. What Go I'm on. saying is... Go on. What's he saying? Leona was an example. I'm not saying everyone should try and be like Leona. No, but no. Listen. listen. Listen to his point, Stephen, because okay. he's got a very good point coming up Here it now. comes. This is it. Okay. He hasn't said a, 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 a normal word yet, but he's going to say some now and they're all going to be profound. People's dreams. Mm. Aren't their own dreams? Oh, hold on. What do you right. mean by that? Okay, keep that going. No, keep going. Keep going. Let, no, 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 no. Yeah, He'll explain. Don't, you don't need to ask any questions. He'll explain. Because they think they know what they want because mm. they see it on the telly. Mm. They see, you know, someone singing a song and they go, "I want to do that." Yeah. So all I'm saying is, change the dreams. Mm. Change the dreams. Yeah. What? Surgery. They're watching that. <laughs> they see an elder happy with a better foot. The doctor's getting all the praise, they go, I want a bit of that action. That's what it's about. They don't want to be singers. Mm. They want to be known, they want to be famous. Yeah. So, fine, have a bit of fame, 
but do mm. some good, fix Hilda's foot. Sorry, was that the end of the point? Yeah, because all we've done, we've, we've changed the dreams. Dreams are- Well, um, you've, you've hit on a good point there, because what is astounding is that when you, you know, um, people are inundated with praise for people who are just clothes horses, they are just skinny nobodies who don't do anything except have their picture taken and their role models for, you know, I'm not talking about, um, you know, anyone in particular, but it's just these people who, uh, you know, want to be seen with other celebrities and marry celebrities and be a celebrity. People think that's an easy life because they're getting rewarded for it. And yet, someone who's stuck in a laboratory trying to come up with a cure for AIDS, they don't know or care about them. And okay, can I just point out though that if we're going to have a go at people being successful, making money, and being well known for doing nothing of any value. I point you to the man sat opposite me here. <laughs> and that's, hey, I tell you, there's times when I, you know, lie awake at night thinking, what was my dreams? Yeah, but, I have to be a little but I've got a new boy yeah. here. Hold on. And two houses. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to be a little doctor. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's past me now, there's no way I can, I can go back. Uh, well. But it would have been brilliant. You're wrong. Right? Carl Pilkington! <laughs> Hilda! <laughs> what is it? What what now, Hilda, what's up with you? I've got um, I've got terrible piles. Um uh, it's there's some there's some sort of blockage up there. I, I haven't gone to the uh excuse me, I haven't gone to the toilet for a week. Well, Carl, can you unblock Hilda's arse? Now live, unblocking Hilda's arse. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I thought she had bad feet. No, the feet were, no. Jed would fix her feet. There's a lovely job, that's why they stayed in last week. Her arse is worse than her feet. It's because she's been off her feet for so long, because she couldn't walk. Her arse took the brunt of it, and it's just terrible. Piles of burst, and it's blocked up there where all she just eats is cheese because she's so depressed. I'd, I'd just, I'd probably knock it on the head there. I'd Why? just say, because I'd just say, like going back to the, the street thing, I've gone down the wrong avenue. Right. I go, this isn't for me, I didn't know I'd be, you know, eye to eye with this. <laughs> What's up? It's not for me, and that's how you find out that it's not for you, by doing it. Right. But at least I gave it a go. So this the same as you had one fight with Leroy, you went along to a dance studio, it was shut, you've seen Hilda's ass, and it's turned you off proctology. Once again, you've just abandoned it. Yeah, well, that's a, there's Have no Have a point. go! Have a go! Just feel inside Hilda's back passage. Feel the blockage. Right. No, because the audience have already decided. They've seen a weakness in me. They're going to vote me out. No, no. There's no point me getting dirty fingers for this. <laughs> but it's, it's funny as well, because, like, uh, you, had, you had two names. I just, like, remembered. I started <laughs> off as, um, Dazzling Darren's Disco, just because the first lights I could afford belonged to someone who had their name put in lights. Right. So I went along with that <laughs> name for a bit. pretend you were called Darren. That's lovely. That's crazy. Is it worth it? <laughs> Brilliant. And then it went on to Pilkins making music. Yeah. 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 That's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah we've been waiting for what, what are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, window. brilliant. Yes, Steve Merchant Steve here. Merchant. Steve Merchant. Yeah. Okay, don't, 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 don't keep saying it. <laughs> and Carl. Uh, Carl, obviously, yeah. Now stop, we've stop been fiddling, uh, Carl. We've been digging As around in Carl's office, haven't we? As ever, Rick. Um, he's a little bit nervous about this. Well, but he doesn't need to be. I don't think he is. He just needs to trust us, Carl. Just trust us. Trust us with the music. Trust us with the speech output. <laughs> trust us. <laughs> yeah. That's easy for me to yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious, Rick, that sometimes perhaps we're a little ill-prepared on sure. the show, and I just wanted to make sure that we were sort of keeping ourselves abreast of developments, changes at the station, <laughs> policy. You said breast. Thanks. Uh, you know, policies particularly, and I um, was lucky enough just to stumble across this, and I feel that actually a couple of weeks back we were a little ill-prepared, because we yeah. hadn't read this. Yeah. This is the XFM uh, information, it's the guidelines, if you will, sure. on how to react to deaths, disasters, and other news emergencies. Yeah, and there's, there's very important ones, like important a, a royal policies. death, there's like, you know... Well, there's certain criteria. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. the general guidelines state that occasionally something will happen in the world that prompts XFM to break away from the normal programming and react to our audience's feelings of shock or grief. Mm. Uh, as broadcasters, we have a 
duty, do you think? They're not talking about our show, though, are they? They're yeah. talking about something happening. No, all, all shows. I, I mean, no, no, like people being caused grief, just Carl's on the air. Right. You mean like, you know. I mean, a bigger event. A royal yeah. dying. Or a royal dying or some kind of, um, you know, major disaster. Sure. Um, we should be able to tailor our output to show that we feel the same way as the audience in yeah. these times of trouble. No, uh, that would never involve the station shutting down completely, Rick. No. I want to reassure you of that yeah. now. And it would never involve playing classical music or stopping all speech content. Sure. Because okay. a lot, because that, that, they put that in there, because a lot of stations, that's exactly what they do. Exactly. But um, oh, uh, have, have deemed it that, that, that we don't have to go completely down the line. There, we have oh, to do it in our own way. Go People on. need company at times like this. Yeah. And should be able to look to us for both factual information and emotional reaction. Sure. Uh, we simply have to change our tone and our playlist to show that we're all feeling the same thing. Right. Be it. Oh my God! I can't believe this is happening. Or, well, it's pretty sad, but she was 101 after all. And that's actually in that. That's what it isn't actually it? says in the general <laughs> guidelines. That's as they are stated. Um, uh, if you should hear about the death of a major royal, yeah, this is information that you're actually read. reading this, by the way. Yeah, I'm you? reading this. Yeah. Out. What you should do is say nothing about this on air, on air under any circumstances. Drop all the ads and promos from your schedule. And if Chris Smith, the news guy, is in the building, get him in the studio immediately. Yeah. That's what it says, Carl. Yeah. If Smitty is a, I don't care where he is, I don't care if he's on holiday. Let's phone him up now and tell him someone's died. To see how he would react. Get, get, get him down here. <laughs> get him down here. See how long yeah. it takes him to get down here. Where, does, the, he, where does Smitty live? Because I know where he lives. He lives in a cave and he slides <laughs> down a pole. <laughs> yeah. And he gets into a car. His butler <laughs> uh, uh, is, is up there and he, and he sorts well, things out. I, th I suppose the approach there is that only Chris can deliver this tragic news. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it was you or I. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same. Uh, I remember, do you remember the XFM, uh, as it first started, it launched the day after after, um, uh, Princess Diana died. I know, I know. And, yeah. and, I, and I'd never done radio before. I was nervous enough. Mm. And it was a lot, and it was, oh, how... Because I, I, was it, was it the first night, because what I've forgotten, actually, until you mentioned that then, is, of course, you used to host your own phone-in oh, show. God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten all about that. Yeah. Oh, man, I like And I gave that up after a week because it was just too stressful. I have never seen a man so petrified. I know. He spent all his time preventing people getting through on the phone lines. Yeah. He just wouldn't let people come on air. And, 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 and for the f for when I had to go on air, right, um, my mates sort of like came over the first day and they were mucking around and uh, I was having a drink with them where I was still working and I was going, I've got to go on air in a minute and I was like drinking shandy or something because I was saying I didn't want to be drunk. Really. And uh, I kept saying, don't swear. <laughs> Telling my mates not to swear. They look at me like I was mental. I was going, don't swear, because I'll swear. I was terrified of two things. Um, just swearing uh, and, and, uh, and operating the desk. I thought, I'm gonna, even if I get through operating the desk, I'm gonna swear. And it just, uh, oh, it was, it was awful. Didn't you, um, didn't you spill coffee over the machine and then go, oh shit? On your first link. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> but I no. know it wasn't a triumph. No, I started off with a, I was really like the music, and I started off with a classical piece by, <laughs> um, a bloke called Kuntz, <laughs> who's a, uh, a German composer. Brilliant. So I knew, I, I knew it was, it was okay. You were off. Yeah. You were off. off, yeah. Um, but, uh, and so how did it go then? Because I remember it was appalling. But <laughs> Carl! He's a composer! Look it up. Yeah, I know he is. Right, uh, 08, 700, 800, 1234. Yeah. If you know what yeah, the composer yeah, I'm yeah. talking yeah. What? Yeah. We've what? done it. We've done it now. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, Carl. Come on. You know what people are like? What? They take things badly, don't they? <laughs> like who? Like you, what? You just... It's like a... <laughs> a, a, a bull to a red rag, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you do, yeah, but the thing is that we say bad words and we get in trouble. But I was listening to Heart um, uh, the other day, and they played Luther Vandross, and uh, th that that song uh, uh, was it? Um, never too much, never too much. Play a bit. The lyric in this is disgusting. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> Woke up today, looked at your picture just to get me started. That is That's disgusting. filthy. Play it again. That is just depraved. filthy. What a fil What I mean, is he doing? Just something like that. Imagine that. He's got a young girl's picture and he's going, oh, thanks for that. And he phones up and goes, what did you say? You know that picture you gave me? She goes, yeah. He goes, well, <laughs> I looked at it just to get me started. <laughs> <laughs> that poor young woman. Must I imagine more that like she's sleeping, <laughs> and he just sneaks in and just he's got a Polaroid camera. She wakes up. He goes, "What are you doing?" She goes, "What, what are you up to?" He goes, "No, I'm just taking a picture." Well, why? I'm gonna. Uh, we're we're meeting tomorrow, are we? Yeah, you're, you're well, going on holiday tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I need. I need. Oh, that. You need something to get me started. <laughs> what do you mean, get you started? Yeah, you know, in the morning. <laughs> and then that's on heart. Mm. 
All right. Six point two. So don't come on here and tell us what we, we can can't say. Play. We can't say. We can't cunts. say classical composers' <laughs> names or philosophers like Kant. Exactly. So don't tell well, us that, Carl. All right. Just play a record. What is that, Steve? Some ride, Steve. Yeah, I just think it's time that we listen to some ride, Rick. We haven't listened to. <laughs> I don't know about you and I, but I, I haven't listened to, to any for a, a, about six, seven weeks. Yeah. Just thought it'd be good to have them on the air again. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a tragedy they split up. <laughs> this is uh, the classic Chelsea girl play it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. In their lifetime. I really. know. Yeah. Right. There is a great sort of, sound. But influenced lots of bands at it that time. Yeah, so the old Brit Bop thing and the, the wall of sound mm. and mm. they weren't were they shoegazers, do you think they were, weren't they? Well that's we, what they thought because there was a lot of noodly yeah. guitar. But yeah. uh, good melodies as well, Rick, and that's always important. Uh, it is to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about uh, you Carl, but it is important to us. Yeah. We've just had uh, a couple of um people, Sarah and Claire call it and wish us luck for the BAFTAs, but mm. for some reason they want one of us to do an impression of Leslie Phillips. Can't do it. I can't, I, 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 it I doesn't mean, he say ding dong? And uh, hello, and all that. That's not bad. But, That's but bad. I want, I want Carl to do it though. Yeah, go on Carl. Go on. Hello. <laughs> well done, say ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. No. <Nice. laughs> yeah. Do you do any other impressions? Um. No. <laughs> I, I can't think of any. Hello. Do that. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> hello. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Oh, God. Do, uh, You're my name is Bond, James Bond, as, uh, as though it were Sean Connery. My name's Connery. Bond. James Bond. Do that. Go on. My name's Bond. No, do it as though you were in doing an impression. Sean. I'm, what, so I'm trying to be Scottish? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, sort of. Perhaps a bit more specific than that. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Bond. <laughs> not, Keep going. Not... My name's Bond, James Bond. <laughs> Look, Jimmy Stewart, it's not that this is, this is the best fun. It's like yeah. having your very own Fisher Price toy yeah, for two exactly. hours a week. Exactly. It's great. Um, do, um, uh, uh, Roger Moore. Do that. Uh. Roger Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis Pierce, Percy Sugden, I'm, I'm licensed to kill. Uh, that, anyway, she just said. No, this is a great no, game. No, no, that's yeah. Any, we'll we'll come back to this another time. Yeah, maybe. anything, anything you want Carl to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Carl's homework today was come up with those, you know those, um, lateral thinking things? Go on. Those stupid- Oh, I hate they're them. They're ridiculous, aren't they? Like they, um, a man went into a field and died, and you're meant to ask questions like, oh, was it- and it turns out, his parachute didn't open. So it's basically, it's not logic, it's what am I thinking? Yeah. Well, there's that one where there's a man in- this is the worst I've ever heard. Yeah. A man is found dead, lying in a phone box. Yeah. Right, his wrists are cut. Mm. He's bled to death, and there's glass everywhere. Yeah. Right, and the phone's hanging off the hook. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What happened to him? I know this. Yeah. Right. Do you know what the answer is, Carl? It's ridiculous. He was a fisherman. Yeah. He was on the phone. Someone asked him how big his fish was. He did that gesture like fishermen always do to say it was much bigger than it actually. Put his arms out. His arms went through the glass, and he slashed his wrists, why and he died. Why did you do that with someone on the phone when they can't see how how big you're actually saying? Well, that's one of the many problems with that, uh, yeah. that conundrum. Yeah, not the point we were making, but again, good. You know, I mean, you're there. You, that is good thinking. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, what do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's, he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is, uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because I, I'll up. tell you this: they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the houses of parliament. Uh, no, where, where would they start? Yeah, my <laughs> fellow, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, and it like cowboys and Indians. They didn't have playstations and two pack then, and there was still violence. What do you mean in the Wild West? Yeah, do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff. It, it'll always happen. That's you know that's the world, and it? it's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's, he's sort of right, in a way, in his, in his innocence, in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what he said. He just said there's always been violence, you know what I mean? It's sort Even, of like... you know, dinosaurs, look at them. They, they caused a lot <laughs> of And then he went too far and made himself... Yeah. <laughs> sound like a fool again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened, it always will. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't try and change it. Yeah, yeah. just chill out is what you're saying. Do you know, uh, do you know what we should do? We should, we should all get on our bike, go and find ourselves when we're little and go, be careful what you do in life. <laughs> Oasis, Supersonic, 
Still good. Still isn't as it? good as ever. Still good on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You'll be pleased, Rick. Go on. Ricky Anderson has uh, emailed him. Dickers. Dickers. Danderson. Oh, yeah, what are you doing, uh, Dindo? He, he's uh, he's probably our uh, biggest fan. Diddler, you little diddler. <laughs> exactly. He has emailed in as ever. Ricky, your show fascinates me. How do you maintain such levels of senseless drivel? <laughs> That's from uh, from Randers, from Randy Anders. Little I call diddle him. diamonds. <laughs> Oh. oh! So, uh, thanks again, uh, um... Dudley? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well done, he's, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, nice I get a buzz. I, I, I was disappointed last week where he didn't... What, what, ask him why he's, uh, didn't... He didn't, he didn't, he didn't last respond last week, no, it's a shame. Probably right? busy. Yeah. I don't believe he had something better to do. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. I can't believe that of anyone. No. When, uh, <laughs> well, you've got this sort of level. Exactly. Uh, intense chat. What have you done this, uh, week, Carl? Well, I've had a, uh, had a few days off, haven't I? Yeah. Still... You know, doing stuff for this show and that, but <laughs> managed to put a few really. hours in. Yeah, uh, not really. Just, just doing, doing nothing and, uh, bought a place. I was, I was looking at kitchens. Yeah. Weighing some of them up and, yeah. uh, checking them out. Checking them out and, uh, also ordered a sofa. Yeah. Nice sort of comfy sort of le leatherish mm -hmm. sofa. Oh, a leatherish. Oh, I don't, I don't like leather sofas. I don't, no, I don't... Yeah, but what are you picturing? A leather um, sofa. A leather sofa. Yeah, I just, like, I just squeaky and it's- No, this it's, isn't. This isn't, isn't it? No, this isn't like that. But I want, I want a really old, sinky, yeah. dent of fabric. I want, I want a sofa that is as comfortable as a bed. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Well, if it was acceptable, you'd have a bed in your lane. <laughs> yeah. If that was allowed, yeah. without seeming We're, like you were sort of, like, elderly, or That would be just... good. And I'd have, I'd have a drip going in, yeah. sort of like with nutrients, because you know, I, I can't be bothered to chew. No, no you can't, lager, yeah. Sort of lager with- Sort of, uh, uh vitamins. vitamins. And then, in. and then one going from the knob down to the toilet. To the lower trunk, uh, yeah. And with all the remote controls. And mm. I, uh, that would be amazing. To be fair, you're almost there, Rick. <laughs> I've <laughs> certainly <laughs> seen the toilet tubing. <laughs> and I've been around in the past. <laughs> my dad's bed, right? My dad would never change his chair. Well, I would try and get rid of it, because it, it would just fit to him and it'd just be absolutely dilapidated, right? And what, sounds like he's got, he had like his own chair in the lane. Yeah, his yeah. own chair, right? And then, uh, uh, and his bed, right? When, uh, they had separate rooms towards the end. Um, and his bed, right, it was just, it had it for years, and it was a big dip. It really? was just like a spoon in the middle where it's just, it was concaved. Where it's like, wow. And my mum <laughs> used to just vacuum it out. Oh! Where all the little bits of like, you know, he'd have a fag in bed or he'd do his roll ups in bed. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, that's he said to him, what, why do you like that bed? It's curved, you, you, you know, he goes, he goes, it means I can't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that it was like, in a hammock. That's great. That can't uh, be good for his back. Well, I don't think it matters. So oh, the end, it? Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, a, a hammock would be, I, I, I really yeah. would love a, a hammock. I think a big bean bag would be good, wouldn't it? With a telly. A, a bean bag as big as a bed would be amazing. Yeah, but this is still the telly thing, because uh, do you, Prop yourself up a little bit to watch it. Do you watch it on the side, which is annoying? Do you turn the telly on the side? That's always- I've always wondered about that. The weird- the weird thing is, right, you know, I've mentioned before about certain things that are just right, like, your hand, five fingers is- is just enough, <laughs> right? One more- The sex tips. It ruins stuff. Yeah, well, one less. One less than you, you know, saying about drying your pots and that, it'd be really slippery and that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and the weird thing is, right, I think bed, that's na what nature had in- in <laughs> quite- no, yeah. but like, like, um, my mum and dad, right, they moved to this little, like, little house, right, and, um, they had loads of furniture that they collected over the years without chucking out, and they've moved to this small house, so they just had s too much furniture, right? Mm. And, uh, they had this double bed, and that was for, like, you know, when friends come round and that, they can stay there. But the problem was, he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed. Sort of wrapped around because, the bed. Yeah, yeah, but because the room was so small, he thought, I can sort that out. Yeah. Right? And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed? He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed, and everything. And well, so he just sliced some off. Like a big sandwich, just c cut just, a bit off. Just cut, cut the crust how, off. How much is that, would you say? About eight inches, six About inches. eight inches. But hold on, but that well, won't work. Because it'll all fall out the side, and then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? He so it just collapsed. It, it, didn't, it didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed. <laughs> but, but the weird thing is, he did it, and even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah, like, well of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in, it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. 
Not even that though, just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people this is- this is hard work now. This is like, you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he- why did he build the wardrobes first? Is that <laughs> measuring- putting the- I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> but it's just weird how only eight did inches- Did he use an electric- one of those electric saws? Yeah. And That's there was amazing. just- presumably there was just kind of- what sort of material and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh, with the legs? Did he have to move the legs in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the- the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was sure. like, yeah, that's alright, done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night, he's like, you know, sleep well. Got up in the morning after having about forty-five minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. Yeah. And he you goes, really you are your father's son, aren't you? <laughs> 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 said, not said, right with that. It's not right. And he said, oh, well, I said, what have you done? It doesn't seem the same. And he said, oh, I had to shorten it sort of thing, you mm. know, to fit in the gap. I said, well, I can't sleep in it. I said, that, and there was a big kerfuffle. My mum was saying, look, you have our bed then and we'll sleep in that one. Mm. And my dad was like, sod that. Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. You know. <laughs> some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep and I was saying, look, you know, I only come and see you like every couple of, you know, probably once every six can months. I'm not being funny, but next time we go home, can I film it? Mm. Just for, do you know I mean, Channel 4 or something? Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The yeah, Pilkingtons. Uh, be... uh, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? Ho <laughs> ho That's brilliant. Is there anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or oh, Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird though. Weird. Play a record? What do you want to play? Do you want to play, uh, do you fancy playing something of yours? Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you, maybe? Oh yeah, no, I'll tell you, yeah, I'd like to play this, yeah, Bronze Age Fox. Uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, the Kyle, the always tune. working, he's play always the working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's on the bobby ball. Coldplay, the scientist, X-Men 104.9, I'm Richard Jameson, this is Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Carl, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's how you spoke. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are you doing then? Let's uh, have a quick uh, reprise, if we could, of the uh, of the Rockbusters clues. Yeah, Rockbusters. If you just tuned in, you've missed it this week. Uh, if you three well, no, you haven't. That's why we're giving the clues again. Yeah, I know, but if they haven't, eh? Hey? What? Say if they've been busy. Just, just give the clues again. <laughs> um, first oh one, God! Um, don't argue with him because he, he isn't going to change his mind. That's AA. <laughs> Second one, um, he always gets what he uh, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P, yeah. And the third and final one, oh, I might have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. Interesting. Are we telling him or still- No, 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 no the, the, people yeah. have still got a chance to win those extraordinary prizes. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've still got on. features to come though, Steve. It's got incredible. We've still got Ritual, got where, like, remember last time, people in India, it's good to have a flat head. <laughs> yeah. We've got Do We Need em. Mm. I've got That's Ridiculous. That's a great game. Um, I thought of another phrase you could, you know, just, just sitting here talking to you, flogging a dead horse. Yeah. What do you, what do you think that means? Flogging a dead horse. A number of people are still amazed by your complete lack of understanding some of these famous, uh, sayings and phrases, so. Well that's an easy one. Yeah, that's, that's like, uh, you know, get, get a new, get a new horse or, um. Mm. No, he hasn't got it. No one's gonna buy it. No, it doesn't mean that sort of flogging. When you're hitting it. Yeah. Right. So what's the point in hitting it? So it's dead anyway, so don't bother hitting it. It's absolutely not feeling it's pointless. Anymore. It's a way it just means it just means it's a waste of time. Yeah, but it depends what that horse has done to you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it does. It's that thing, innit, of like a, if a bear attacked you mm. and you managed <laughs> to hit it on the head and it went down, you'd go and you'd be annoyed, you'd still have built up aggression, you'd give it an extra clout. <laughs> 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 That's Again. extraordinary. I don't know who's compiling this book. Sometimes um, it's worth flogging a dead horse if he did something to you, if he annoyed you. With respect to Carl, never before have I understood so little of what a man says. <laughs> Virtually everything that Carl talked about was aloof to me. What on earth was he ranting about? Flies and condoms, monkeys and pushing the left button, cavemen and dinosaurs. And that's just some of you. I mean, let's be honest. If you are in America, I mean, that's the accent is probably a, a problem. But that is the best write-up we've ever had. Yeah. Flies and imagine if you're a new listener. Flies and condoms. Uh, what no. on earth does that mean? This one's from uh, Kent Plummer from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl. Um, he was, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he uh, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous uh, mantra: "Waste not, want not." 
Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he? What did he do? <laughs> what was his job? Benjamin Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from the 1800s. He was he, a, a he sort of thinker, of a philosopher, a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, and he's also on a money. big political figure. He features on he's the on a dollar bill, the ten dollar bill, or something. Yeah. So he's you no, know, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers, uh -huh. and he came up with the mantra "Waste not, want not." You must know "Waste not, want not." I mean, that's just. Do you I'll, understand I'll, the I'll, phrase "Waste not, want not"? Uh, no, not really. No. What, what does it mean? You've never heard that. I've, I've heard, I think I've heard it. But I don't know. I've never. I've never used it. But I'm, when someone well, in, else said it, I don't know what. Well, in context, it. I mean, all I'm going to do now is paraphrase that and put some prepositions and stuff in it for you. I can't work out how you can't work out what that means. It's what? like, uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it, and therefore you you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So. Uh, uh, mm. so, so he was a bit of a well, hoarder. Well, if you don't waste food, for instance, then you <laughs> He's a bit of a hoarder! <laughs> for God's sake. No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he'd, he ever said? No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profane things. So why things. is that one He remembered? did experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more, inventing electricity, than someone... He didn't invent electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying. Well, it's not want not. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. <laughs> what I don't understand is go why, on. why he was the first person to sort of suggest, look, don't go chucking that out. Keep it. You might need it later. <laughs> <laughs> if I he said, wasn't the first person. <laughs> Say that again. That is brilliant. That now that why isn't that catch on? That is amazing that you've just come up with there. That's poetry. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I'd just say, whoa, whoa, don't, don't be chucking that out, you might need that later. <laughs> <laughs> don't be chucking that out, you might need that later. Carl Pilkington. Whereas some would argue five. that waste not, want not is, is perhaps a little bit more pithy, a little bit we more... We should uh, go through great say sayings and phrases and, sa and say, if he could, well, firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean, and then secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. Well, we'll make another one we'll do that next time. Week. So, uh, so uh, um, oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Winston Churchill. Um, mm -hmm. Never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you? Do you know what that means? So he's he's saying. Well, it's with regard to the Battle of Britain and the pilots that gave their lives. Yeah, I just, I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who who gave a lot for a few or whatever. Right. No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were one of those few yeah, that I, gave so much for so many, i.e. means the, these these few good men, w their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person but, in the world, and they but, they were yeah. few brave men, yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who, who gave up his life, right, I'd want a name check. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives, well done on that, see you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> yeah, bungled in, yeah. He made up a word! You don't want to be bungled in! You made up a word! See, that's it, you see, we've been looking for it. That's original, that's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. I think trousers are going to be stopped being made. <laughs> just because, right. you, see, you see kids now, they've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. So I think I think they're, they're, that's evolution, just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> that's the evolution of the trouser, because it's dropping incrementally well, you see, down now, you the arse. You see kids' underpants, so they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one! <laughs> okay, that's an amazing make, one! They'll stop making trousers in the future, good, okay. Good. Uh, we're going to get weaker. We're, we're, that's already That's already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> right. So we've definitely that's that's evidence. You can't argue with that. <laughs> I'd probably put that first because the guy's right. What's number two? So swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Okay, they number three. They used to say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. They used to say. They used to say, pull your trousers up. No, they say, pull them down, you can. <laughs> I'm gonna have such fucking trouble. Number three. <laughs> right.
<laughs> Number three. Oh, the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll, and they go, "Ooh, mm. what can number three be?" Uh, I reckon we'll blend all our food. <laughs> No, I honestly the... thought, man, we were going to make a point about race. Yeah. I never thought it would be, we'll blend all our food. <laughs> like oh, like they do for babies, you mean? Just, oh. Yeah, I just think, oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen oh. chewing on big lumps of meat. Yeah. We had wisdom teeth. Yeah. Now they say, oh, take them out, you're not using them. Yeah. Why not using them? Because your food's soft. Yeah. Mm. Sorbet. Yeah. Soups. <laughs> yeah. Uh you know, everything's softer, Just isn't it? When you get an avocado, yeah. they say, yeah. is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think, I think chewing is a t sort of thing of the, the past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You don't mm. have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon, uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth, mm. done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> it's sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> This is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're, if, if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto yeah. with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking around? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No, what you mean is that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses. So, what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads ghetto. of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental, pointless, would never work. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely but one of the maddest so things you've ever weird, said. Really weird, that one. Yeah, it yeah. could be done. It, well, I reckon it, it could be easily why done. Why would it be? Okay, okay, that last one, that's number four. That's a load of bollocks. <laughs> um, so, what's number five? There'll be, there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, we're, we're not running out of no, words. We are. Now. We are definitely no. running out she's of using words. She's using the letters we've no. already got yeah. and making new words. Yeah, we're yeah. making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Okay. Have you any idea? You could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's, that's because their, their alphabet yeah. is shorter than ours. They've only got something like 24 letters over there. Right. But they go mental with the L. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what we do is, we've got 26 letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling we, at all. We, we are. We're not. I mean, it's a stupid... Boswallocks. <laughs> in shampoo. Now there's a word where they've gone, well we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks? Boswallocks. <laughs> Have you just made that up? No. no it's that, it's now they go, I knew, knew with Boswallocks and Ceramide are. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to invent, they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. Yeah, <laughs> it's another word. Is that real? You've missed yeah, that out, no, you? I am, that's a real word. Yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, go on. sodium. That sounds <laughs> so that dear. sounds all right. He likes sodium. He doesn't <laughs> like with that. because it sounds like an, an in, something in it, like an ingredient. Well, yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswells? Are you winding me up? <laughs> no, it's real. It's, it's, it's real, and that's because twenty six letters. We've wasted them. Years ago, we went mental with the, you know, pneumonia sticking a P on it. And uh, there's loads of words where you go, what's that letter doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? <laughs> and has? now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Uh, things, no. Cars are called things like, you know, GTI or something. Because they're going, well, I can't think of a word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? Well, tell me a word that up. hasn't been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be you. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. 
It took Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. Well, I think we've, uh, I think we've, um, sorted out the future. See? Strokes. Someday. No, it was a better, better choice, wouldn't it, to start off with. Um, oh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Steve Mitchell. No, come on, let's get my name right from now on. That, that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it? Steve Merchant. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. that's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong, it's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking exactly, it might be Exactly, it might be Mitchell. Oh, God, sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the stereophonics. Oh, loser. Because it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is, he was nothing when Nobody. we found him. He's like, like work experience. And now he's going, oh, so we should start off with the stereophonics. I'm going, Trying oh, to tell you what to do, If really? I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> Basically. Well, you probably come to me, I imagine. <laughs> I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. just keep it, just because he uh, was in a, was it, Pilkey's yeah, Making Music? Pilkey's Pilk 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 Making Music. I bet you never pleased a crowd once. Did. Loads of times. Go yeah. on then, what did you play? What's the biggest gig you ever played? I did, uh, a, like a social club gig. Yeah. And, and it wasn't just about the music either. <laughs> I used to- What else could it be about? <laughs> I used to take prizes and- and cigars and stuff. <laughs> In a youth club! To give away. I just love these, like, 14-year-old manks hanging out going, let's go down here, you might have some fags yeah. and cigars for us. Well, it was whatever, like, was on my mum and dad's dressing table. That could have been embarrassing. <laughs> that could have been deeply embarrassing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. You've won. <laughs> and third prize, some handcuffs. And a black mamba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not saying that at any point, in your upbringing, your parents left around any kind of marital aid on the dressing table. <laughs> don't, don't think I'm saying that, Carl. <laughs> I'm not suggesting- <laughs> like, he doesn't like this, does no, he? Well, I, no, I can understand why. Oh yeah, cause it's about, it's about his parents having sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, they must have. Yeah, well, at, at least three least. times. I think I was an accident. <laughs> like, I still have had sex well, Carl. I, I think, I think it's been ongoing. Just because me, me brother and sister are quite older than me. Yeah, me too. I was an accident. I know that, yeah. Um, How old's your, uh, brother and sister? Um, I think my sister's about 39. Right. And my brother's about 37. Okay. And you're 29. I'm like 29. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my, my next one's 11 years older than me. Yeah. That was definitely a... Do you want to have a hug, you two, or...? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're dealing yeah. with it now, you got over oh, it? Well, would you like to see us have a hug, or...? <laughs> oh, oh, you had a mobile rubbish. disco as well. You're having a laugh, aren't you? I was, I, every single gig I did, it's dynamite. The people loved it, it was storming. What, what, what was I, it called? I ran it from about the age of 14 to 18. What was it called? Was it called in the, the name of our mobile disco? Yeah. It had two names in its lifetime. <laughs> yeah. It started its life as, bear with it. Go on. The Rock and Roll DJs. Oh my god. <laughs> the Rock and Roll DJs, that's the <laughs> worst. I mean, that's the worst. Yeah. That's the most appalling. But it, then it, it became pretty bad after that when it became the Fantasy Island Roadshow. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Because everyone up to you looked like Tattoo. Partly that, and I, because I liked the program Fantasy Island. Why did you like the programme Fantasy Island? Well, it was about love on an island. <laughs> it wasn't, it was about a midget on an island. No, the midget was a minor character, it was about people going to find <laughs> love and romance. You obviously yeah. switched off once the midget <laughs> had gone off and said, there's the plane. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. that then. Your yeah. parents went, that's over then. It's only five minutes long. <laughs> yeah, well, it's... <laughs> and it's, what's that fantasy midget? Yeah. What happened then? Because you know, didn't they, uh, they, um, acted out their fantasies on an well, island? people eh? would pay to go to the island, um, yeah. to live out their own romantic fantasies, and then invariably that's what was it always romantic, it was always about getting Yeah, it was a kind of love island. Yeah. Was it? Well, no, not always. It, sometimes they might be. Maybe a, I didn't watch the whole one. Maybe I did just see him like smack a little tattoo did. around the head. I think you just saw the trailer. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh really? But, um, so what does this sort of go? I've always wanted to have someone in. Well, no, it, it might be something like you know. I've always wanted to uh, to sort of you know live out uh, uh, being a gunslinger in a wild west frontier town. You know, so you might kind of create that. Fantasy. But what's that got to do with? Well, love? invariably would find love, or he'd sort out some emotional problem he had. It was much more a spiritual, emotional journey than so, it was well, about little midgets running around. But was it like, um, oh, I'd like to be a cowboy and uh, like remember the shag? <laughs> Yeah, right. it was like, you want fix it. Like those letters you wrote, did you want to fix it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to meet five star and if something happens, so be it. <laughs> well, um, well, but no, I have to just say once though, this on. is about my, this is my DJing credentials. I was once playing, uh, music at a scout jamboree. 
Yeah. When I was about 17, big 16, gig, 17. Big, big, gig, big gig. gig. There was a thousand scouts there. Yeah. Right, yeah. They were, and I tell you this, we were playing on stuff, they were loving it, they were dancing, it was in a big marquee. Right. right? I slapped on, smells like teen spirit. Yeah. Right? They went mad. They went mad for it, they were, they were moshing, they were climbing up the poles, the organisers were going, switch that off, switch that off, right, they're going crazy, and I was there going, no, that's what they like, I'm gonna do it. And it was like Footloose. It was unbelievable, it was just like Footloose. Then I came in with Raging Against the Machine, Killing in the Name of, the place you went were, wild. Yeah. And they were trying to get me off the decks, it was like Bill, it was like Bill Grundy interviewing the sex and then when, when the, the head of the had you killed, <laughs> exactly. right, there was some sort of mafia thing, it was all hushed up, that the scouts went there one night with all candles and they said by your grave and that, and that was the end of the film. <laughs> it <laughs> was a film, I assume. <laughs> yeah, this genuinely happened. I assume this didn't really happen. Yes, you it did. I swear to God, I was playing Smells Like Teen Spirit and it went wild and they were, the organisers were going, switch that off, they're going crazy and I was going, no, it's what they want. Could I say something? It was brilliant. That to me, I've, I've known you for about um, four years, yeah. and I've heard all those things. That must be the highlight of your life. Unbelievably so, yeah. It's you've never had anything that good no. or exciting since, have you? One day I hope to sleep with a lady. I <laughs> hope that'll uh, it'll slide into second place. <laughs> Right with the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. To I know. Prepare and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would, oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he bought for himself at uh, about ten? Penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? No. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> you not been a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's The Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother in law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think he was moving in with my sister. And I was about like, um, I don't know, 13. Um, and so he was about, uh, 30. And I moved in, and uh, he brought around all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave them at our house, right? Mm. And he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, and, and, uh, um, and uh, they uh, put them upstairs. And I was looking through them, and uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay? Right. And he had um, well, loads of chemicals, <laughs> yeah. He had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry. And uh, he said, I swapped me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles, and I got all these chemicals. And then just the guilt. What sort of chemicals? Just things like, you know, um, uh, just things like from a chemistry set, just, you know, crystals and metals and magnets, all that sort of stuff that I just like to muck around with. And, um, and, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's gonna notice that. And I just, uh, one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him. But you've got to be good, and it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year, <laughs> and then, and then I was. Have I told you this? And no, no, I, no, no, you haven't. That you've just reminded me of. Something. And then I remember um, when I was about eighteen, uh, my brother was talking about it, and he said, "Did you ever um, uh, play those records I left for you?" <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't she? Oh. She, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. But you've <laughs> never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that <laughs> to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I just, oh, That's it was terrible. I, I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and I, I, when I was going through it, hmm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, Cigars uh, and dildos. And one day, right. Same thing. Uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right. Well, s yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me. She, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God. I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So, not, not big stuff. I've, I've had a few calculators and, uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Works out at 7.2 <laughs> per day. So, um... How many so, calculators do you need? So, <laughs> so, it was when that phase... You failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so, anyway, so, I told her all this and I confessed to, like, Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confessed to this magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. 
<laughs> she said, oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. Bloody <laughs> that's great. I just sent oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you- And he went, hold on, I'm going to work out the interest on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll bank it ten percent. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds forty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you, so, so, your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, I, uh, did, 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 uh, did she mention she went, that you I just, I just stuff with your, with that other- Because yeah, what I'm saying is, presumably you got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 no. She went, no worries, I'll just go and get my purse, it's on the dressing table. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Carl! <laughs> Do you want a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> what other things you used to give away at your disco then that you'd find on the dressing table? You used to go into your parents' room and go, what can I give away tonight? It was stuff like a, cigars. Yeah. I'd like cigars. Yeah. Uh, I had a pair of tights. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, On Auckland, <laughs> you know, you get them in like a long. Who did you give that to? Just whoever did the prize. It was stuff like you know, we we did like a little raffle. <laughs> just imagine Carl going this is for a pair Who's of going joyriding this week. Pretty Polly Sheer. Exactly. Who's doing a bank job this week? Exactly. That's what it was used for. Yeah. Just little bits, of, you know, unopened makeup, just stuff like that. And did right. their parents not notice? Well, no, because it's stuff that you're not that bothered about. And if a telly went missing, they'd notice it. <laughs> they would, wouldn't they? They'd be staring at a wall for three days. <laughs> but a pair of tights and a cigar and that. Yeah. Get away with it. Yeah. The Flaming Lips. Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to own up straight away. I've done very little work towards this show. This week. <laughs> a bit you busy. surprised me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I apologise if it sounds a bit sort of. Thanks for being honest, though. Well, really. no, I don't. You know, I don't want people to go. Oh, that was a bit shoddy this week. I hope it's not going to be that every week. Yeah. So it is because I've done very little preparation. <laughs> okay. So right. You know, you Whereas probably, normally you'll probably have to help me out. All right. You have to do some of the some of the work, Carl. You might have to help us out a little bit as well. I don't know. I, I mean, because I know Steve's done nothing towards it either. So. The onus is on you a little bit here. I love the fact that it's still listed as either Ricky Gervais or Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Mm. In a, you know. Essentially, we don't need to be here, really. No, it, but I know now people listen for Carl. Mm. Uh, everyone I've spoken to, but you know, people on buses, to uh, comedians like Ross Noble mentioned you the other day, and that you know, it, it, they go. Uh, people on buses. I've never been on a bus. You haven't been years. on a bus no. for like twelve years. Yeah. Have you? I know, <laughs> people I, on buses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. I just know well, the idea they, of no, you being on a bus. The idea of you well, having I'm not on a bus. Fair. They're shouting out from the window. Right. They're going, I love Carl. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm walking along. How much is it on the bus? 20 pence. <laughs> no, come on, seriously, how much is it? Uh, um, what, one, one adult for Terminus, please. <laughs> I love the fact, you know, they do that thing where, like, if they're interviewing what is it? Paul 50, Newman or someone pink? famous. No, uh, it's quid, they, it's always, a quid. they always say, how much is a, a pint of milk? And that's supposed to prove if you're sort of still in touch with your roots or whether you're too big a celebrity. Yeah. You've got no idea how much it costs on the bus. Quid. It's not a quid. 120. No, it's not 120. Pint of milk, about 50p. <laughs> 30p. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Wow. Well, because well, I mean, it's fascinating because you gave this stuff, I mean, you gave this stuff up before you became a celebrity, didn't what? you? You were, you were always... Lazy. Because people always say to me, like, oh, um, you know, Ricky seems a bit obnoxious. Who know. says that? Well, no, they say, you know, no, they, uh, no. who comes up to you and just says that? The guy on the tube did it? <laughs> I swear to God, he came up, he said, uh, he said, I was watching an interview with Ricky, he said, he's not a nice piece of work. I went, well, I mean, he said, no, I've got friends like that. You know, just, and it's like they're always talking, they're a bit irritating, you know, and you sort of let them off because they're your mates. But I was going, well, hang on a minute. He went, well, no, uh, well two things. You know, it's sort of my job talking, and mm. being interviewed, essentially, you do have to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. about yourself. If that's his only criticism, then yeah. I'm not too bad. No, he didn't think you were funny either. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> He had a, in fact, he had a whole list. <laughs> well, well I say a list, a it, petition. It wasn't Dickie Anderson, was it? <laughs> it wasn't Rich Richard Anderson. I hope he's listening. He's our biggest fan. I'll tell you what, Mock Turtles need a remix by Fatboy Slim, don't they? Mock Turtles? Yeah. It's a great tune, but I'd like to hear a remix. Yeah. Mock Turtles, can you dig it? Remixed by Slim. Yeah. Yeah, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, mm -hmm. Carl Pilkington. Ooh, stuff, oh, stuff to do, what's going on? stuff to talk about and that, as far as, uh... What's been going on? Oh, um, before you came in... Oh, you saw it, didn't you? That experiment I was doing with the... <laughs> An experiment? Yeah. Well, all I know is as I walked in the building, I passed the little kitchen area, you were hitting Carl on the head with a tin tray? Didn't it make a good noise? It was a great noise. Um, but i interested to explain more about the experiment. Cause... Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to see how hard I could hit him and make it resonate. Right, before I either caved his skull in, or, right. you know what I mean? So, you had to hold it quite loose, okay. so it could, like, vibrate, 
but you had to grip it hard enough to give it a good whack. Right. And his head's brilliant for hitting stuff on you. <laughs> is it? It is perfect. Cause Carl, it's like could we recreate that moment a bit later on the radio? You'll notice that you've been on for 15 minutes, I haven't said a word. This had a bit of an effect on me. <laughs> still, <laughs> still a little bit shaken. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. But yeah, do it again later. We were right. talking about your head a little bit earlier, weren't we? It's not gonna mean that you're sort of a bit, you know, fuzzy thinking, is it? Ah, uh, it'll be alright. Yeah. So... Can we recreate that later, maybe towards the end of the show? Just hit you on the head with various objects, see which make the best sound? He said, he said, well, he said, talking about time out, I said, but something about in time out, and he went, ah, oh, yeah, do you read that? I went, yeah, yeah, I read it, I get it every week, yeah. He went, ah, oh, there's no point though, is it? He said, because it's like a telephone directory. You know, if you want to look something up, you look it up, but you'd never sort of browse the telephone directory. And I went, that's an interesting point. He went, although I did. <laughs> when I was in Scotland, I just looked up how many Macs there were and there was 42 pages of them. <laughs> how bored are you in your hotel room in Scotland to suddenly start working out how many people start with Mac? Did you, were you sat in your room? You, there is nothing else that you can I think of I've been do. working. It's when we did the show from, you know, XFM did some stuff from Edinburgh. Yeah. You were sat in your hotel day, room. Sat in the room, waiting to sort of go out and get some food and that. Sat there. Why were you waiting to go out and get some food? Because we're all going to meet up, we're going to meet up, we're, you know, we're signing. So you, you thought, I'm not going to switch the TV on, I'm not going to read a magazine. The telly was on, nothing was on, I wasn't impressed with anything that was on, so I'm looking <laughs> around the room, I had a couple of the free shortbreads. <laughs> <laughs> He remembers. Yeah. He remembers. He remembers a specific biscuit he yeah. had. Yeah. That's fantastic. I had a couple of them, and then, um, Looked around, there was a Bible, and I thought, well, I know about that. Yeah. There's nothing in that I don't know. So, got the phone book up, and I immediately thought, there's a lot of Mac this and Mac that in Scotland. Yeah. Macintosh. Mac Daddies. Macateer. Yeah. There's loads of names. So I thought, I wonder how popular it is. Um, <laughs> I wonder just how popular it is. 42 pages of Macs. Did you count how many pages there were? Yeah. Did, you, did you just work out from the numbers on the bottom of the page, or did you literally count No, I count counted. Them? I counted. Right. And, uh, and how many do you reckon are on a page? There's a lot in there. If someone could tell you uh, approximately how many it's names like, they get on one page. How long did it take you, this whole procedure? What, what the counting? Yeah. Not, not that long. No, it's just counting two pages. pages. Yeah. So yeah. It's not yeah. that much. They're all together, and what did you luckily. do, once you digested that information, what, what did you do with that information? Did you tell people? I stored it, am I? I mean, look, how long ago was the Edinburgh Festival? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I stored it! <laughs> along with the biscuit! I love to get in his head. I was just a big warehouse, and there's l lots of partitions for weird stuff, like bo kids born with tentacles, yeah, and yeah. things like that. I, think, I imagine there's like quite an old care caretaker, <laughs> and you go in there, you say, I'm looking for it, he goes, hang on, hang on, I know where they are. I put that somewhere. I hang, on, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Is this the one when uh, they shave the cat? No, it's <laughs> yeah. not shaving the cat, this oh. is the Max. The Max, I oh, you know, Scotland, the shortbread. <laughs> well, don't, don't give me the shortbread, because that's putting me off. But, um... The, uh, the what's the name, though? Do you remember last week I was talking about the Airy Kid? And, uh... <laughs> I think that's Carl. every week, Carl. That doesn't narrow it down. Alright, well, we were talking about that Airy Kid in the woods, yeah. and, um... Did a bit more research this week. Okay. Found a good story out about a monkey. Right. Which I'll, uh, tell Ricky a little bit about it. Tell me, got... come on, tell it now. No, right. no, 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 I'm teaching you some more stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He phoned me up today, uh, yesterday it was, you know he's been researching, like, educating Ricky. He said, uh, uh, what do you want to know about? I don't know, he said, uh, you interested in space? And I went, yep, yeah, yeah. He phoned me three hours later, he went, no, nothing about space. I went, what? He said, I couldn't find anything interesting. I said, you couldn't find anything interesting about space. Yeah. It's big. It's pretty interesting, Carl. He went, it's I went, big, but there's nothing there. That's, that's <laughs> It's like the Millennium Dome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. so what I'm looking at, right? But right. no way. He said, "Is there anything else you want to know about?" I went, "All right." Uh, I went anthropology. He went, "What's that?" I went, "Study a man." I sent a man. He went, "Like what?" I went, "Like our roots from from caveman through and all that." He went. And I said, Australopithecus, uh, Neanderthal, he went, well, you know all that then? I went, no, it, he went, right. He went, do you want to know how a lung works or something? <laughs> how a lung works? 
<laughs> and I said, well, tell me how the fridge works. He went, oh, I said, it's just the gas, isn't it? I went, brilliant. I went, tell me how the microwave works. He went, I know. I went, I said, fella walking past in a laboratory with a bar of chocolate in his pocket, went past some sort of ray thing, it melted it, and he went, hold on. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. Explain to me how a microwave works. <laughs> right. So today, we're doing, uh, sort of medical-ish type things, under the banner of, um, colon then, educate me. Do it again. Cool on then, educate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's like, go on then. So, yeah. cool on. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's a little heading, you're gonna be learning three things, sort of medical-ish, yeah. uh, before three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? Yeah, do you want to, uh, Pretty much, yeah. A bit of suede. Come on then. How many O'Reilly's are there, do you think? <laughs> no, I don't know. Little task for you. <laughs> Just before all this lockdown kicked off, um, yeah, I saw him on, I think it was like the 10th of March or 11th of March or something. And then, uh, here we are, five and a half weeks on. I haven't really left the house since. But it was good. Um, he's in his 70s now, and yet he's still, uh, he still sounds as good as he did back then. And as smart. He's always, he's always been one of them blokes who's been able to, um, <clears throat> wear a suit. You know what I mean? And he don't look awkward in it, oh, which is something I've never been able to do. I just can't. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what happens to me. But I, do you know, like when you balance something on a cat, and it doesn't like it, it no. Do you know, you just put like a little bit of a shoelace on its head or something. It holds itself odd, and it just doesn't quite understand what's going on. I'm like that when I wear a suit. I just feel. I just. I just hold myself oddly. But. Uh, and it's funny actually because Suzanne's been talking to an old mate of hers who she went to um, uni with. That's what's that's what that's, that's what's been going on on it really during this lockdown. People coming out of the woodwork and getting in touch with you and that. I suppose it's a good thing, but I suppose people have more time on their hands to catch up with people when normally they're busy and all that. But the last time Suzanne saw her, I think, was at a wedding, right? 17 years ago and a memory of me at that wedding is um, I was the only bloke wearing combat pants to a wedding so I've, I've, I've never been able to wear a suit I'd rather look odd and stand out wearing something comfortable than trying to fit in and not being comfortable it's pointless Which animal is the happiest of all animals? It changes every day like because it's been raining a lot I've been seeing snails and, um, you know, are they happy? They sort of seem, just, just the way they, I don't know, they just mooch about slowly, not in a rush. I think that's, that's the key to happiness, isn't it? Not rushing about. Snails don't rush about. And they're really free. I suppose that's, that's the thing that also brings happiness, isn't it? That sense of freedom. The way they can just go up a wall, and if they get tired, they can just stop. They've got their house on the back. They can just sort of camp there for a bit. And I think that's, uh, there's something in that. They don't need loads of people around them. I've always said, like, with slugs, they're normally sort of on their own. Whereas a snail, if you find a snail, there's normally another one close by, but they're never really close. And I think that's good. That's how I like to treat my family, in a way. It's like, it's nice to know they're there, but don't keep coming. Don't keep visiting. You know, I can see you there if I need you, but you're not hassling me. And that's what snails are like. You look at a wall when it's been raining, there's always a snail going up it, and you don't have to look far, there's another one. And it's like it's just there if it needs a bit of help with something, they're there. Um, so I'd say snails, I'll go for snails today. But the weird thing is, you asked me again on the 20th of June what my favourite animal is, or what the happiest animal is, I'll have a different answer. Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking, and he suddenly stopped, and he was thinking about it, and he went, oh, I don't know what, he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True, though, isn't it? I've never seen a ghost, full stop. There are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, I mean, when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> This is a bit of a bigger issue. We're always making more and more stuff, 
right, um, in the world, you know, big buildings, big planes, mm -hmm. big boats and that. Will we ever get to a point where all this is too heavy for the world to handle? Right, what errors he made there, Steve? <laughs> what physical, scientific error has he made there with that question? I can't, I can't begin to explain it. Carl, we're not getting the rocks from other planets. It's already here. It's like having a, a it's like having um, a big pile of books in a room and then moving them over to the other side of the room and build a thing going, oh, can the room take it? I'm building a lot of things out of these books. What about, what about plastic? Where's that come from? Other chemicals that existed on the planet. Yeah. Do you, see, do, do you see the point? Hang on a minute, though. What about a little tree? You plant that as an acorn, it grows, Rick. That's bigger, that's more stuff. Yeah. Don't listen to him, Carl. He's patronising you. What about you. acorns and that, though? Right. They they take they grow from minerals and proteins already in our atmosphere or in our um, the mass of Earth. What about a cat, Carl? Right. You get it. It's a very tiny kitten, but it grows up and it's bigger. Carl, he's he's doing it on purpose. Elephants. 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 They they're very small to begin with, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger until they get heavier and heavier. Mind you, dinosaurs have gone. You know, but. You <laughs> A chimpanzee with a typewriter, with an infinite amount of time, he would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay? Or, it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already, that's, that's, sort of, that's not right. You either need to have what one What do you mean, what, what, you mean, employment laws, what do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out, please. Okay. If it's one monkey... <laughs> yeah. With a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't. It's not. Keep going. Crying. If you've got a load of monkeys, it's like it's like if you have too many. What's that saying about too many chefs? Too many spoil chimps spoil the soup. Right. Well, it's the same thing. It's like, well, I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it. I was going to put salt in it, and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying I, I, is, I, I, just just leave him go. I can't be bothered. I want to hear. I want uh, to hear it, this blows my mind. He doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just I just don't think it will happen. What I mean, do you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you by definition. But not, not Shakespeare. Oh, shut up, you, you know, idiot! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him, uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of monkeys, infinite number of typewriters, they will e type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot! Play I record, said, no. I'm not having this conversation. ...prediction for the future, Carl, is from, uh, an academic study, what, what the world will be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now, and, uh, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. There'll be so little difference between men and women, apart from the biology, economically, socially. It won't matter who the biggest breadwinner is, that's already being phased out. If you're in a traditional heterosexual male-female couple, it'll be who stays home, who earns the most or whatever. It won't be governed by, by gender. Um, and that's getting less and less anyway, as it is now. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life, you'll just need the egg or sperm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want, or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? That, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you got, you, you read a, an academic study, Rick, but yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go ugly. <laughs> Different point, though, isn't it? That's a different, different point. point there. Not listening to a word no. Ricky said. No, it's on. just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly, <coughs> ugly, ugly. Yeah. So that that just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of owing it away. Left well, right and well, no, well then that, that doesn't sort. Of, what do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, are you so saying? Many... Are you saying because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't- you seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick, I'm still confused. But what, what he- what he thinks is that if we all- if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of fancy- because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks.
Sorry, so, um, but what's this got to do with what we What's this world like? Describe, you, because describe Ricky's, a typical town or, or country It's setting. exactly right. Imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they everyone's just, still, yeah, uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. I, haven't you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that. Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on. It's ugly by today's standards, is it? So I throw forward to 75 years, you'll go, oh, everyone's what we call ugly, but what's happened to society? What do they think of everyone? They won't suddenly go in, oh, and it's annoying, we've got, we've got uglier. Because it's not no, like because a strict... because we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now... Yeah. ...at a school photo... Yeah. You look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> well, you can't tell the difference <laughs> between some all... of the girls and the blokes. No, but that's not true. Because it is, honestly. You that's look at fashion it and, you and see nutrition. Stuff. And I see that, yeah, yeah, when I see an old episode of Bullseye, I think, Jesus, the men look like right. rakes with right. no teeth and a moustache, yeah. and, they're, and they're, they're, they're bald with their hair down like a paedophile, and he goes, now how old are you? And I'm like, 52, 50, he goes, I'm 22. He's like, what? Yeah, but that's more because of the sort of people that used to go on Bullseye. I mean, yeah. you know... <laughs> Paul, exactly. Paul Newman was never going to pop on Bullseye. <laughs> no, exactly. You know, because he was actually then, a plumber from, you know, yeah. Essex. And then think of the people that he grew up with, well, where he, I mean, some of them live in holes now. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think you're, the, the class of um, Pilkey, 1982, doesn't really count. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen, <laughs> not yeah, his school not. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? Okay. Now what is Van Carl? Uh, that, this is, uh, yeah, this is where we... Oh, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> his, his eyebrows sort of went down while you were doing that, but he, really, he genuinely looked pained. It's like you're back at school, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's starting to get hard work now. No, okay, we'll just do White Van Carl then. This is, this is your opinions. You can't be wrong on this, can you? There's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. But so this is where we ask Carl his views on the uh, the big news stories of the week. Basically, we've we've sold an idea from the Sun newspaper, and um, so this isn't cruel. This program, is it? Oh. I don't think so. Picking it's on not, me. It's not, is it? Oh, it's weird because a few people have said, oh, you're picking on me. It's, it depends how you look at things, isn't sure. it? Sure. Yeah. But you do, do like it. We, I mean, we could look at it like it's a laugh. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it's not but, a problem for us. You know, we like you. You know, you're, you're our favourite. Yeah. I, I'm going to say thing in the world, but I don't mean that, you know, in a derogatory way. No, no, it's, I'm cool with that. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, your views, please, on the fact that, uh, attitudes are changing to the possible marriage of Charles and Camilla. Oh, what do you think of that? Um, the, the roars at the moment, because the recent tragedies are uh, apparently uh, high in the polls, and people are coming around to the idea of Charles and Camilla getting hitched. What's your thought? Um, whatever, really. I mean, if they're happy with it. The thing that <laughs> comes out of it most is it just goes to show, right, that there is someone for everyone. Just because, I mean, no disrespect to Camilla, I'm not a good-looking person either, but she isn't a stunner, and yet she's gone and picked up a royal. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think it's good for things like that to happen, because it cheers you up, do you know what I mean? Uh, gives you a bit of hope. Thanks, Carl. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, you know, if, if they're happy. If any, anyone's happy, it's a good story, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's had a bit of bad luck. And, uh, and now he's, he's got someone else in his life, so. I'm just, while he's doing this, I'm just doing a list of questions to ask him what he thinks of things in the world. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, just, yeah, okay. No problem. Um, okay, what do you, uh, make of, well, now listen, this is maybe a non-story, or it may be the biggest story that's about to break. Ulrika Johnson and Sven Goren Eriksson's affair. Are you familiar with this? It's over the papers today. Apparently, uh, Ulrika and Sven are going out, although there appears to be no evidence for this. Yeah, I don't even give it time of day. Do you know what I mean? Right, well done. Doesn't, doesn't affect me whatsoever, as long as he does his job well. Yep. And what's she doing at the moment? Presenting dog eat dog, I think. Right, you know. As long as she does her job well. <laughs> as long as they both do their jobs well. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. that's going on with a lot of people out in the world, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just because he's an England boss, as long as, you know, we win the win the games and that, he's yeah. doing his job. Mm, mm. If she's, you know, gets a dog winning a prize or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> you okay. It's not what yeah. it's Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... <laughs> dog winning up right. I haven't seen Dog Eat Dog. What's okay. going on? It's alright. It's... Right, no, so, go on. so that's it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. What about this then? Uh, are you, uh, disappointed by the nation that, uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St. George's Day? 23rd. 
Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's- Are, you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patron saint of England who, uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, so you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it, but there's so many of these days, with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because, you know, people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People There'll are be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in 50 years' time. It's just weird. I mean, I remember being a kid, right, going out on a Sunday and shops would be shut mm. because it was like, you know, the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, well, we can make some more money, we'll open the shops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's Is that a good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. <laughs> Because the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to. Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that shop shut, and you couldn't get aspirin and stuff. Exactly. Certain things. Yeah. Nightmare on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. And pubs didn't open for a while. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Um, um, can I ask you something? Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of like those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? It's evil. Yeah. What do you think of um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. Hey? We've learned a lesson today, haven't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Let's play a record. Yeah? What do you fancy? A bit of radio ad? Yeah. <laughs> you don't mind though if people think we're gay, for instance, when we go to the Baptist tomorrow? No, that's no. terrible. I don't want that to happen. Why? Hey? Why? Because I'm not. That'd be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like lying. If I was, I'd say I was gay. Yeah. But I'm not. We'll say you were. Just pretend. We won't get in otherwise. No. Just a little kiss and a cuddle. So I'm, I'm a bit gay. No. I'm not gay. On XFM 104.9. Wow, well, near the end of the show, isn't it? You had a yep. good time, Carl? It's been all right. I, I knew it wasn't going to be a belter today. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? What's up with it? Because what happens, the, the last two weeks have been quite good and we always tend to have two good ones and then one that's just all right. Well, let the listening public be the judge of that. Well, yeah, well, and, and the Sony committee. Yeah, we want to do a, a clip show of the best. We should do that for our last show. People should vote for their <laughs> favourite hilarious link, yeah. and then we can put it together on a tape. Right? Is there a record company that wants to release the the, the bit like I love? <laughs> Including my like favourites as Do you like gays? <laughs> ah. <laughs> and uh, this lad, he had a horse. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I s scored once. I was stung by a bee. Ah, <laughs> uh, and who can forget? That's lovely. Should you do yeah. that? Can you, you, have you kept all these on tape? Yeah. So can you do a compilation? Oh, People it's hard, phone in. It's hard work, no, this the next two weeks, phone in for your favourite clip. Uh, Carl, well, how can they get hold of you, Carl, in the week? What's, what's your, your email? What's your email? Number? What's it's your email? My, it's my name with uh, xfm.co.uk. So Carl Pilkington. Carl dot Pilkington. Carl with dot a K. Carl with a K. Yeah. Carl dot Pilkington at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Vote your favourite link of the last. It's three months, and we, we should make a little compilation and sell it. And mm. we get like Radiohead, they'd love, they'd love to be on the compilation with us, wouldn't they? Mm. <laughs> wouldn't they? Oh, well. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. Right, do you know, like, you're always giving me questions in the week, you're always saying things like, if I put you in this situation, <laughs> what would you do? Like, like what? Like, like what? Like what? bizarre things. <laughs> like like what, what, though? Say one. If you had to lick... <laughs> Barbara Cartland's face. <laughs> yeah. Would it be the right cheek or the left cheek? Or <laughs> Sorry, just Barbara want her face being there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying if she if that's what she's into, then she's I don't mind dead. popping. She's she dead. Yeah. So isn't, isn't she? she? Isn't I she? I don't think she just is. Just be, be careful because you can't libel the dead. So I want to make sure she's dead before we start saying horrendous things. But she, I don't know. I don't think she is dead. I'm almost certain no. she's not. I don't think so. No, she's not. So if, is Barbara Cartland dead? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. I'll have to get Chris in. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, right? So so anyway, he always calls up with like bizarre, um, <laughs> bizarre stuff like that. And mm. I was watching a program the other night about uh, snakes, <laughs> right? And um, it was like, don't walk th through a river that's full of snakes because good work, good advice. They, um, they if you got a kid in the car or in the house, turn yeah. your radio down if if you don't want them to hear stuff like this. But. Uh, yeah, they go for your, uh, for, for your tackle. Why? I don't know, they just do. They think it's another little snake? Maybe. With... With swollen with cheeks. Earrings. <laughs> with earrings. With <laughs> earrings, yeah. So, or, uh, or an anaconda, in, uh, <laughs> in my case. With one eye. 
So, I'm really uh, joking. So yeah, yeah, and I, I said to Ricky, what would you do, right? Well, it's very scaly. You two in the woods, you, you're having a wandy, Steve, having, you're, a... having a wander. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, you, you <laughs> walk through, you walk through the river. What, and, me? And, uh, yeah. Okay. Because you're tall, so it's like you can check out how deep it is before Ricky goes through. Right. Yeah? Which you do, you do, do, you do do that yeah. sometimes, don't you? Yeah. But a snake bites <laughs> your tackle. Yep. Yeah. And... Say penis. Yeah. It's the correct word for I it, it's know, not I offensive. It's, it doesn't sound nice. Say it, say, say yeah, it. Penis, but I don't Oh, you dirty that. little, no, you no. dirty little slut, Carl. You no, a dirty it's just, little... It's just one of those words. Yeah. Right, carry on with the, let's yeah. carry on, what's the story? I'm wandering through a, a river. Yeah, yeah. And, and the snake bites, bites your penis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and... You know, you know Ricky, like, doesn't leave, like, <laughs> WC1. <laughs> Why on earth we're going to be anywhere near a river where there's sort of well anyway get snakes? In, yeah. Anyway, yeah, you are in this situation. Yeah, right? the snake bites you, and I said to Ricky, if it was a matter of life or death, <laughs> would you suck out the poison? <laughs> 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 what do you think he said? Uh, oh, and, the, and the bit I made because he was thinking about it, and you know, like, oh god, well he's you know my best mate and everything. What will I do? And I said, and then. Steve starts sort of groaning like he's enjoying it. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to remember what I did do. What did happen in that instant? Okay. Um, uh, so, so I've been bitten, I've been bitten on the penis by a snake. Yeah, there's poison in there's it. There's no poison in it. Yeah. I've had a go at trying to suck it out myself. Yeah. Yeah, but you've never, you've never mastered that <laughs> I've never been able to master that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, just a long spine and such a short, stubby knob that he's got no chance. Yeah. yeah. So, um... What so I have to get- He's even had lip extensions. <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. And I- and would Ricky suck it out? Almost certainly not. Yeah, that's the answer. Yeah, You'd let me die a I'd, hideous, I'd just, horrible death. I'd go, is there anyone you want to tell? Do you want me to call your mum and dad? Yeah. How should I tell them you died? <laughs> is they tell them I died taking a bullet for a lady? Yeah. Yeah, I was- I was- I was beating up some- yeah. Some nasty people. Yeah. Would you at least run into the woods and try and find some kind of animal that could do it uh, for me? I'm, I'm, some of those <laughs> monkeys that like, they got, you know, they got a good technique. <laughs> right. Stop it. One more song. Yeah. Only time for song for the, uh, the what's it? Oh, we've got to share this one then, but we're, we're doing this I one. I thought there was two. Can no, we go? we've run out of time. Well, this is for, this is in the Guardian because they print oh, my favourite song is If You See Sorry. a Sailor. It's If You See a Say Hello by Bob Dylan. Okay. A song for the ladies and lovers. Mm. Right, that's it. And I uh, can't believe we weren't allowed to talk about monkeys giving blowjobs. <laughs> Since when is that taboo? It's nature, Carl! They go absolutely mental. They love it. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We, uh, get do we need them out of the way? Get, get do we need them out of the way? Yeah, just, uh, let's, get, uh, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do we need them all? <laughs> <laughs> it still amuses me. So <laughs> we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus, so yeah. we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not, right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Sea snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails, I know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Uh, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Do you know what I mean? Because cause I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a, a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. They glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently, a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones. Mm. But that, that's a problem they're causing. All right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. No. Bet you glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. Who doesn't? And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years, or can do. 
Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not. But I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea. They uh, yeah, graze on algae and they provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish. You know, or any animal. Why do they? Why do they exist? Would Would you be know. upset if you know someone said we're getting rid of them? Oh yeah, yeah. You would they're, be. They're an animal. You know, I wouldn't. Forget being like favouritism and all that I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around you can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job, don't be worrying about that. Because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. But do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine... Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, their descendants were around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I, 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 was, I think that sounds a bit... But I don't think they sleep for 13 years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got to... Just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't. So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Carl, Carl. <laughs> Carl, I'm proud of you. That he was... was getting really quite annoyed. I know. What, did he, what does he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, just don't tell the him. thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak to, to someone who <laughs> knows. I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be <laughs> safe, because he could look after jellyfish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I, getting livid, you could oh, tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So you've yeah. been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> what well, have they done? that was great, Carl. Play records. <laughs> well done. Oh, Better for any man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's it's brilliant. I love that. Any man, Red Vines. XFM on four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, you mentioned earlier when we had our um, regular email from uh, Dicky Anderson. Yeah. Randers, as I call him. Dandy <laughs> Sam. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you mentioned that because we didn't get anything from him last week. We didn't no. get uh, anything from him last week. Anyway, uh, he's obviously listening, um, <laughs> uh, Rich, because he's emailed in to explain uh, his absence. Dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in last week. Only I was in uh, HMV returning the fourteen copies of The Office I got for Christmas. <laughs> that's uh, that's from Randers. So um, <laughs> he's explained himself. Oh he's dear. He's excused himself. Oh Anders, we should get him on one day. Yeah. Right. Okay, Carl. That's ridiculous. Three amazing scientific facts, one of which is spurious. Okay? Yeah. Okay, one. Um, girls can't throw because the part of their brain that allow men to throw properly in a girl is used up in emotion. Two. Gravity isn't instantaneous. It works at the speed of light. The force of gravity. Three. Statistically, you're more likely to be trampled by a donkey than dying in a plane crash. No, uh, even though the last one sounds daft, I think I, I've read that about the donkey thing. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, girls. What's the, what's the first one? The, the Girl, girls can't throw properly because the part of the brain <coughs> that allows men to throw is used up in emotion in a woman. Yeah. Gravity is, isn't instantaneous; it, it works at the speed of light. So when you drop something, it, the force kicks in at the speed of light. What do you reckon, Steve? Well, it's well, not for me to say. This is a trick one where none of them are ridiculous. Oh, no, one, one of them's one, one, of them of, one of those three. One of those three is not true. Right, well, it's definitely not the donkey, right? So, uh, I reckon the, uh, the girl one throwing stuff. Is ridiculous. Yeah. 
Correct. Well done. Well Very done. Very well done indeed. Yeah. Very well done indeed. That's two out of two he's got so far. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, yeah. Well, I'll teach you some stuff now. Right. <laughs> I've also just I've always been fascinated by the uh, the donkey fact because it is an extraordinary fact that more people are killed apparently by donkeys. Yeah. Than they are by airplane crashes. Well, I suppose in countries where they're used and yeah. you know used a lot that you know they um they go a bit mad and squash but, it. But my concern is that <coughs> there's when you go on a plane, there's so many checks. I mean, it takes on forty minutes to go through all the checks, the air pressure, the cabin pressure, the fuel, yeah. checking the you know flights, the takeoff, all the rest of it. Our checks for donkeys. Nothing. Did someone close the gate? I think so. Exactly. That's, yeah. it. that's our. That's is our he annoyed? Check. Is he annoyed or not? <laughs> yeah. You're not working him too hard, are you? Yeah. Yeah. He's got his hand. Is there two? Is there two holes for the ears? <laughs> yes. Well, I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's accident. I think they're picking us off. I think they're yeah. so annoyed that a nickname for them is ass. Yeah. And they've got to wear the little hat. You know, they, they get they've got to ride kids. You know, give kids rides on the beach and that. I think they're just sort of annoyed. Yeah. Maybe they're sort of just picking us off one by one. Yeah. Teaching us a lesson. Not, if we had the same stringent checks <laughs> exactly. on donkeys as we do on international flights, maybe exactly. there'd be a little less <laughs> there. Exactly. Wise words. <laughs> Cheers. Wise, <laughs> if slightly incoherent <laughs> words. <laughs> Go so, on, Carl. Got that right. Um, so, um, <laughs> acid. I would sort you out with some science. Brilliant. I forgot the puns in mind, didn't I? I forgot the puns. Yeah. Go on. Right, so, um, yeah, you asked to sort of be taught some science and that last week after being taught about war. So, yeah. uh, did some research. <laughs> and, um, there's a few things. I think we'll just cover, cover one of them now. Go on. Um, we've talked a lot about airy kids. <laughs> We have I love the fact that Simon Sharma has never started a program <laughs> no. like that. Uh, the, the Jacobites. We've talked a lot about hairy kids. <laughs> Go on. See, it's a little bit. I mean, it's not your traditional science stuff, but sure. it's still well, interesting, little. and it's a little bit. You know, it's yeah, we talk about hairy kids. We have, we have disproportionately, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think this show has talked about hairy kids more than any other radio yeah. show. Well, it's it's one that. So I noticed both of you there dropped the H or the H or however it's called. I had to. So it, airy, airy kids, yeah. hairy, yeah. hairy children, not yeah. Um, yeah. sort of airy, kind of light-headed or. Yeah. Well, there was there was the case of the uh, <laughs> the one who lived in China. Yeah. And uh, which was weird for two reasons, wasn't it? Yeah. So well, go on. Uh, one was like he was covered in air. That's all really weird. And yeah. the doctor sort of checked him over and said, "Well, yeah, he is airy, but he's quite healthy apart from he had a little bit of eczema <laughs> and a boil." <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that was the main bit of the story, wasn't it? Yeah. But this one, right, we have sort of talked about it, and, uh, you weren't having any of it at the time. What? This, this next bit of science I'm telling you about. Go on then. Right? Um, remember when I told you about a lad, he was living at home with his mum and dad, right, everything's, you know, normal life, going to school, that sort of thing. Yeah. Then, I think his mum and dad had an argument, and it kicked off a bit and he thought, I'm sick of this. It's happening all the time now, they kept having arguments, so the kid, Ran off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. God. Now he he left. He went and ran in the woods, and he ended up living with some monkeys. Right. Right. And he thought this isn't a bad life. You know, there's no arguments going on. Sure. He was getting on with them. Um, <laughs> and the weird <laughs> he loved thing bananas. is, this <laughs> this is where the science bit comes in. Oh, sure. He grew a load of air on his body. That's not true. It's not true. It is true. It's an acquired characteristic. It's, it, 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 <laughs> I bet someone will back me up on this. But no, no, you can't, you you can't grow hair like that. You might get a little bit uh, more downy, or they might uh, the erectile tissue might, uh, you know, they won't fall out as much that would, you know. But you don't actually grow a big mane if well, you're cold and you're a human. Well, he did. He did. This lad did. I know it sounds a bit strange in that, but he he was living with the monkeys, um, <laughs> and because it was cold, his body reacted. Listen, to it. listen. He was no hairier than he would have been if he was walking around naked on a cold day, with or without living with monkeys. The it, fact that he was living with monkeys makes no difference. No, I know, but I'm trying to get, you know, picture it in your head what it's like. Although Mickey Dillon's was always pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, he was living with them, and, um, he went into town or something one day. Oh, yeah. To get some food, <laughs> and the people there were like, hang on a minute, that isn't a monkey. Mm. Um, what, he went, he went in naked? <laughs> no, he was there covered in hair. Yeah. yeah, but naked, but covered in hair, so it was decent, it was, it was... Yeah, 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 but they, they, that was a weird thing, they thought it was a monkey in the shop. And <laughs> so he presumably he had a big long beard as well, cause he couldn't shave, could he? No, no, he was just covered, he looked like a monkey. And they were happy to serve the monkey, <laughs> were they? There's a monkey, he's How buying did he a walk? newspaper and How some did he milk. Walk? How did he walk, Carl? Did he walk upright or, 
whistling along. The, just pe the picture that I saw on the internet, he was on all fours, but I don't know if that's when he was running he was. away after he did, did sort of, you know, realised he was a kid. But this was a picture. So he was a kid as well? He wasn't even like an adult with a beard? No, he was a kid. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. And the, the beard kicked in a little bit. To early. listen, so the Go people on. caught him. You're an idiot. The people caught him. Yeah. Shaved him. Right. Got it all off. Didn't grow back again. Right. It just. It You're grew. an idiot. Well, like I say, people will have heard this story or read about it. You're an idiot. And they'll email in. They don't let me down. And they'll agree that you're an and idiot. The, no, no, they'll they'll have seen the story. You're an idiot. So that's a little bit of science. <laughs> you're an idiot. I like the monkeys uh, peeling potatoes. Right. <laughs> That's never happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head they were working in a canteen making chips. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what the food is. I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare. I that love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the, what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're quite well off now, aren't you? You're, you know, you've got well, your nice big house and everything. I'm, is that, I'm all has right. that made you happier since the new world? Yeah, you it was alive? the thing that I always wanted. That was the main thing—a house. I'm not bothered about. I've told you, you know, clothes aren't yeah. anything. I don't wear jewellery because it irritates me. Um, holidays, I, you know, the last thing I want to do when I'm not working is get on a plane because I've been flying about. <laughs> so really, it's, it's always just been the house has been the main thing that I've always wanted. My space. Hmm. Um, and I'm happy with it, and I like doing work in it, and I'm happy to have people round, but I'm happy to get them out as well. You know, I, I, I'm a, you know, I'm really house proud. Yeah. If you come round, if I ever said come round, I say, oh, can you take your shoes off? Yeah, are you one of those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Straight away. Shoes off. No matter who it is. Really? Yeah, the gas man, he, he hates it. I bet. He's like, oh, do you know how many houses I go to? And it's like, well, if that's the case, you should have those um, coverers. Mm, yeah. You know, I'd, I'd, I'm not inviting What's you. What's so in. special about your flooring that the shoes will? Because it's clean, isn't it? I've cleaned it. I've got a, I've got a steaming mop. I've got one of those Vax mops. Um, I, I keep it clean. Like I say, I'm house proud. And the point is, I didn't ask for the gas meter to be in the house. I didn't ask for him to come round. I'm always sending me on readings. <laughs> They're always sending an email saying to give us a reading. So why is he coming round anyway? So if you're going to come round and hassle me when I didn't ask you to come round, they don't make an appointment. They just come round and go, I'm here to read your meter. We'll bring some shoe coverers. Uh, I know that your attention span on the videos, people... See, there's so much on YouTube, you've probably gone already. I'm like that, I start watching something and you can see a little other video to the right of the video you're watching, you think, that looks good. I was doing it the other day, watching videos of octopuses. I was watching an octopus get out of a jar, right? Somebody shoved an octopus in a jar and it was able to sort of unscrew the lid itself and get out. And I think it got about three legs out and I was already bored. When you think how amazing that is, that an octopus can get out of a jar, and I didn't even watch it all. I could see another video that said octopuses change colour depending on what they sat on. Do you know, like a chameleon. Bang, I was on that. So you're probably already gone. Amazon always say, oh, it'd be great if you do us a video. We'll put it on the front page and everything, loads of people will see it. They never do. That's why I sort of resent sitting here having to talk to you because they say, oh, we we'll definitely will, this time we'll do it. I've done about five or six of these videos and they never put them on their own page. You stick it on the page where the DVD is, but by that point you've already got to the page where the DVD is, so it's pointless flogging it to you. You're, you're already close to buying it. If anything, this could just put you off. So what is the point? It sort of n niggles me. The problem is Amazon, they flog too much stuff. It's the biggest shop in the world, isn't it? And what I want is the shop window, but they never ever put me, you know, I never get in the shop window of Amazon. They're basically shoving me like right at the back near the fire exit. That's where they flog my stuff. You might come across it by accident, but it's never there. It's like they're never proud of it. The amount of work I put in, they're traveling about, they're not eating properly, they're not sleeping properly, getting ill. It's a lot of time and effort I put into this, but they never put me at the front page. They've got like, they, they 
I don't know, they, they, they sort of show off all the stuff like The Wire or, I don't know, Game of Thrones or whatever it is. It's all that stuff, that's what will be on the home page. If you want something, you can normally get it on Amazon. Um, apart from Long Got Summer with um, Don Johnson on DVD, my mum wanted it. For some reason, they, they don't stock it. Uh, I don't know why that is. But anything else, they've got... Um, Anything you can think of, they're probably flogging it on Amazon. In fact, this is how I should do it. I should talk about how good Amazon is, and then I might get on the homepage thinking about it. So Amazon is probably the best online shop where you can buy stuff from uh, turtle wax, car polish, to um, ceramic ducks. In fact, bigger than that, that isn't even that... You can get that in home base, both of them things. But imagine something at that end of a scale and the other end, they cover it all. Apart from that Don Johnson film, that Long Got Summer film, I just can't, I don't know why they don't stock that. But uh, if you want anything, Amazon is brilliant, so uh, hang on, let me, so they can't edit this out. So for all the hottest titles in DVDs, The Wire, The Sopranos box set and The Moaning of Life, that's, that's out now on DVD. Um, click on it, buy it. Buy it for yourself, buy it for someone else. We've got better looking now, haven't we? I wonder if he's confused it with the, uh, the paradigms of, of beauty have changed, haven't they? So in the 50s, Marilyn Monroe was, was considered, you know, a very desirable, whereas that body shape on women, yeah, more recently, has, said, become, has become less, you know, there's yeah. lots of skinny women are seen as a paradigm of beauty. But, so that has maybe changed. But we will change. Yeah, we'll change in little things. Years. I mentioned before about uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that, that will go in evolution. Think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little finger. <laughs> I've been watching my little finger. But again, it's what you mean. That 75 years is nothing. The only thing that changes uh, in 75 years is trend, fashion, economics. The gene pool doesn't change unless there's been some sort of really weird mutation due to an external force. That I, I, I don't know. For things of science fiction where we all accidentally drank plutonium and got three eyes and one leg. It doesn't happen that fast. I told you before, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... Um, you know, it's the little finger will be, let me tell you, millions of years. Um. I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking, you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not, imagine that. to say, not, not French fries. But hang on though, well, yeah. at what point are we us then? Yeah, this is good. Go on, go on, go on. No, because if I if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge, yeah. and the stuff them them kids on that now. I just think, where have they stored that? Where's that gone in their head? Mm. How have they left that somewhere and it's just sat there waiting to be used? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. Again, okay, that's application and, and, and training and all that. I don't but, think, I think but that... But basically, hmm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those honest people. to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. Your, your brain capacity is it, It's it, not it's the huge. same as theirs. It's not the same. Well, you might not be what's considered as academically intelligent as them, but again, uh, an awful lot of it is, you know, nurture more than nature. Um, your brain's good. Your brain is up there. Don't worry about that. Well, it isn't. But listen, so what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yep. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> Well, I'm not, but because what do you what's think the your point? Head is, though? Because I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. 
It's like saying... No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When somebody's having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, all right, Carl, how are you? And, um, you're not there. You're asleep and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find that they're... No, that, only Do you want to see naked ladies? No. <laughs> no, only for questions, though, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is, because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say, forget it, leave it connected to Google. <laughs> so, no, no. so then, I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Mm. Right. That can access the internet. Yeah. Right. Mm. So why why bother using? But you're the still knowledge? the go between. You're you, Carl, are the go between between the internet and whatever your but mouth says. But you can't says. beat the internet. Yes, but Carl, you're, he knows you're, everything. No, you're accessing the information like it was part of your brain capacity, but you're still processing and using that information. But, but, but hold on, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone on, one of them bright people on a University human, Challenge just put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm gonna get lazier. I don't watch the University Challenge and go, I wanna be like them, I'm gonna start reading books. I've accepted, I, I'm never gonna be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, 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 uh, I say to Suzanne, right, to every question now, I'm gonna have egg as the answer. <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day... <laughs> what an amazing game! <laughs> what an amazing because, intellectual oh, pursuit God. of that is! What a lucky lady! <laughs> what, does Suzanne, what does Suzanne say to that? Well, she just sees if it works, she just plays along, and then I'm saying, oh, it might be this one or whatever. I but remember, I love that, because I remember once, it was about, um, five years ago, uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different pile of games, um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals. And you have to go, uh, first one is A, then B. So, you say, aardvark. Next one goes, beaver. Next one goes, cat. It came to Carl, he panicked, and he went, egg. <laughs> 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 and he was on egg. <laughs> So, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well-known jeweler of Fabergé is well-known for his jewel-encrusted war <laughs> egg. Yeah, uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Story. It's oh. kind of, if you keep saying the same thing, eventually, it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts up his head, right, looks like hay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But, um, also, he told me, uh, w when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he said he's given up ever trying to get an answer, so now he tries to guess who's gonna answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Another great game! <laughs> Suzanne's roped it on! Unbelievable! <laughs> <laughs> how, how'd you do with that? That's not- I'm normally alright on that. <laughs> There's gotta be something else. There's, there's another, there's another, there's another, there's another evolution thing though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that, you, you can't argue with that. Because the evidence well, is there. Can. Most people on University Challenge, which is a quiz show if people don't have that in the country, the, the, it's the brainiest quiz of all time, and it. To be honest, I don't know why they don't go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something. Because they'll get a better prize than a, what do they win on University Challenge? Because they'll be stitched up by a question of, uh, who's in Ollie Oaks? It will be the, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I, the snobbery I, be, as well. It'll be what character does Andy Lincoln play in this life? And they won't get it and you'll go, egg, and you'll be <laughs> correct. <laughs> but, but that's, uh, that's the thing, isn't it? This snobbery on, like, braininess. The way that <laughs> if you're if you're a specialist mm. in uh, I don't know what something, something well no don't help him go on finish just you've started a conversation you're halfway through a sentence you've got a point you to can't make. bail out now okay say if you're a specialist in uh, go on Latin tattoos. <laughs> Latin tattoos! I don't know what that is. What Latin tattoos? I didn't know you wanted something so specific. So that's a tattoo you have on your arm with cogito or so underneath, or is it is it a Just tattoo? Any sort of, well, it's the only reason Latin's still alive, isn't it? Right, right. Tattooists. Is so it? you go on, you go on Mastermind. Yeah. And people will go, oh, he's clever, isn't he? Mm. You got uh, you got forty correct in sixty seconds. Yeah. Now if you go on and say <laughs> any questions. <laughs> about Coronation Street between 1990 and 1992, people go, oh, he's a bit of a knob. Because yes. there's a snobbery to yeah. education. Yes. 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 There is. But a question is still a question, isn't it? Well, it, to a certain degree, although, yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, but there's but, no application to knowing 
who played Ina Sharples, whereas presumably there is something useful in... Um, well, not perhaps Latin tattoos, because no, no, none tattoos. of us understand no, exactly what no. that is. But uh, if, you're a, if you're a knowledge, you have knowledge of, you know, uh, astrophysics, obviously that's going to be, you know, as Ricky says, it's going to take more application to become an expert on that than watching Coronation Street twice a week. But it's still information that you've had to learn. You've not learned it, have you? You've just no. sat down in front of the telly and it's just piped into your brain very directly and very easily and enjoyably. Let's say the people working on that microchip that one day you'll have in your brain, mm. are they not doing something more interesting and valuable for society than, uh, than the Coronation Street fella? Um, no, because Coronation Street is, he, that fella who knows a lot about it, he's, at least he's enjoying his, his time watching that. Oh, well, I'm not saying he's not enjoying it. So he's enjoying it. But, you know, a brain in a jar can be enjoying it, it if it doesn't know it's a brain in a jar. Right. So what are you, what are you asking me? But we were talking... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't seem a difficult point for what we were saying. We what were I saying, mean is... Okay, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain... Mm. ...isn't part of filling your head with stuff, the journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Whereas if I just, if I'm, say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, it cries a bit, they go, right, we've got, w what do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I, I want it to be uh, a plumber. You go, right, <laughs> when it's two, we're going to stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> Well, we still need plumbing. Yeah, I know we do, but the, it's yeah. odd that they would have chosen for their cost such, <laughs> yeah, such kind of small it's what, it's, it's what ambitions his, for their It's what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> they want they want the baby to carry on the business. Of the they, want, they want the baby to be able to plumb. It goes on now where <laughs> where parents force the kids into riding horses, and you mm. see the kid without the parents about, and you go, "Do you like horses?" And they go, no, "Not really." Being forced to get on a horse, yeah. can't stand them. And people would go, that's wrong. The mm. kid should have the freedom to decide if he wants to get on a horse or not. That's right, yeah. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but up. you've made the scenario <laughs> They're not putting chips in baby's heads. I thought you said they were. No, what, well, when did I say that? that? No, no, no. said that. I, I think Steve's one, I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and, and, and an interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun, you know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop. It's, it's in there, it's an interface. I know, but it makes us but, lazy. But but you you straight away thought that now that that, that it went to some sort of weird um, uh, laboratory where it's all white and there's just a, a doctor uh, and he's everyone's in a silver suit right and they go we're removing your you the self we're removing the self and putting in chip <laughs> you are now computer boy <laughs> yeah but it's I not watch Coronation Street well you won't in a few seconds but. I hate Coronation Street, me. Carl, it's not a question of it's not that it's not that Google is now Carl. It kind of <laughs> looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm added. Travis, level come through on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, etc. Got some uh, great tunes actually lined up. Excellent. I've brought in uh, some Amy Man, some. Uh, uh, Neil Young. I'm playing my favourite Clash track. What, are you, what have you got for us, Steve? I got a dynamite uh, hip hop tune by yeah. The Roots, which I think you'll enjoy. Love it, love uh, I've got it, a little uh, bit of uh, Johnny Mitchell. Maybe swing that on later. Oh, excellent! Um, I knew you brought in some Johnny Mitchell. Was, uh, good job I didn't. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have made any difference. No, we, 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 we could have played, probably played yeah. yours, and then yeah. I'd have been Fine. told to. Go away. Uh, Carl, what have you got lined up for us as the producer? <laughs> right, well, uh, uh, Rockbusters. Been, been off this week again. Has he? Yeah. Another he's week off? Another week off, yeah. 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 No, I didn't have a full week off. I had three days off yeah. because I was working all over Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, still didn't stop working, preparing stuff. <laughs> You've got a nice load of prizes there that yeah, I've sorted out. I had to come in especially to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Rockbusters. Did you rifle like through the drawers up at Capital Gold instead of Daily? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rockbusters was still doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're picking it up. Yeah. He's picking it up. <laughs> yeah. Still doing that. We've got that. Uh, last week, um, we sort of changed educating Ricky a bit. Um, just a little don't bit. Don't say we. I don't want to be incriminated in it. Well, yeah. well, I changed it in a sense that rather than giving you too much information about different things, it's hard to sort of keep it all in. Yeah. I'm giving you 
sort of information on one thing. So yeah. Last, last no, because some of your stuff was a little bit too intensely done. And that, the, my favourite story was there was a blind girl. She hit her head and got better, and I couldn't take all that in at once. <laughs> so you should really ration well, some we, of the we education. Sort of, we sort of was that the last news? week um, war-related uh, stories? Yeah, it was. Uh, war. Do you think of that then? What and it was the sure. three things. And it was the French um, battle. Uh, going over the top was John's got a moustache, <laughs> which you think was ambiguous because someone might have said that anyway. Well, look, you've remembered it, so it's working. So yeah. we'll be doing that. And, and last week, loads you of said French people have just gone to war. Who were oh. listening to this? Yeah, you uh, you said you wanted to learn some science this week. Did so, I? Yeah. <laughs> so so the title this week for that is, I said I would sort you some science out. <laughs> How long did that take you to call? Listen, <laughs> but you know, um, look, people people love Carl. There's comedians coming to me and go, Carl's the funniest man. They, they absolutely yeah. love him, right? But I think we're only seeing half of it, right? Mm. Uh, if we can get him on television, his face then, when he's told me that title, was like a child at Christmas. Yeah. It was, it was. He was so proud of it, he was excited what I was gonna- it was brilliant. It's a bit like when a child's drawn a picture in art class, you you know you've got to stick it on the fridge, you got but to, you basically yeah. think it's crap. Yeah, yeah. It's very much like that. Alright, right, Carl? Carl? Is that good? Yes. So, we'll be doing that. Do we need them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Have you got another one? Yeah, I've got another one. Looking at, uh, snails. Oh, yeah. Do we need snails? Do we need because snails? I know you're not a fan of snails, are you? Well, after a bit of research, I found some good stuff out about, um, like, they sleep for 13 years, some of them. Yeah. And that. So we'll be looking <laughs> into that you later. you that one? <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. We've got Ritual. <laughs> ritual. Yeah. yeah. Which is something that I told you about. Yeah, well, last week's was brilliant. What it's was good it? to have a flathead in India. <laughs> it's good to have a flathead in India. That's I've got brilliant. All that. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just play one of my favourite Smith tracks. Can I just uh, make a request? So I'd quite like if, you know, if we've got time to bring back, um, just for one week only, White Van Carl. Sure. Because there's some quite interesting topics this week. Oh, is there things happening in the world? There's Carl's happening. Thing there is. <laughs> no. There is a light that never goes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, isn't it's it? It's amazing. What are they called, those things? I just, I was just there, just there, I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, I'll just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sign that is. I don't know. <laughs> it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. sees someone <laughs> undressing. <laughs> Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> that is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. Yeah, yeah, we need- I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. When the found I think he said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, <laughs> what do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig. I said, if they need a wig, what? Dogs going bald. <laughs> and he went, like, this is fine to him. He went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke put in a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, but the and, the babe, and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child, didn't, you didn't like, did you? I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it, thought, yeah, it's a bit daft, that. Are you sure he's not the, the ageing pop group? No. The animals. But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> Cos my mum, um, we had a cat- we used to get through loads of cats cos we lived there. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's starting early today, isn't it? What do you mean it's got through a lot of cats? Cats? Just cause, cause What we are you doing? No, Running a restaurant? We lived on- <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, what do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. Right? So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. Dad kept there saying, is. You know, stop wasting money. You know, it's, it's not. Stop good. wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats. Right. So um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time, mm. 
And, uh, <laughs> it's just bag of noodles, probably. <laughs> yeah, malingera. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified. I'm going to witch house. Wrong. Oh, God, bloody hell. Wrong. Don't, so. don't let me go to the talking to this. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 for some reason, it kept being sick all the time. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. That's definitely nice. So, my mum thought, kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she shaved it. <laughs> whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick and it was a pain to wash because it kept getting So cold. she wanted a dry wipe cat. So, <laughs> why didn't you just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird, it's weird. So, so, now, so now he's cold and sick? No, but you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I love that shaving cause it's sick on itself! Yeah. And, that uh, is it's, it was the weirdest looking thing, I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. But as soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can't hey! touch it. And then- So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love- I-, I Carl! It must have, I mean, uh, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. They're just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the, <laughs> yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did, it. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, uh, whilst, whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God. Oh, wow. oh. Yeah. and were you upset each time or you just got used to it? It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. Yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, 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 the first? Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, <laughs> then you get used to how people look and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna you have to play a record. No, but- Cause I just- <laughs> <laughs> No, but I've got used to it. Let you down. Gold Rush on XFM 104.9 with Gervais. Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Brilliant. Rick, so I was in uh, uh, I don't know whether I should tell you this because it might rock you to the very core. Go on. But I was in an Indian restaurant the other night, and uh, I don't, you've not seen the film. Have you seen the film Notting Hill? I haven't, no. Right, in the film Notting Hill, have you seen that car? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Do you remember the bit, uh, Julia Roberts plays uh, a movie star, rather like She's the most famous yeah. movie, yeah, I know And she's that. in a restaurant having dinner with uh, uh, Hugh Grant, and she overhears some people in the restaurant slagging her off, and saying, oh, you yeah. know, she's a slapper, probably, all actors are, all actresses are. And uh, she's sort of stewing on it, and uh, Hugh Grant wants to say something, and she says, "No, I won't. I won't let you." And and then as she's walking out, she goes and says something to them, and of course their faces drop. They can't believe it's her. And anyway, I was in uh, in an uh, Indian restaurant the other night, and they were slagging you off, Rick. Um. Well, they were what they were saying is they were going, "Oh, Ricky Jones. The thing about Ricky Jones is he's just like the character he plays. Right. He's just like they prevent in real life." And I was listening in, and I was thinking, "Well, I want to say something. I want to go over and have a word and say, you know, you're you're partially right, <laughs> but uh, but I couldn't." I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. I, I couldn't. What can I do? I couldn't really go over there and get into a rumble. I want to say, what do you mean that I'm yeah. like him? I, I use his face and his vocal cords, mm. but I mean, I, I can't help that. But it's, it's that thing as well of I don't know where they've got this information from. But, no, 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 no. Because no, you're no, not. It's, it's, it's so received. It's, so it's, 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 yeah, they've received it from somewhere or they've they've read it or some of these. It's just. I, I, but I don't know. I mean, I can't really be annoyed that they're just wrong. But it it's, was very it's, weird. It's like, it... it's like being annoyed at a vicar believing in God. I can't get annoyed with him. Mm. I just don't believe. But because obviously they didn't recognise me, it's rather like you know when they talk about that idea that if you could go to your funeral, what would people yeah. be saying about you? It's yeah. the closest that you could get to that. Really? You, you you can hear what people are saying about your friends. But why don't you um to get around to that? Go, you go. He is. Yeah. What do you think of the other fella? That's sometimes with him. <laughs> yeah. That tall fella. He's good, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, it's a shame actually because um. On the occasions I do get recognised from minor appearances, um, I never get any cool fans. I just get the nerds. I get the real nerdlingers. I don't get, you know, <laughs> beautiful women coming you're out. You're putting them off though, you're putting them off. You've got to take what you can. Well... So, but you'll have nothing. No, I know, but this girl came out the other day and she said to hey, are you that guy who's involved with the office? I went, oh yes I am. She went, my boyfriend loves you, he's over here. And she pointed him out. I was uh -huh. devastated, I thought I'm in here. Yeah. There is nothing, there is nothing going on. Miles 
milestones in human evolution, the opposable thumb, the, the forward-facing eyes, the upright. These, these, are, these are massive things in, in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean, before we got here, there was people who, uh, whose eyes were looking in their head? <laughs> I don't understand. Is that what well, you mean? No, no, because when we got sort of uh, uh, binocular vision. That is, is that the answer? Yeah, just cavemen in front of dinosaurs and that. They sort of went, oh. <laughs> and then. Well, it wasn't cavemen in front of dinosaurs, was it? Because cavemen weren't alive when dinosaurs were alive. There was a couple knocking about. Right, okay, fair enough. There was, there was a crossover point, surely. Uh. uh not for just like your 15 million. Um, was the, uh, yeah, probably the, uh, yeah, the Ice Age, there were still, there were still big reptiles. I think it's fairly common knowledge that the dinosaurs did not exist. Well, who gave the dinosaurs a name? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Carl, now tell me, tell me back now, what are the Amish? Um, they're just, just people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times. So to them, they're sort of in about 1842 or something, so they're getting old. Papers and that. Um, they no, haven't caught up no, to. No, 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 no. They haven't caught. They, they, they don't have telly. They don't, they don't deny. Don't... They don't deny that the twentieth century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They, they, they look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see it in this window of Dixon's the telly. They just, they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're, they're still living. They're still going. They are still living like it's yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, but they don't. They they know. They know about everything else. They just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing. They think it, you know that society became more and more depraved, and they wanted to go away from it, and they want to go back to old values, and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets in that way of life. They can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better. Missing out on live eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but they haven't had band aid yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think this is the problem that Carl had. He, he, in his mind, they were just a bit delayed. So yeah. that in his head, they were slowly moving towards the. They wouldn't be century. able to watch most of these bands. All their electric guitar. They could. They, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah. Doing an acoustic set. Yeah. Between yeah. the bands. Yeah. yeah. That'd be all right. They'd but no, in Carl's mind, it's like if he. Although if they, they wouldn't like fast car. <laughs> they wouldn't like a scene about that, they go, I don't know what you're talking about. Pony and Trap, you got a pony and trap, <laughs> that'd be alright. But, but are they still, do they still get sort of rubbish post on that saying we need your money for this or, you no, know, get behind this charity? They live in a isolated community, they live, they're farmers, aren't they? They're farmers. It's so. an agricultural community and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, and in actual fact it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't he you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow, though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, couldn't you? It's probably out. I mean, have they got anything to do with the the Hare Krishna people? No, no, nothing at all. Because out of all all the religions, that's you know, I'm not a religious person. I, I don't I don't understand. You're it. only saying Hare Krishna because you've got the head. That's the only reason oh, you think it'd I'm be halfway there. Yeah, but, but the thing <laughs> yeah. is. Out of out of all it, you just what's what was that? <laughs> Money just fell out of my pocket where I'm I'm nearly laying down. <laughs> That's the danger of wearing sweatpants <laughs> everywhere you go. I, I don't think you're ever lying down in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm I'm you know I've never been a religious type. You know if people oh. want to do it, I let them do it and what have you. Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the I, I want one that's not going to take over your life. I don't want one where you've got to get up three times a day and you've got to go and pray and that you've got to get up early. Forget that. It's yeah. getting in the way. But if it's something like, um, I was walking to work the other day, right, crossed Oxford Street, um, mm. there's a little Harry Krishna fella there, and, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff, and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> they hand out food for some reason. <laughs> but, um, I sort of asked a few questions. <laughs> the yeah. These two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange spot, Holding a plum in the middle. He hands the other one a pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you can imagine some kind of religious painting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all exactly, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing? Because he didn't really tell me that much. He was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He wasn't well, speaking English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them. 
<laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what, what's that? Are they- you're saying they're nothing like- Well, I believe Hare Krishna is a- is a kind of, um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is, and, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously the- obviously their most- their, their kind of trademark, as it were, is that they have to say- I believe they have to say Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna in a certain rhythm, in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them walking down the street saying Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So, you see, even if you go into the Hare Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, forced to say Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna. Press out, out loud, uh, out not loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and You can put it on an iPod, no, it doesn't count, no, I think you have to actually say it. So I guess that kind of eats into your, into your social life a little bit. And then, the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating, I imagine if you're in a, in a cinema or a library. <laughs> a little bit awkward there, you know, midway through, um, or Star you Wars live whatever. next door to a bloke called Harry Krishna, <laughs> yeah. who constantly thinks you're calling him. <laughs> yeah, that, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's in this. I mean, I don't think we've quite done the the uh, Harry Krishna faith. It's full service there. But uh, so interesting to you. I mean, you you got handed a plum. You've been treated well by them. Yeah. Well, but he couldn't tell. I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up. Uh, what are the benefits? Mm. Um, you know, what can you? Do, what kind well, of I think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out. They've probably got that sort of that that zen, that 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 chiness about them where they they try and interact and quite meditative. Yeah. Yeah. They've oh, got some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their yeah their orange. What balls. are you looking for then in a faith car? You say you it, it's what are the benefits? I mean, obviously Catholicism, you get the communion wine and um, bread. So yeah, but I can afford that. Right. Um, probably. Uh, just, just, I liked the Crusaders, I was forced into joining that as a kid, because a mate sort of joined it, and, uh, he sort of said, are you joining? And I, I sort of swore at him, I said, I'm not doing that, right? Yeah. He said, right, if you don't come with me, I'll, uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore. <laughs> so I was like, oh. So, so, I went, <laughs> so I went along, and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff, and then I went on one Sunday, and it was, it was totally different. There was no Sabutio. There was no sort of, you know, uh Table tennis. Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Uh, skittles. Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> they said, right, sit down in this room. They gave me a Bible. Thought this looks too heavy, this. This is too big. I'm not interested in this book. And uh I never went again. I used to hide on a Sunday when they came round. And um <laughs> that that's that's been the only sort of <laughs> I suddenly, why did it suddenly turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't leave. Who was the it? Were they adults? It was a, yeah, sort of a, well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about 27. Like well, that, that is an adult. Yeah, but, do you know what I mean? He seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, Mum, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something. And, uh, he used to hang around to see if, I, if I'd eventually come out to play and that. And if I did, I think they would have grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want that for you. Religion has to bring with it some kind of gift. It's like you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but, like something but like. But I think religion. But I think religion does bring a gift. Usually, it's well, the, the gift of the Lord. Well, well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't mm -hmm. it? And that's the problem with it, you know. A lot of people believe in it because they think. But the, with, for Carl, I'll be all right. his, his feeling is like that should be a given. That's safe. I'm definitely going home with eternal life. But yeah. what else can I have? Is there well, an do iPod? You have to have it? a religion because I, obviously I don't have a religion. I don't miss it, and I wouldn't want one. I'm an atheist, and that, that's out of that's out of belief. That's out of logic, and we don't get into the the politics or the yeah. the morality of it. Why do you, Why do you feel you need a religion? Why don't you just get a hobby? Well, I, I didn't want one. I don't want one. I just was saying that, you know, if I was to get one, which one would I go for? <laughs> is what I'm saying. Mm. I'd like I mean? to see you perhaps as a Jew. I think it, it, Ju Judaism would suit you well, I think. What are the hours like for that? Tough. It can be tricky. That's what I mean. I don't want anything <laughs> that's, you know. And they, they have a day where they don't eat and stuff. I couldn't be doing that. <laughs> so, so they have days when they eat a lot too much? Yeah, but what happens if I'm not that hungry that day? <laughs> like I say, I don't like change. Yeah. But, uh, so what, you had to come up with some of these? I didn't know this was his challenge. Yeah. Have you come up with one? I came up with three, and they're all belters. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna- oh, is it- <laughs> Oh, well, If it's as good time. as your quote about happiness that we had to guess which was yours and which was the real ones, like faking it, I cannot wait. 
I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait. Should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it, because I just want to mention to people, um, that, uh, they should be very excited, because, uh, it's gonna be Carl's special night tomorrow. Are you excited, Carl? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, um, uh, me and Steve, because we were nominated, we get a guest. For the Battle uh, Awards. Um, and it's, uh, it doesn't say guest, it actually says, um, you know, uh, partner. So I'm taking, um, my partner. And, uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is, you will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. won't be able we'll to get it. Says, hands says, is, is this your, is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to, how it is, and either we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to, you just have to be with him when you go out there. I mean, you have to, uh, does he yeah, have to... Uh, you should, we should hold hands, but I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, it's gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like, and I'll, I'll, I'll be seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not, he's, he's like not Elton just getting, John his, and David he's not just getting his mates in for a free meal, you are actually partners. No, I'm not, I'm not for that. Why not? Well, because we know we're not actually gay. No, but, but, yeah, but so you, it's not a problem. you've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> but I'm, I'm meant to look like, you know, I mean, uh, I'm not gay, but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your fella. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe! We were trying to get in! Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty <laughs> phoning me up trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We well, have very graciously asked you if you would like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more that you've got women calling you up. Carl, <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they? Yeah. They'll be they'll be ruined. Their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better for me to take you and not you know ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When when he told them he was yeah. taking you, it was like a scene from Graceland. So there was just like there women, was weeping. They were crying. Like it was horrible. Hundreds of them, and really? he just went. And I got he, upset. He just had to say, "Look, just chill out, bitches," didn't you? I did. I just said, "You know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you." So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know, he gets. He could get you a discount Fox. No, I had a letter from the people that there's a. No, you know, listen, Carl. There's an organisation that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter. They said your partner. They've not specified the sex. They've said your partner can come along and yeah. choose an outfit. Now I suspect. By the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, you have it a may look suit, feminine, right? But I think people will be fooled. It'd just, be, it'd just be a little bit roomy in the hip and that probably be... now on the shoulders. But you're a bit skinny. Why don't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <coughs> be lovely. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, you? Uh... I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off. You're likely to be end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going out today. I've, I've never bought a suit since I was like 11. Right. <laughs> I went to my brother's wedding. That's the last time I wore a suit. Right. Really? Um, and you, won't, you can't get anywhere near it now, can you? Get, can't get into that. No. Anymore. No. Um, that was a good day. What was it? What sort of suit was it? It was, uh, like a, a, a sort of a grey silver one. Excellent. Quite flary. Nice. Um, we'll try and, and go with something similar. silver one. I just think that with your little round head, what did you, what did that look like? I looked all right. <laughs> like he'd landed from the. <laughs> yeah, just just landed on it. Like who's yeah. the most? <laughs> they walk the among man. us. I didn't, I didn't really need to wear a suit either because I didn't. I hardly went into the church. It was in the car park, right? And it's when my brother was in the army, mm. and he had a Ford Capri with one of them horns that goes. Do, 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 and do, do, you just do, do, sat there. Why didn't, why didn't he come in his tank? <laughs> I just, I just sat in that doing that all day, and the vicar was getting well annoyed with me. What when the service was on? Yeah. It was Brilliant. driving everyone well, up the do you, Were you just allowed to do what you wanted when you were growing up? Like Nelson Munts from The Simpsons, you, you just, were you just allowed, that didn't matter, there, was there any discipline? You didn't have teachers, you didn't, did, did no one just, yeah, why didn't I, someone I, come out and- I did, I got a couple of good idings off me dad a couple of times. What for? Just being mopey most of the time. If, if I had a strop on, he'd hate that. He could go out and burn some it down or nick something, but don't- mm. Wander around with your head no, down. Well. Didn't he smack you for not liking a castle once? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what's that? What's that? Yeah. Went to uh, Carnarvon the yeah. other day, and I was bored. I was at that age when I just wanted to go in an arcade, and my dad was saying, "Come and see the castle. You know, there's history here." And I still don't like castles. It's one of them things that, again, just too far back to sort of even think about people living in them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was just like, "Look, it's a wreck. You know, knock it down, flatten the thing." Sure. <laughs> And I was being really that, mopey. Isn't that great? <laughs> and it's weird, as now, like, my mum and dad have retired and gone to Wales. Yeah. And now and again, he texts me there, and every time we get to the point where he gave me a clout, he goes, you're getting flashbacks, son. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a sobering lesson for you. Yeah.
You're not on the British Heritage Committee anymore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the National Trust land tarmac it. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> car park in Britain, for Christ's sake. So, um, so look, you're looking forward to the awards, are you, tomorrow? Um... You better say yes, cos otherwise... No, uh, no, it'll be, it'll be all right. I mean, I've, I've told a couple of people and they got like, God, you're dead lucky. Yeah. You know, in a way. Oh, they're dead lucky. It's like Santa's coming, isn't it? It's the other uh, way people talk to Carl. You're a lucky boy, aren't yeah. you? Going to the BAFTAs with Steve? <laughs> it's just a, a posh raffle at the end of the day, though, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It sense. It's, you know, there's yeah. gonna be some... They give away some tights and stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's Chris Tower and goes, I found, I went into my parents' house, I found <laughs> yeah. these just lying around. Oh, but winners and losers and, um, yeah. Yeah, but what food. Well, quite, yeah, but the, what, what is exciting, surely, is the razzmatazz and the, uh, brushing shoulders with the rich and famous. Mm, I'm, I'm not into that. You're not? No. I don't think you're gonna appreciate this, like we thought It's weird, because Suzanne said to me this morning, who would, you know, who would you like to meet there? Yeah. Is there anyone who, like, you know, you can get close to and it's like, God, you know, I really admire your, you know, big fanny or whatever. And it's me and Steve, so you're here now. Well, you know. I yeah. really admire your big fanny. I didn't. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? You, were... you know, if you're a big fan of it. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> th there isn't anyone, really. Do you know what I mean? I isn't like, it? you know, you two are all right. Um, Thanks. Jonathan Ross, is he going? He might do, I don't know. Well, hang on, wait a minute. I can't help but feel we could have exploited this more. We could have maybe run a, a competition to let someone win. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're not going to appreciate it, can't Yeah. Are you going to get a trouser suit? Are you going to get a lady's trouser suit? I just think then, if you go sort of like looking macho and walking down with him, you know, they know that you're not really partners. And I just think it's a slap in the face for BAFTA. <laughs> That's true enough. No, it doesn't matter what you wear though, look at Elton Can't Jones. you mint a little bit? Can't you at least sort of walk a little bit mincy? Because you've got such a macho What's sort of man? mag walk. Elton John's fella doesn't look gay and the stuff he wears and that, does he? Do you know what I mean? It means nothing. No, but that's because Elton's doing the work for him. No, but... By dressing as, like, some kind of restoration dame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love the fact he dresses as Anne Widdicombe <laughs> for special <laughs> occasions. That's yeah. his hair done like her. Uh, that, that's great. Anyway, music. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I, I, um, this is a very underrated album. It's Richard Ashcroft's um, Alone With Everybody, and I know it got a bit of a slag and it didn't sell as well as it was because people were going, oh, it's no urban hymns, and it, and it, it, and it maybe it's not, but... Um, he got criticised for being pop, but this is a great tune on here. Um, you on my mind in my sleep, and I, 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 I think it's, it's really good. <laughs> and, uh, you on my mind in my sleep. Do you like that one, Carl? It's alright. Yeah. Good, okay. Um, oh, 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 what I did want to do is, um, uh, I want to play some, um, adverts now. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the fear. On XFM 104.9. Well, into the last hour, and only two more shows. That's true enough. And we're away for yeah. three months. Oh, 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 I'm Ricky Gervais. Obviously, yeah. Steve Merchant, little Carl. Now, Carl, what? his homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the. Uh, oh, um, on. Romeo and Juliet. Right, Romeo's asleep on the bed. Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask. All these stupid questions, and it's Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, Awful. what am I thinking? Yeah, yeah. Come on, then, Carl. Right. Um, first one. Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor. Right. He's cut his head. Blood's coming out of his head, and all his mates come running up, and they're all stood round him. Yeah. And uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> Oh, I'm wow. laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real absolutely. ones. absolutely. No, but well, these are really good. Did you make them all up? Yeah. No, I mean, did you make up all the ones that already exist? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would make a lot of sense. Right, a bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running up and like, oh. Wasn't it Was it important that his head was cut? Um... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it have been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. Well, what's your answer? No, you're meant to answer questions. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's the turn? you go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of a motorcycle stunt team or a parachute. Why, why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, uh, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting angry! What, are they parachutists? <laughs> why, can they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the still... sky. But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they... but they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as They're well. walking, are they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. Why? But why if they're Because it might be in a battle zone. They might have their zone. helmets on and he's, he's been no. shot in the head. No. Well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. 
that one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work, <laughs> what, yeah. what, what's the difference? Why, do, why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't, don't think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit. So th they could take their hats off. It's the best mate, for God's sake. <laughs> okay, he's dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? I'll go ahead and give the answer. No! Don't get ratty! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball what hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Oh! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one yeah. works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened. It was yeah, that wasn't it in the studio. Me. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Carl. What's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly. <laughs> right, next one. No, let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've uh, embarrassed Let's yourself. play some classic suede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a yeah. bit of, bit of butler at his best. Come on, crack oh, it on. Hey, you mm. butler. But there was a guy who was in HMV, and he was working with the till, he'd been working on the till, and he saw me, he said, uh, would you sign this DVD? I went, oh, no problem, me. I said, and I was trying to make conversation, I was just trying to be frothy, and I said to him, oh, selling well, is it? And he went, it is, it is. Although we've had quite a lot of returns. <laughs> I said, well, don't tell me that. I what, know that. What did he mean? That they didn't like and it? I said, I said, what? You, people have been bringing no, it back. No, I think it's he went, glitches. He, went, oh, he said, they've been bringing it back. I said, what was the problem? He said, they didn't really like it. No! Yeah, they, some of them didn't really like it. You can give it back if you don't like yeah. it. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know whether they gave him the money back, but certainly that's what he dealt with. That's what he'd encountered. And then I he mean, said, we didn't give the money back, they just wanted to drop it off. What, they didn't even <laughs> want the money back? <laughs> yeah, they just wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't. They didn't want it in the house. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want this rubbish in the <laughs> house. Oh, but we still get the money for it, do we? We still get the money, but Brilliant. you know, I talked to that Brilliant. other time. Again, because I'm, pe people don't recognise me, again, I was in a record shop, there was a stack of office videos, and this guy went by, and I sort of heard them as they went by, he went, oh, office, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people like that. I think it's shit, he's made one, I agree. Really? And, and of course, again, I was like, what could I do? I couldn't say anything. I couldn't pipe up and go, well, that's sort of... Well, I, I, I like these, the fact that you're always hearing these loud vocals. Yeah. It's, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Great. What's the chance of that? Two feet? That's brilliant. Maybe, well, that, maybe everyone's because... always slagging it off. But it's part that's of it. it. Yeah, that's part of it, but also yeah. because I keep standing, hanging out by stacks of office <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm wearing a t-shirt with a picture of you and me on. <laughs> yeah, that'd do it. What we got to play, Carl? Something Steve wants. Well, actually, um, I must uh, dedicate this to uh, someone who's emailed in. I mentioned earlier that I was going to play some of the Roots, and Joe from Peterborough is very excited about that. So, uh, this is not from the current Roots album, sadly, which I've not fully absorbed yet, and therefore don't feel I can make a decision on which track to play, but maybe that'll come That's uh, the sort of effort in the future. and thought we put into our... You know, picking music. Exactly. I had these cassettes still in my bag from last week. <laughs> sure. Anyway, this is from the album Things Fall Apart. It's The Roots featuring Erica Badu, You Got Me. Let's play it. Featuring Erica Badu, that's The Roots and You Got Me. Good. I like that one. Yeah. You've enjoyed that? Yeah. I love it, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's coming up to 1.30, and so it's time for Rockbusters. <laughs> it's a structured show. It's a new leaf. This show, in the new year, is going to be structured. Set pieces, um, hitting our marks, do you know what I mean? There'll be time checks, uh, uh, weather checks, a bit <laughs> cold out. Um, if you if you if you're driving, careful on that. <laughs> so do the prizes. Water check for traffic, like yeah, if it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well again, an arbitrary selection of uh, good. What are those politicians doing? <laughs> Was that XFM news? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, what have we got? So we've got, uh, for those that are a fan of the movie Donnie Darko, which a lot of people rave about this year, a sort of weird teenage movie, then, uh, there's a sort of, uh, sweatshirt there. It is actually quite nice. It's not bad at all. It's, uh, it's medium, so if you, if you're a bit of a bloater, mm. don't bother to apply, unless you've got a friend already. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've also got here, um, a Graham Norton video. Certificate 18. Oh, that's <laughs> so, that it, please don't phone up unless, or, d sorry, don't email in unless you're above the age of 18. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, the best of his TV show. Yeah. Look forward to that. It's um, a big stiff video, that, isn't it? It's a big <laughs> stiff <laughs> cock of a video. Thanks very oh, much. I meant you the... Can't, yeah, yeah, you meant the bird. Yeah. Um, there's also a fairly mediocre British wartime thriller, <laughs> Enigma, um, which a lot of people, it was hyped for a while, but it's actually interminable. I've seen it. <laughs> um, the, uh, first series here of The Kumars at number 42 on DVD. 
I think that's award winning, so uh, that's available as well. We've got two CDs by the look of it. We've got uh, Pulp's Greatest Hits, which I don't think sold very well, and so presumably they are giving that away. <laughs> and Johnny Cash's um, current uh, album, uh, American For The Man Comes Around, there's some good cover versions there. Again, another big sell. A big yeah. sell. We're really pushing um, this. It, it, yeah, it's quite kooky. Uh, Johnny Cash here does covers of things including Personal Jesus. Oh, right. By Depeche Mode. Right, yeah. uh, we've got Bridge Over Troubled Water, his version of that. Desperado. <laughs> And, uh, anyway, it's, it's not bad, that's probably the best treat in that bunch. And, right. Uh, I'm assuming there's some questions there, Carlo. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we uh, go. If you're a new listener, the way it works, I'll give you a cryptic clue, and some initials, wow. and it sort of makes up a band. Yeah. Um, makes more sense when you hear it, I reckon. Not particularly. Well, not really. Although so, people do get it, I just worry about the, the state of our listeners. <laughs> go on. Right, so there's three of them, you email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. It's email one. only, email I repeat, only. it is email only. We have that email- lazy <laughs> to <be answered laughs> Yeah. Okay, right. here we go then, number one. Um, there's, there's normally two easy ones and a difficult one, sure. so here we go. Uh, number one, don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Yeah, that's AA. AA. That's, yeah. So that's so the first one. He's not going to change his mind. Um. What do you mean, um? You just, just, just got them written out. Yeah, you? I'm just thinking about what the answer is, so they don't write the answer down. Oh, one. for God. Don't worry, they get it. <laughs> yeah, don't well, worry. Um. But you, yeah. well, you can't remember it. You came up with it. There's only three. No, I know it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not weird. It's incompetent. <laughs> right, the second <laughs> one. Anyway, I, I hope you get this. Um. <laughs> I hope you get <laughs> this. You might not even tell us the answer. <laughs> this is a shambles. Hang on a minute. Go on. He always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. <laughs> and you don't know, you don't know that is. It'll, I'm sure it'll come to me once I see it on email. If, uh, what I'll do you mean? It. Once they get it, you'll agree with them. I'll know if it's the one I had down as the answer. This is brilliant. Come Imagine on, Imagine Jeremy Paxman doing that. Going, yeah, University what, Times. Is that right? <laughs> Go on. Right. So uh, that's give that us, one. Give us that one again. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. But you're confused. I don't understand how you can be confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's the final one? The third one, uh, <laughs> I'll have to put that woman in the oven. And that's A, B. Alright, quickly give us them again. Right, so the first one, don't argue with him, he ain't, he ain't gonna change his mind. That's A, A. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P. And, um, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. All right. Okay. Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM dot co dot UK. I'm gonna play a classic track now by uh, Neil Young, Alabama. It's oh, beautiful people. So the answers to this week's Rockbusters. Yeah, yeah. Can you give us the clues uh, again in the answers? Yeah. Uh, the first one was um, don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. The initials there were A A. That's adamant. Adamant. Yeah. All right. That's Stop good. That's, That's good. a good one. Uh, second one. He always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. Uh, that was P. Uh, that was Pixies. Picks <laughs> Picks his. Picks his. It kind of works, yeah. <laughs> and the uh, third one. I'll oh, have to, uh, there you have that one. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to put that woman in an oven. That was A B. That was Anita Baker. Neil Young, Alabama. Uh, Carl is still confused. He's waiting. He's biting his fingers, waiting for an email to tell him the answer to the clue he made up but can't get. <laughs> I love that as an experiment. As a psych- I mean, that would confuse psychologists, that you come up with something that you can't get. It's brilliant. Yeah, you came up with the question, you don't know the answer. And you expect them to, but you can't, and you made it up. Look at your face, I can feel- play some adverts. Honestly, Juan, by, uh, Billy Corbin's new band there, um, Ex Smashing Pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit like them, but yeah. I like it. It's alright, not bad. I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I'm to know, Rick, incidentally, that someone's got the right answer. So, uh, Carl really knows the answer, yeah. Brilliant. Well <laughs> done, Carl. <laughs> You're a fool. Right. Well, white. um, talking of which, <laughs> it's a long time since we've had any white van, Carl. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, <laughs> um, yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway. Here's the first one. They're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this one? I didn't one? know that. What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium, and uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium, which was incredibly vague, 
but um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying, <laughs> uh, enough's enough. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, though, talking Genius. about talking about ghosts and that. Do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. Right. How weird do you think this is? Right. Well, it's not true. Before you say it, play a record. <laughs> no, go on, go on. <laughs> go on. Right. It's this woman. <clears throat> oh, I don't yeah. even know if it's ghost really. It's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Sure. There's this woman, yeah. and she's. Well, she's not a woman. She's a kid. Sure. <laughs> okay. Sure. She's, she's walking down like a, a street in her area. It's a nice day and everything. Everything's normal. Um. She's walking down, and a woman comes up, cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About 15 years later- Oh, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She was riding her own bike. Okay. Riding her own bike. Cycling down the road. Oh yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened like 15, 20 years ago. Right. It's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. No, yeah. Not not another child. No. Nope. So right. it's her. She's seen right. herself. Uh, what, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where does this information come from? But I mean, what, why do you ever? Con I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I, I don't, I, I, I'm honest, I'm, oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a bit weird though, isn't it? But it's not true. It didn't happen, nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's Who? wrong. She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, uh, on and as an adult when she was a kid? <laughs> did she stop and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird? There's me as an eight-year-old. <laughs> I won't stop. I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, if, and where uh, is this information? Was it did it happen to someone you know? No. Nope. You overheard it on the bus. No, it was in the uh, it's in the fourteen times. Ah, oh, right. Well, uh, okay. That's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right. Good. Um. <laughs> So Carl, if you had to go to a new planet, don't worry about starting life again. They've got sort of like these breeder clones that do all that, but you can choose six people from this world to take to start this whole new world, okay? So you need, you know, as I say, you don't need to So worry what's about happening here? Is this, is this... It's going to be wiped out, okay? It's going to be wiped out, but there's enough on this spaceship for you and five other people. Okay, and they've got them there. They've got these. They've got these sort of breeder clones there. So it's going to be populated. You're going to have the workers, the drones, everything like that. But you want to take six, I suppose, sort of um, uh, world lords to teach, to lay down the politics, the 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 teachings, the laws, the government. I'd hate okay. This. I'd hate it. Um, and how long have I got to make a decision on it? Uh, to the end of this podcast. Right, go. Who do you take? Who's the first person you take, and why? Uh, and where where are we going? We, Mars. <sighs> okay, so a, a planet where there's a, a, a an atmosphere. I've got to know where I'm going because I've got uh, to sell it to the people who I'm asking. There's no point when okay, I go. Are you coming it's, with it's, me? Where are you going? I don't know. It's <laughs> just like this world. There's there's oxygen. There's seas. There's rivers. There's forests. There's animals. Okay, but we're going to populate it with uh, the human race, and you can choose six people to lord over this new uh, kingdom. You want the best people for the job. Yeah. So. Who's the first person? Probably, um... Patrick Moore. Why? <laughs> why, why would you take Patrick Moore? Just because he, he knows knows his way about up there, don't he? He'll know the way. So, just, just have him. I think that will... Whoever I pick next, if they see that he's going, they'll go, right, you know, it's going to be a long Moore's journey as it is. You don't want someone who's going to be going, is it left here? Is it right? Or, or, do you know what I mean? And he could play the xylophone on the journey. But, but, is a, Carl, uh, is more the most useful person to have if you've only got six? Because he may be very useful getting to the planet, no, but, but once you got No, but I've always wanted to meet him as well. I've always wanted a chat, and that'd be a good chance, wouldn't it, when I'm in a rocket? How long's it taking to get to Mars? I don't know, a, a year. That's what I mean, No, it's so. not Mars, it's somewhere else, okay, so it's a year to get there and then... Yeah, well, that's what I mean, so it's a good chance to have a chat with him, uh, okay. about stuff. Um, so Matt and Moore. I think he'd be up for it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, you know... Well, why do you, why do you think that? Just because he's spent his whole life 
talking about what's going on up there, isn't it? And yet he's never been. And I feel sorry for him. You know, most people when they when they're into something, they get to go to a place, don't they? Sure. Uh, people uh, don't know Patrick Moore is. He's um, an eighty-year-old uh, <laughs> astronomer. astronomer. Yeah, that's what I mean. So let him have, well, a, have a bit of a good life. So Moore's on board. Yeah, Patrick Moore. He's he's on. Right, out five others. Four others now. Uh, Jamie Oliver. Why? <laughs> why would you take Jamie Oliver? <laughs> just food and that. You just thought you need someone because they say that like you, uh, you know, you can feel down if you don't eat. Um, he couldn't convince eight-year-olds to eat a carrot. What's he going to do in this brave new world? They're all going to be on turkey Twizzlers. I think he's he's got the right attitude. He wouldn't be faffing about. Remember, <laughs> we've we've landed now on this new world. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. The people who've Listen, made I love go. Jamie Oliver. I think he's great. Yeah. But he wouldn't be in my five people to start a new world. That's all I'm saying. Nor would Patrick Moore, because well, he knew the way. <laughs> well, what chef would you pick? I wouldn't pick a chef. Why would I pick a chef? Because you want someone who's going to, like I say, food's important. When you're low, there's nothing better. If you're a bit fed up, there's nothing better than having a good- But Carl, I don't think you've quite grasped that these people have to start civilization again. They have to yeah. be wise, wise people who can make the laws. Yeah. And Keep before you do all that, you need a good meal. So Jamie Oliver, he'll be that's his job. It's like when we get there, that's when he kicks in. Right. right He's okay. the first one really. Can I suggest gets going. Just to save two places on Patrick Moore and Jamie Oliver, take a map and a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's number three? What sort of state is this world in? Does it need Oh, this is it's gonna take a fucking gardener. Yeah. It's it's like the it's uh, It's the world but new. It's the it's that exactly. It's the world but new, untouched by humans. There's there've been no fossil fuels burnt, no machinery, no wars. Just this Garden of Eden. And you, Patrick Moore and Jamie <laughs> Oliver pitch up. <laughs> Plus, who else can't go now? First thought. Attenborough. <laughs> Again, he's a genius, and he's you know he's a, he's a bit of a hero of mine. But I don't know if we need Attenborough. Just because I reckon if it's a new world, you're saying it's the same, but they always say, don't they, that all worlds are different. So I'd want him there, just to sort of when we're roaming around, because we'll all stick together for a bit, won't we? Mm. Uh, yeah. When we're roaming around, then they'll be sick of the sight of you. Uh, they go, let's lose Carl. But you've got two men so far who've got a combined age of about 150. <laughs> I mean, if you're starting a brave new world, they're, dare I say it, not going to be around very long. Shouldn't you be taking some younger, fresher blood? No, not really, because they haven't lived, have they? These have lived and they'll, they, they can so and they're useful, like I say, Patrick Moore's done his bit, he's got us there. Uh, Oliver has cooked us a dinner. Day two, I reckon we'd end that on day one there. We'd have a dinner, we'd all have a chat. I don't think you're thinking of the future. I it's think like you're thinking trip it's your only, I think you're thinking of the journey and then the first night. <laughs> ah! Okay, okay. So, so you've got David Attenborough, yeah. you've got Patrick Moore, you've got Jamie, <laughs> you've got two other places. I get the feeling that you're not so much recruiting people for a new world as I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> As a dinner party with <laughs> yeah. people you'd like to meet that you've seen on the telly. <laughs> oh, come uh, on, in two more. I will text someone who's a bit daft. Just so. No, you don't need to, Carl. That's covered. Believe us. Yeah, no, believe no, that's what I mean. Though I don't want them having a go at me, going, "Why are you here?" I'd put point the attention somewhere else <laughs> to text someone else who sort of wind them up. So who's I'm, that then? Paul Denham or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> really is, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> so you've got, you've got Patrick Moore, you've got David Attenborough, you've got Jamie Oliver and Paul Denham. <laughs> I'm starting, new world. starting life again. <laughs> okay then, brilliant. Oh God. Right, one more. This is an amazing, this is a, it's going to be, I'd love to go back and visit this in a thousand years, what teachings they laid down. Oh God. I don't know. It'd have to be uh, a woman, I think. You've got to have a woman in that little group, haven't you? Who's... Could have another another woman chef or... 
It's mainly eating. He's got that covered with Oliver, but no, no, he's got to take Nigella in case he's in a cream cake kind of mood. Oh, God. Delia Smith was furious. She packed her bags and everything. Or a nurse. Now you're thinking. Abby Titmus. Why does romance die once you're married? And is that why you're not married? No. I don't think romance is that important. I think it's one of them things that people do because they've seen it in a film. I think that's where romance comes from. I don't think it's in the real world. You know, you, you sort of... Well, what film is it? Especially in the old-fashioned films, in the old black-and-white ones, you get, like, blokes putting the coats out in puddles so that women can walk through them without getting their feet wet. Never do that. Mental. Don't care how much you love someone, you shouldn't go wrecking your, your sort of coat just because she wants them... Why is she walking through puddles? Just go round them. I, 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 mental, that. The cost of dry cleaning and everything, there's no way that... I, I wouldn't... I, you see, if a woman expected that, I'd go, right, it's over. I suppose that's the good thing, in a way, with uh, relationships. It's finding out what they expect from you, isn't it? That's, that's what works. It's not about how much you love them and that. It's how much you respect each other. And if I was going out with a woman who expected me to stick my coat in every puddle she comes past, forget it. It's not happening. It doesn't matter how much we could sort of connect through the brain or what hobbies we've got. If she's taking the piss saying, pop your coat down there so I can walk through a puddle, I go, right, it's over. But it happens that, doesn't it? You've seen it, I've seen it in films loads of times. I mean, what are you doing? If you're going to keep doing that, buy some wellies. If you want to piss about going through puddles all the time, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not putting my coat down. So, um, that's, that's romance. Yeah, Steve, you'll wish you hadn't told that wimpy tale when you hear three, just three, random tales of near-death experiences that Carl told me. Right. Coming up. I mean, Honestly, really. At least you had stunt people and crash mats. Yeah, yeah and you got yeah. paid. Yeah. yeah, the things that he got up to just through stupidity. <laughs> well, will put you to sh what? Mm. Which what what one of what one of them wasn't through stupidity? Cakes. I'm already excited. The cake one. Yeah. Which one's that? Sorry, you had a near death experience involving Hold a cake. Hold on, I've got three. I've got the I've got the paper okay. round the the snicking slate. And the the Mr. Freeze. What's the cake one? Yeah, I suppose. Look at the cream cake. Oh, yeah. Right now you're talking in riddles. Can you have these next? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Play a record. <laughs> Cooper Temple claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Six <laughs> FM one four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they you? should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer, and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoy Start yourself. We started yeah, off, and you met my mate, Robbie, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin? That Robin, you learned? do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh... What I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get them, he never answered me, he was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. But I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin... why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, imagine because if, it's not true. imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> I also told him. That's a fable. I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus, so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said, tell you to, why though? I said to Robin, used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. Well, Steve, right? Do you remember that story about th mm, three or four years ago, where there was some bloke in the army? He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods, 
Um, <laughs> this is about in the woods. <laughs> Shouldn't he have been fighting? Whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something <laughs> on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the in the gash. Yeah. And, um, it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So, what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So, they wrapped some Where the skull is? So, they wrapped some bacon. <laughs> He did. Ah, that's all right. Thing. So Everyone... he's going by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. <laughs> we'll put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard, the skull. There was, there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every, you know, everyone likes to smell of bacon. <laughs> Including even worms. Worm. Even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they remember love Remember last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Vietnamese, there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little white maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. <laughs> oh, dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story. And um, right. just, it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G.I. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when, And so what, the, wor the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So I this is that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Cause, right. Because in a way, you know, Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do you really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do you do have things like that as a kid. <laughs> right. He's the telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. And then, no. oh, bless him. Okay. Uh, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away and he <laughs> knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it, I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play a record. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's Yeah, tunes. well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it, though my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, this is called To You. It's a good track. <laughs> Um, Clute, a uh, track called To You from the, uh, Teacher's soundtrack that's also got, uh, I noticed the Electric Soft Parade, The Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turin Breaks, Mercury Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation. He's looking smug because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> Strokes, hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So, Carl, concentrate. You go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped around the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle. Yeah, always carry some. A bit of Danish. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh, well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, 
what's that saying? Like a pig in. You know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He nearly said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the same? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like, he didn't. <laughs> 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 Although I did him in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions because exactly. he's the producer. So technically, <laughs> oh. that twat's in charge, yep. go on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this one, chocolate biscuits and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. It's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <gasps> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it was, it, what did you sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yes. Well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. It, right it. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? What, so I was like, your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't I didn't even know what I'd eat. Do you know what I mean? It went. It, I ate it so f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't ever got like a small throat. <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a, a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. Oh, <laughs> so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up on that now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, and hit, his, hit his nose with a stick! So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my dad had like, yeah, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away and he'd gone his to- His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. Uh, my dad comes in and, and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy. <laughs> he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. So, he's there like that and my mum's going, oh, look at him, and my lips were going purple and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. He like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. And it came up, and I was all right. What the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, I, you see, that's what I don't understand. Because there no, was nothing it, there. No, I just, just a little bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it. So it went down your, your sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way. Like it went into your air canal instead of your so, throat. And it, it sort of it, it it sort of spasms, and that's the that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So, so in time, I would have been all right. Yeah, anyway. you don't, um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's, no, so, 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 so that's hang on. one. So, but, but, so, no, 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 but the weird thing is, like, for, like, three days after that, I felt like a sort of, a uh, special person. <laughs> I was, I went to school. I'm I did, I'm saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> Yeah. I went I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days turned over <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. After three days you thought screw it. Yeah, well, did, did a quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. But yeah. have you ever had that where you've like felt like I've been given another chance here? Mm. Right, next that one. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell, we call that. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We, uh, get do we need them out of the way? Let's get do we need them out of the way? Yeah. Just uh let's, get, uh let's explain it again. If you knew. Um I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, do we need them all? <laughs> it still amuses me. <laughs> so we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish, we've done octopus, so yeah. we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not, right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Sea snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails. I don't know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, 
top shelves, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Uh, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. They glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones, mm. but that, that's a problem they're causing. All oh, right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. No. But you glad you answered the phone today? Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah, he doesn't. And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years, or can do. Right, I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not, but... I mean, sea snails are pretty important, yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea, they uh, yeah, graze on algae and uh, but, they but provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish, you know, or any animal, why do they, why do they exist? Would, would you be know. upset if, you know, someone said, we're getting rid of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. You would they're, be? They're an animal, you know, I wouldn't... Forget being like favouritism and all that I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around you can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job, don't be worrying about that. Because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. But do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine... Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, their descendants were around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I don't, I don't, I don't think that sounds a bit... But I don't think they sleep for 13 years. Not, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got to, just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't. So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, God! Carl, <laughs> I'm proud of you. That he was... was getting really quite annoyed. I know. What, what, did he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, just don't tell the him. thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because yeah. it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak to, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be safe, because <laughs> he could look after jellyfish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I, getting livid, you could oh tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So yeah. he's been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> well, they done? that was great, Carl. Play record. <laughs> well done. Better well, for any man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's, it's brilliant. I love that. Amy Man, Red Vines. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, you mentioned earlier when we had our um, regular email from uh, Dickie Anderson. Yeah. Randers, as I call him. Dandy Sam. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you mentioned that, because we didn't get anything from him last week. We didn't no. get uh, anything from him last week. Anyway, uh, he's obviously listening, um, <laughs> uh, Rich, because he's emailed in to explain uh, his absence. Dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in last week, only I was in uh, HMV returning the 14 copies of The Office I got for Christmas. <laughs> that's, uh, that's from Randers. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he's explained himself. Oh, he's dear. He's excused himself. Oh, Anders, we should get him on one day. Yeah. Right, okay, Carl. That's ridiculous. Three amazing scientific facts, one of which is spurious. Okay? Yeah. Okay, one. Um, girls can't throw because the part of their brain that allow men to throw properly in a girl is used up in emotion. Two. Gravity isn't instantaneous. It works at the speed of light. 
the force of gravity. Three, statistically, you're more likely to be trampled by a donkey than dying in a plane crash. Now, uh, even though the last one sounds daft, I think I, I've read that. About the donkey thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, girls... What's the, what's the first one? Girl, the girls can't throw properly because the part of the brain <coughs> that allow men to throw is used up in emotion in a woman. Yeah. Gravity isn't instantaneous, it, it works at the speed of light. So when you drop something, it, the force kicks in at the speed of light. What do you reckon, Steve? Well, it's well, not for me to say. Is this a trick one where none of them are ridiculous? Oh, no, one, one, of one, one, of, one of those three... One of those three is not true. Right, well, it's definitely not the donkey, right, so... Uh, I reckon the, uh, the girl one, throwing stuff. Is ridiculous. Yeah. Correct. Well done. Well Very done. Very well done indeed. Yeah. Very well done indeed. That's two out of two he's got so far. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, yeah. well, I'll teach you some stuff now. <laughs> right? I've also, I just say, I've always been fascinated by the, uh, the donkey fact, because it is an extraordinary fact that more people are killed apparently by donkeys. Yeah. Than they are by airplane crashes. Well, I suppose in countries where they're used, and, yeah. you know, used a lot, that, you know, they, um, they go a bit mad and squash but, it. But my concern is that <coughs> there's, when you go on a plane, there's so many checks. I mean, it takes on 40 minutes to go through all the checks, the air pressure, the cabin pressure, the fuel, yeah. checking the, you know, flights, the take off, all the rest of it. Our checks for donkeys. Nothing. Does someone close the gate? I think so. Exactly, that's yeah. It, that's our, that's is our he annoyed? Check. Is he annoyed or not? <laughs> yeah. You're not working him too hard, are you? Yeah, yeah. He's got his hand. Is there two, is there two holes for the ears? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's accident. I think they're picking us off. I think they're yeah. so annoyed that a nickname for them is Ass. Yeah. And they've got to wear the little hat, you know, they, they get, they've got to ride kids, you know, give kids rides on the beach and that. I think they're just sort of annoyed. Yeah. Maybe they're sort of just picking us off one by one. Yeah. Teaching us a it's not, if we had the same stringent checks <laughs> exactly. on donkeys as we do on international flights, maybe exactly. there'd be a little less <laughs> there. Exactly. Wise words. <laughs> Cheers. Wise, <laughs> if slightly incoherent words. <laughs> Go so, on, Carl. Got that right. Um, so, um, <laughs> acid, I would sort you out with some science. Brilliant. I forgot the puns in mind, didn't I? I forgot the puns. Yeah. Go on. Right, so, um, yeah, you asked to sort of be taught some science and that last week after being taught about war. So, yeah. uh, did some research. And, um, there's a few things. I think we'll just cover, cover one of them now. Go on. Um, we've talked a lot about airy kids. <laughs> We have I love the fact that Simon Sharma has never started a program <laughs> no. like that. Uh, the, the Jacobites. We've talked a lot about hairy kids. <laughs> Go on. It's, it's a little bit. I mean, it's not your traditional science stuff, but sure. it's still well, interesting, little. and it's a little bit. You know, it's yeah, we talk about hairy kids. We have, we have disproportionately, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think this show has talked about hairy kids more than any other radio yeah. show. Well, it's it's one that. So I noticed both of you there dropped the H or the H or however it's called. I had to. So it, airy, airy kids, yeah. hairy, yeah. hairy children, not yeah. Um, yeah. sort of airy, kind of light-headed or. Yeah. Well, there was there was the case of the uh, <laughs> the one who lived in China. Yeah. And. Uh, Which was weird for two reasons, wasn't it? Yeah. So well, go on. Uh, one was like he was covered in air. That's all really weird. And yeah. the doctor sort of checked him over and said, "Well, yeah, he is airy, but he's quite healthy apart from he had a little bit of eczema <laughs> and a boil." <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that was the main bit of the story, wasn't it? Yeah. But this one, right, we have sort of talked about it, and, uh, you weren't having any of it at the time. What? This, this next bit of science I'm telling you about. Go on then. Right? Um, remember when I told you about a lad, he was living at home with his mum and dad, right, everything's, you know, normal life, going to school, that sort of thing. Yeah. Then, I think his mum and dad had an argument, and it kicked off a bit and he thought, I'm sick of this. It's happening all the time now, they kept having arguments, so the kid, Ran off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. God. Now he he left. He went and ran in the woods, and he ended up living with some monkeys. Right. Right. And he thought this isn't a bad life. You know, there's no arguments going on. Sure. He was getting on with them. Um, <laughs> and the weird <laughs> he loved thing bananas. is, this <laughs> this is where the science bit comes in. Oh, sure. He grew a load of air on his body. That's not true. It's not true. It is true. It's an acquired characteristic. It's, it, 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 <laughs> I bet someone will back me up on this. But the, no, no, you can't, you, you can't grow hair like that. You might get a little bit uh, more downy, or they might, uh, the erectile tissue might, uh, you know, they won't fall out as much that we, you know, but you don't actually grow a big mane if well, you're cold and you're a human. Well, he did. He did. This lad did. I know it sounds a bit strange in that, but he, he was living with the monkeys, um, <laughs> and because it was cold, his body reacted <sighs> listen, to Listen, listen. 
he was no hairier than he would have been if he was walking around naked on a cold day with or without living with monkeys. The it, fact that he was living with monkeys makes no difference. No, I know, but I'm trying to get, you know, picture it in your head what it's like. Although Mickey Dillon's was always pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, he was living with them and, um, he went into town or something one day. Oh, yeah. To get some food <laughs> and the people there were like, hang on a minute, that isn't a monkey. Mm. Um. Well, he went, he went in naked. <laughs> No, it was there covered in hair. Yeah. yeah, but naked, but covered in hair, so it was decent, it was, it was... Yeah, 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 but they, they, that was a weird thing, they thought it was a monkey in the shop. And <laughs> so he presumably he had a big long beard as well, cos he couldn't shave, could he? No, no, he just covered, he looked like a monkey. And they were happy to serve the monkey, <laughs> were they? There's a monkey, he's buying he a newspaper and How did he walk? How did he walk, Carl? Did he walk so upright or whistling along? The, just pi hurt? the picture that I saw on the internet, he was on all fours, but I don't know if that's when he was running was. away after he did, did, did sort of you know, realised he was a kid. But this was a picture. So he was a kid as well, he wasn't even like an adult with a beard. No, he was a kid. Brilliant. Brilliant. And the, the beard kicked in a little bit. So listen, so the people on. caught him. You're an idiot. The people caught him, yeah. shaved him, right, got it all off, didn't grow back again. Right. It just, it You're grew. an idiot. Well, like I say, people will have heard this story or read about it. You're an idiot. And they'll email in, they don't let me down. And they'll agree that you're an and idiot. The, no, no, they'll, they'll have seen the story. You're an idiot. So that's a little bit of science. <laughs> you're an idiot. I like the monkeys, uh, peeling potatoes. Right. That's never <laughs> happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that, how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head, they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah! It doesn't yeah. matter what the food is, I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare I love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the, what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're quite well off now, aren't you? You're, you know, you've got well, your nice big house and everything. I'm, is that, I'm all right. Has that made you happier since the new world? Yeah, you it was alive? the thing that I always wanted. That was the main thing, a house. I'm not bothered about, I've told you, you know, clothes aren't. Yeah. Anything. I don't wear jewellery because it irritates me. Um, holidays, I, you know, the last thing I want to do when I'm not working is get on a plane because I've been flying about. So really, it's, it's always just been the house has been the main thing that I've always wanted, my space. Hmm. Um, and I'm happy with it and I like doing work in it. And I'm happy to have people around, but I'm happy to get them out as well. You know, I, I'm a, you know, I'm really house proud. Yeah. If you come round, if I ever said come round, I say, oh, can you take your shoes off? Yeah, are you one of those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Straight away. Shoes off. No matter who it is. Really? Yeah, the gas man, he, he hates it. I bet. He's like, oh, do you know how many houses I go to? And it's like, well, if that's the case, you should have those, um, coverers. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm not inviting What's you What's so in. special about your flooring that the shoes will... Because will... it's clean, isn't it? I've cleaned it. I've got a, I've got a steaming mop. I've got one of those Vax mops. Um, I, I keep it clean, like I say, I'm house proud. And the point is, I didn't ask for the gas meter to be in the house, I didn't ask for him to come round. I'm always sending me on readings. <laughs> They're always sending an email saying to give us a reading, so why is he coming round anyway? So if you're going to come round and hassle me, when I didn't ask you to come round, they don't make an appointment, they just come round and go, I'm here to read your meter, well bring some shoe coverers. Uh, I know that your attention span on the videos, people... See, there's so much on YouTube, you've probably gone already. I'm like that, I start watching something and you can see a little other video to the right of the video you're watching, you think that looks good. I was doing it the other day watching videos of octopuses. I was watching an octopus get out of a jar, right, somebody shoved an octopus in a jar and it was able to sort of unscrew the lid itself and get out. And I think it got about three legs out and I was already bored. When you think how amazing that is, that an octopus can get out of a jar, and I didn't even watch it all, I could see another video that said octopuses change colour depending on what they sat on, you know, like a chameleon. Bang, I was on that. So you're probably already gone. Amazon always say, oh, it'd be great if you do us a video. We'll put it on the front page and everything, loads of people will see it. They never do. That's why I sort of resent sitting here 
having to talk to you because they say, no, oh, we'll definitely will, this time we'll do it. I've done about five or six of these videos and they never put them on their own page. You stick it on the page where the DVD is, but by that point, you've already got to the page where the DVD is, so it's pointless flogging it to you. You're already close to buying it. If anything, this could just put you off. So what is the point? It sort of niggles me. The problem is Amazon, they flog too much stuff. It's the biggest shop in the world, isn't it? And what I want is the shop window. But they never, ever put me... In a, I never get in the shop window of Amazon. They're basically shoving me, like, right at the back, near the fire exit. That's where they flog my stuff. You might come across it by accident, but it's never there. It's like they're never proud of it. The amount of work I put in, they're travelling about, they're not eating properly, they're not sleeping properly, getting ill. It's a lot of time and effort I put into this, but they never put me at the front page. They've got like, the, the, I don't know, they the, the sort of show off all the stuff like The Wire, or, I don't know, Game of Thrones or whatever it is. It's all that stuff, that's what will be on the home page. If you want something, you can normally get it on Amazon. Um, apart from Long Got Summer with um, Don Johnson on DVD, my mum wanted it. For some reason, they, they don't stock it. Uh, I don't know why that is. But anything else, they've got... Um, anything you can think of, they're probably flogging it on Amazon. In fact, this is how I should do it. I should talk about how good Amazon is, and then I might get on the homepage thinking about it. So Amazon is probably the best online shop where you can buy stuff from uh, turtle wax car polish to um, ceramic ducks in fact bigger than that that isn't even that you can get that in home base both of them things but imagine something at that end of a scale and the other end they cover it all apart from that Don Johnson film that long got summer film I, just can't, I don't know why they don't stock that but uh, if you want anything, Amazon is brilliant, so uh, hang on, let me... So they can't edit this out. So for all the hottest titles in DVDs, The Wire, The Sopranos box set and The Moaning of Life, that's, that's out now on DVD. Um, click on it, buy it, buy it for yourself, buy it for someone else. We've got better looking now, haven't we? I wonder if he's confused it with the, like, the paradigms of of beauty have changed, haven't they? So in the 50s, Marilyn Monroe was, was considered, you know, a very desirable, whereas that body shape on women, yeah, more recently, has become, has become less, you know, there's yeah. lots of skinny women are seen as a paradigm of beauty. But, so that has maybe changed. But we will change. Yeah, we'll change these little things. Years. I mentioned before about, uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. <laughs> it never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that, that will go in evolution. Think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little finger. <laughs> I've been watching my little finger. But again, it's what you mean. Like, 75 years is nothing. The only thing that changes uh, in 75 years is trend, fashion, economics. The gene pool doesn't change unless there's been some sort of really weird mutation due to an external force. That I, I don't know, for things of science fiction where we all accidentally drank plutonium and got three eyes and one leg. It doesn't happen that fast. I've told you before, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, it's the just... little finger will be, let me tell you, millions of years. Um... I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not, imagine not, that. To say, not, not French fries. But hang on, though. Well, at what point are we us, then? They are. This okay. is good. Go on, go on. Go on. No, because if I, if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge yeah. and the stuff them, them kids on that now. 
I just think, where, where have they stored that? Where's that gone in their head? Mm. How have they left that somewhere and it's just sat there waiting to be used? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. okay, that's application and, and, and training and all that. I don't but, think, I think but that... But basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. Your, your brain capacity is it, It's not the huge. same as theirs. It's not the same. Well, you might not be what's considered as academically intelligent as them, but again, uh, an awful lot of it is, you know, nurture more than nature. Um, your brain's good. Your brain is up there. Don't worry about that. Well, it isn't. But listen, so what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yep. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> Well, I'm not, but because what do you what's think the your point? head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. It's like saying... No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, Oh, right, Carl, how are you? And, um, you're not there. You're asleep and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find that they're... No, that, only Do you want to see naked ladies? No, <laughs> no, only for questions, though, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is, because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say, forget it, leave it connected to Google. So, no, no. so then I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Right. That can access the internet. Yeah. Right. Mm. So why why bother using? But you're still knowledge? the go between. You're you, Carl, are the go between between the internet and whatever your but mouth says. But you can't says. beat the internet. Yes, it but you're, knows you're, everything. No, you're accessing the information like it was part of your brain capacity, but you're still processing and using that information. But, but, but hold on, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone on, one of them bright people on a University human, Challenge just put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm gonna get lazier. I don't watch the University Challenge and go, I wanna be like them, I'm gonna start reading books. I've accepted, I, I'm never gonna be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, 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 uh, I say to Suzanne, right, to every question now, I'm gonna have egg as the answer. <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day... <laughs> what an amazing game! <laughs> what an amazing because, intellectual oh, pursuit that is! What a lucky lady! <laughs> what a Suzanne, what a Suzanne say that! Well, she just sees if it works, she just plays along, and then I'm saying, oh, it might be this one or whatever. I remember, the... I love that, because I remember once, it was about, um, five years ago, uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different pile of games, um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals. And you have to go, uh, first one is A, then B. So, you say, aardvark. Next one goes, beaver. Next one goes, cat. It came to Carl, he panicked, and he went, egg. <laughs> 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 and he was on egg. <laughs> So, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well-known jeweler of Fabergé is well-known for his jewel encrusted war <laughs> egg. Yeah, uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's what I'm right. saying. Story. It's oh. If you keep saying the same thing, eventually, it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts his right, head, looks like hay. <laughs> yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But um, also, he told me uh, w when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he said he's given up ever trying to get an answer. So now he tries to guess who's going to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Another great game. <laughs> Suzanne's roped it on. Unbelievable. <laughs> how would you do with that? That's not. I'm normally all right on that. <laughs> normally all right. On that. There's got to be something else. There's there's another, there's another there's another there's another evolution thing though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that you, you can't argue with that, because the evidence well, is there. Can. Most people on University Challenge, which is a quiz show, if people don't have that in the country. The, the, it's the brainiest quiz of all time, and it. To be honest, I don't know why they don't go on. Who wants to be a millionaire or something? Because they'll get a better prize than. A, a, what do they win on University Challenge? Because they'll be stitched up by a question of uh, who's in Ollie Oaks. It will be the <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I, the snobby I, it'll be, as well. It'll be what character does Andy Lincoln play in this life? And they won't get it, and you'll go egg, and you'll be <laughs> correct. <laughs> but but that's uh, that's the thing, isn't it? This snobbery, on like braininess. The way that if you're if you're a specialist mm. in 
I don't know, what's something... Well, no, don't help him. Go on. Finish. Just, you've started a conversation, you're halfway through a sentence, you've got a point you to make. You can't bail out now. Okay. Say if you're a specialist in, uh... Go on. Latin tattoos. <laughs> Latin uh, tattoos! I don't know what, that is. what Latin tattoos? I didn't know you wanted something so specific. So that's a tattoo you have on your arm with cogito or cell underneath, or is it is it a Just tattoo? Any sort of, well, it's the only reason Latin's still alive, isn't it? Right, right. Tattooists. Is so it? you go on, you go on Mastermind. Yep. And people will go, oh, he's clever, isn't he? Mm. You got uh, you got forty correct in sixty seconds. Yeah. Now if you go on and say <laughs> any questions. <laughs> About Coronation Street between 1990 and 1992, people go, oh, he's a bit of a knob. Because yes. there's a snobbery to yeah. education. Yes. 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 There is. But a question is still a question, isn't it? Well, it, to a certain degree, although, yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, but there's but, no application to knowing who played Ian Sharples, whereas presumably there is something useful. In, um, well, not perhaps Latin tattoos, because no, no, we none of us understand no, exactly what no. that is. But uh, if you're a, if you're a knowledge, you have knowledge of you know uh, astrophysics. Obviously, that's going to be you know, as Ricky says, it's going to take more application to become an expert on that than watching Coronation Street twice a week. But it's still information that you've had to learn. You've not learned it, have you? You've just no. sat down in front of the telly and it's just piped into your brain very directly and very easily and enjoyably. Let's say the people working on that microchip that one day you'll have in your brain, mm. are they not doing something more interesting and valuable for society than, uh, than the Coronation Street fella? Um, no, because Coronation Street is, he, that fella who knows a lot about it, he's, at least he's enjoying his, his time watching that. Oh, well, I'm saying he's not enjoying it. So he's enjoying it, but, you know, a brain in a jar can be enjoying it, if it doesn't know it's a brain in a jar. Right. So what you, what you asking me? But we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't seem a difficult point. What we were saying. We what were I saying, mean is. Okay, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain mm. isn't part of filling your head with stuff. The journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Whereas if I just if I'm say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, it cries a bit. They go right. We've got. What do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I, I want it to be uh, a plumber. You go, right, <laughs> when it's two, we're mm. going to stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> well, we still need plumbing. Yeah, I know we do, but... The, it's yeah. odd that they would have chosen plumber. They've got such... <laughs> know, yeah. Such it's kind of small it's what, it's, it's what ambitions his, for their It's what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> they, want, they want the baby to carry on the business of the they, they want the baby to be able to plumb. It goes on now where, <laughs> where parents force the kids into riding horses. And you mm. see the kid without the parents about, and you go, do you like horses? And they go, no, not really, we're being forced to get on a horse. Yeah. can't stand them. Yeah. And people would go, that's wrong. The mm. kid should have the freedom to decide if he wants to get on a horse or not. That's right, yeah. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but up. you've made the scenario <laughs> They're not putting chips in baby's heads. I thought you said they were. No, what, well, when did I say that? that? I, said that. I, I think Steve's one, I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and, and, and an interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun, you know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop, it's, it's in there, it's an interface. I know, but it makes us but, lazy. But but you you straight away thought that now that that, that it went to some sort of weird um, uh, laboratory where it's all white and there's just a, a doctor uh, and he's everyone's in a silver suit right and they go we're removing your you the self we're removing the self and putting in chip <laughs> you are now computer boy <laughs> yeah but it's I not watch Coronation Street well you won't in a few seconds but. I hate Coronation Street, me. Carl, it's not a question of it's not that it's not that Google is now Carl. It kind of <laughs> looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little <laughs> pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm at it. The flaming lips. Yoshimi battles the pink robots mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington.
Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to own up straight away. I've done very little work towards this show this week. I'm a bit <laughs> you busy. surprise me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I apologise if it sounds a bit sort of. Thanks for being honest, though. Well, really. no, I don't. You know, I don't want people to go. Oh, no, that's a bit shoddy this week. I hope it's not going to be that every week. Yeah. So it is because I've done very little preparation. <laughs> okay. So right. You know, you Whereas probably, normally you'll probably have to help me out. All right. You have to do some of the some of the work. Carl, you might have to help us out a little bit as well. I don't know. I, I mean, actually, I know Steve's done nothing towards it either. So. The onus is on you a little bit here. I love the fact that it's still listed as either Ricky Gervais or Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Mm. In the, you know. Essentially, we don't need to be here, really. No, it, but I know now people listen for Carl. Mm. Uh, everyone I've spoken to, but you know, people on buses to uh, comedians like Ross Noble mentioned you the other day, and that you know, it, it, they go. Uh, people on buses. I've never been on a bus. You haven't been years. on a bus no. for like twelve years. Yeah. Have you? Uh, <laughs> people on buses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. I just know well, the idea they, of you no. being on a bus. Well, the idea of you well, having I'm not on a bus. Fare. They're shouting out from the window. Right. They're going, I love Carl. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm walking along. How much is it on the bus? 20 pence. <laughs> no, come on, seriously, how much is it? Uh, um, w one, one adult for Terminus, please. <laughs> I love the fact, you know, they do that thing where, like, if they're interviewing what is it? Paul 50, Newman or someone thing? famous. No, it's uh, quid, isn't it? It's always, a quid. They always say, how much is a, b a pint of milk? And that's supposed to prove if you're sort of still in touch with your roots or whether you're too big a celebrity. Yeah. You've got no idea how much it costs on the bus. Quid. It's not a quid. 120. No, it's not 120. Pint of milk, about 50p. <laughs> 30p. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Wow. Well, because oh, I mean, it's fascinating because you gave this stuff. I mean, you gave this stuff up before you became a celebrity, didn't what? you? You were you were always lazy. Because people always say to me like, "Oh, um, you know, Ricky seems a bit obnoxious." Who know. says that? Well, no, they say you know. No. They, no. Who comes up to you and just says that? The guy on the tube did it. <laughs> I swear to God, he came up. He said, uh, he said, I was watching an interview with Ricky. He said, he's not a nice piece of work. I went, well, I mean, he said, no, I've got friends like that. You know, just, and it's like they're always talking, they're a bit irritating, you know, and you sort of let them off because they're your mates. But I was going, well, hang on a minute. He went, well, nah, well two things, you know, it's sort of my job talking, and mm. being interviewed, essentially, you do have to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. about yourself. If that's his only criticism, then yeah. I'm not too bad. No, he didn't think you were funny either. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> He had a, in fact, he had a whole list. <laughs> well, I say a list, a it, petition. It wasn't Dickie Anderson, was it? <laughs> it wasn't Rich Richard Anderson. I hope he's listening. He's our biggest fan. I'll tell you what, Mock Turtles need a remix by Fatboy Slim, don't they? Mock Turtles? Yeah. It's a great tune, but I'd love to hear it remixed. Yeah. Mock Turtles, can you dig it? Remixed by Slim. Yeah. Yeah, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, mm -hmm. Carl Pilkington. Ooh, <laughs> stuff, oh, stuff to do, what's going on? stuff to talk about and that. What's been, going, was, on? Uh, what's been going on? Oh, um, before you came in, oh, you saw it, didn't you? That experiment I was doing with the... <laughs> <laughs> An experiment? Yeah. Well, uh, all I know is as I walked in the building, I passed the little kitchen area, you were hitting Carl on the head with a tin tray. Didn't it make a good noise? It was a great noise. Um, but i interested to explain more about the experiment. Cause... Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to see how hard I could hit him and make it resonate. Right, before I either caved his skull in, or, right. you know what I mean? So, you had to hold it quite loose, okay. so it could, like, vibrate, but you had to grip it hard enough to give it a good whack. Right. And his head's brilliant for hitting stuff on you, <laughs> is it? It is perfect. Cause Carl, it's like, could we recreate that moment a bit later on the radio? You'll notice that you've been on for 15 minutes, I haven't said a word. This had a bit of an effect on me. <laughs> <laughs> Still a little bit shaken. Okay. <laughs> oh uh, dear. But yeah, do it again later. We were right. talking about your head a little bit earlier, weren't we? It's not going to mean that you're sort of a bit, you know, fuzzy thinking, is it? Ah, uh, it'll be all right. Yeah. So, okay, can we recreate really that later? Maybe towards the end of the show, just hit you on the head with various objects, see which make the best sound. He said, he said, he said, talking about time out. I said, but something about in time out, and he went, ah, uh, yeah. Do you read that? I went, yeah, yeah, I read it. I get it every week. Yeah. He went, ah. Uh, there's no point, though, is it? Because it's like a telephone directory. You know, if you want to look something up, you look it up, but you'd never sort of browse the telephone directory. And I went, that's an interesting point. He went, although I did. <laughs> when I was in Scotland, I just looked up how many Macs there were, and there was 42 pages of them. <laughs> how bored are you in your hotel room in Scotland to suddenly start working out how many people start with Mac? Did you, were you sat in your room? You, there is nothing else that you can I think of I've been do. working. It's when we did the show from, you know, XFN did some stuff from Edinburgh. Yeah. You were sat in the hotel room. Sat in the room, waiting to sort of go out and get some food and that. Sat there. Why were you waiting to go out and get some food? Because we're all going to meet up, we're going to meet up, we're, you know, we're signing. So you, you thought, I'm not going to switch the TV on, I'm not going to read a magazine. The telly was on, nothing was on, I wasn't impressed with anything that was on, so I'm looking <laughs> around the room, I had a couple of the free shortbreads. 
<laughs> I know the fact he remembers. Yeah. He remembers. He remembers a specific biscuit he yeah. had. Yeah. That's fantastic. I had a couple of them, and then um, looked around. It was a Bible, and I thought, well, I know about that. Yeah. There's nothing in that I don't know. So, got the phone book up, and I immediately thought, there's a lot of Mac this and Mac that in Scotland. Macintosh. Yeah. Mac Daddies. Macateer. Yeah. There's loads of names. So I thought, I wonder how popular it is. Um, <laughs> how popular it is. 42 pages of Max. Did you count how many pages they were? Yeah. Did, you, mean, did you just work out from the numbers on the bottom of the page, or did you literally count No, I count counted. Them? I counted. Right. And, uh, and how many do you reckon are on a page? There's a lot in there. If someone lot, could tell you uh, approximately how many names I, they what, get on one page. How long did it take you, this whole procedure? What, the, the counting? Yeah. Not, not that long. No, it's just counting two pages. pages. Yeah. So yeah. It's not yeah. that much. They're all together, and what did you luckily. do once you digested that information? What, what did you do with that information? Did you I tell stored people? stored it, haven't I? I mean, look, how long ago was the Edinburgh Festival? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I stored it! <laughs> along with the biscuit! I love to get in his head. I was just a big warehouse, and there's lots of partitions for weird stuff, like bo kids born with tentacles, yeah, and yeah. things like that. I, think, I imagine there's like quite an old care caretaker, <laughs> and you go in there, you say, I'm looking for it, he goes, hang on, hang on, I know where they are. I put that somewhere. I put it somewhere. Is this the one when uh, they shave the cat? No, it's <laughs> yeah. not shaving the cat. This oh. is the Max. The Max. I know Scotland. The shortbread. <laughs> well, don't don't give me the shortbread because that's putting me off. But um, the, uh, the what's the name though? Do you remember last week I was talking about the airy kid? And, uh, <laughs> I think that's Carl. every week, Carl. That doesn't narrow it down. All right. Well, we were talking about that airy kid in the woods and um, did a bit more research this week. Okay. Found a good story out about a monkey. Right. Which I'll, uh, tell Ricky a little bit about it. Tell me, but... come on, tell it now. No, right. I wanna, to oh, see me with keep this. It sounds exciting stuff. Right. Right. So that's got him, right? So we'll be doing that. <laughs> we've, we've got, got the audience. We've got, we've got Rockbusters again this week. Yeah. We've got, do we need them? Yeah. What, right. you, what are you trying to get rid of this week? Cockroaches. Right. No, I, can't, well. I can't think of a reason to keep them. No. Looking into that, well, I'll sort the matter out, that's okay. coming up. <laughs> Excellent. We've got, um, I'm teaching you some more stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He phoned me up today, uh, yesterday it was, he knows he's been researching, like, educating Ricky. He said, uh, uh, what do you want to know about? I don't know, he said, uh, you interested in space? And I went, yep, yeah, yeah. He phoned me three hours later, he went, no, nothing about space. I went, what? He said, I couldn't find anything interesting. I said, you couldn't find anything interesting about space. Yeah. It's big. It's pretty interesting, Carl. He went, it's I went, big, but there's nothing there. That's, that's <laughs> It's like the Millennium Dome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. so what I'm looking at, right? But I, no way. He said, "Is there anything else you want to know about?" I went, "All right." Uh, I went anthropology. He went, "What's that?" I went, "Study a man." I sent a man. He went, "Like what?" I went, "Like our roots from from caveman through and all that." He went, and I said, "Australopithecus, Neanderthal." He went, "We well, you know all that then." I went, "No." He went, "Right." <laughs> he went, "Do you want to know how a lung works or something?" <laughs> How a lung works. <laughs> and I said, well, tell me how a fridge works. He went, oh, I said, it's just the gas, isn't it? I went, brilliant. I went, tell me how a microwave works. He went, I know. I went, I said, fella walking past in a laboratory with a bar of chocolate in his pocket, went past some sort of ray thing, it melted it, and he went, hold on. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. Explain to me how a microwave works. <laughs> right. So today we're doing, uh, sort of medical-ish type things under the banner of, um, Colon then, educate me. Oh god. <laughs> Do it again. Colon then, educate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's like, go on then. So, yeah. colon. Brilliant. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a little heading, you're gonna be learning three things, sort of medical-ish, uh, yeah. before three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? Yeah, do you wanna, uh, Pretty uh, much, yeah. A bit of suede. Come on then. How many O'Reilly's are there, do you think? <laughs> no, I don't know. It's a task for just before all this lockdown kicked off, um, yeah, I saw him on, I think it was like the 10th of March or 11th of March or something, and then uh, here we are, five and a half weeks on, I haven't really left the house since, but it was good, um, he's in his 70s now, and yet he's still, uh, he still sounds as good as he did back then, and as smart, he's always, he's always been one of them blokes who's been able to um, <clears throat> wear a suit, you know what I mean? And he don't look awkward in it. Oh, which is something I've never been able to do. I just can't. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what happens to me. But I, do you know, like when you balance something on a cat and it doesn't like it, it no. Do you know? You just 
put like a little bit of a shoelace on its head or something, it holds itself on and it just doesn't quite understand what's going on. I'm like that when I wear a suit. I just feel, I just, I just hold myself oddly. But, uh, and it's funny actually because Suzanne's been talking to an old mate of hers who she went to um, uni with. That's what's, that's, that's, that's what's been going on on it really during this lockdown. People coming out of the woodwork and getting in touch with you and that. I suppose it's a good thing, but I suppose people have more time on their hands to catch up with people when normally they're busy and all that. But the last time Suzanne saw her, I think, was at a wedding, like 17 years ago. And a memory of me at that wedding is um, I was the only bloke wearing combat pants to a wedding. So I've, I've, I've never been able to wear a suit. I'd rather look odd and stand out wearing something comfortable than trying to fit in and not being comfortable. It's pointless. Which animal is the happiest of all animals? It changes every day, like, because it's been raining a lot, I've been seeing snails. And, um, you know, are they happy? They sort of seem, just, just the way they, I don't know, they just mooch about slowly. Not in a rush. I think that's that's the key to happiness, isn't it? Not rushing about. Snails don't rush about, and they're really free. I suppose that's that's the thing that also brings happiness, isn't it? That sense of freedom, the way they can just go up a wall, and if they get tired, they can just stop. They've got their house on the back. They can just sort of camp there for a bit. And I think that's uh, there's something in that. They don't need loads of people around them. I've always said like with slugs. They're normally sort of on their own. Whereas a snail, if you find a snail, there's normally another one close by, but they're never really close. And I think that's good. That's how I like to treat my family in a way. It's like, it's nice to know they're there, but don't keep coming. Don't keep visiting. You know, I can see you there if I need you, but you're not hassling me. And that's what snails are like. You look at a wall when it's been raining, there's always a snail going up it, and you don't have to look far, there's another one. And it's like it's just there. If it needs a bit of help with something, be there. Um, so I'd say snails. I'll go for snails today. But the weird thing is, you asked me again on the 20th of June what my favourite animal is or what the happiest animal is. I'll have a different answer. Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking and he suddenly stopped and he was thinking about it and he went, oh, I don't know what he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True, though, isn't it? I've never seen any ghosts, full stop. There are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, but I mean when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record! This is a bit of a bigger issue. We're always making more and more stuff, right, um, in the world. You know, big buildings, big planes, mm -hmm. big boats and that. Will we ever get to a point where all this is too heavy for the world to handle? Right, what errors he made there, Steve? <laughs> what physical, scientific error has he made there with that question? I can't, I can't begin to explain it. Carl, we're not getting the rocks from other planets. It's already here. It's like having a, a, it's like having, um, a big pile of books in a room and then moving them over to the other side of the room and building a thing going, oh, can the room take it? I'm building a lot of things out of these books. What about, what about plastic? Where's that come from? Other chemicals that existed on the planet. Yeah. Do you see? Do, do you see the point? Hang on a minute, though. What about a little tree? You plant that as an acorn, it grows, right? That's bigger. That's more stuff. Yeah. Don't listen to him, Carl. He's patronising you. What about you. acorns and that, though? Right. They they take they grow from minerals and proteins already in our atmosphere or in our um, the mass of Earth. What about a cat, Carl? Right. You get it. It's a very tiny kitten, but it grows up and it's bigger. Carl, he's he's doing it on purpose. Elephants. Elephants, elephants. They, they're very small to begin with, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger until they get heavier and heavier. Mind you, dinosaurs have gone. You know, but you- <laughs> Either a, a chimpanzee with a typewriter, with an infinite amount of time, he would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay? Or, it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already, that's, that's sort of, that's not right. You either need to have what one What do you mean? What, what? You mean the, Let, the, laws. What do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out. Please. Okay. If it's one monkey, yeah. 
with a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't. It's not. Keep going. Crying. If you've got a load of monkeys, it's like it's like if you have too many. What's that saying about too many chefs? Too many spoil chimps spoil the soup. Right. Well, it's the same thing. It's like, well, I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it. I was going to put salt in it, and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying I, I, is, I, I, just just leave him going. I can't be bothered. I want to hear. I want I, to hear it, the rest. This blows my mind. He doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just, I just don't think it will happen. What I mean, do you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you, by definition. But not, not Shakespeare. Oh! Shut up, you, you know, idiot! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him, uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of monkeys, infinite number of typewriters, they will e type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot! Play I record, said, no, I'm not having this guy. For the future, Carl is from uh, an academic study. What, what the world will be like in about seventy-five years from mm -hmm. now, and uh, a, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. There'll be so little difference between men and women, apart from the biology, economically, socially. It won't matter who the biggest breadwinner is. That's already being phased out. If you're in a traditional heterosexual male female couple it'll be who stays home who's earns the most or whatever it won't be governed by, by gender um and that's getting less and less anyway as it is now but soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life you'll just need the egg or sperm mm -hmm. and uh you'll be able to have any coupling you want or or not thoughts carl that, that isn't what i've heard what were you heard I well, heard that. So you got you you read a, an academic study, Rick. But yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go ugly. <laughs> different point, though, isn't it? That's a, a different, different point. point there. Not listening to a word uh, Ricky said. But no, it's on. just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly, <laughs> ugly. Ugly. Yeah. So that down just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of owing it away. Well, 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 no, well then that, that doesn't sort of. What do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, are you so saying? Many... Are you saying because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't. You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of fancy because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now because it's all based on looks. Sorry, um, so but what's this got to do with what's this world like? Describe you, because describe Ricky's a typical town or or country. It's setting. exactly right. Imagine London. You've still got the gherkin. You've still got the big wheel. That's right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they everyone's just... still yeah. Uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. I, have you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that? Yeah. Right. Well, like like that. Yeah, but hold on, it's ugly by today's standards, is it? So I throw forward to 75 years, you'll go, oh, everyone's what we call ugly, but what's happened to society? What do they think of everyone? They won't suddenly go in, oh, and it's annoying, we've got, we've got uglier. Because it's not no, like because a strict... because we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now... Yeah. ...at a school photo... Yeah. You look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> well, you can't tell the difference <laughs> between some all... of the girls and the blokes. No, well that's not true because- It is, honestly. You that's look at fashion it and, you and see nutrition. Stuff. And I see that, yeah, yeah, when I see an old episode of Bullseye, I think, Jesus, the men look like right. rakes with right. no teeth and a moustache, yeah. and, they're, and they're, they're bald with their hair down like a paedophile, and he goes, now how old are you? And I'm like, 52, 50, he goes, I'm 22. Dude, what? Yeah, but that's more because of the sort of people that used to go on Bullseye, I mean, you know. <laughs> Paul, exactly. Paul Newman was never going to pop on Bullseye. <laughs> no, exactly. You know, because he was actually then, a plumber from, you know, yeah. Essex. And then think of the people that he grew up with, well, where he, I mean, some of them live in holes now. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think you're, the, the class of um, Pilkey, 1982, doesn't really count. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen, <laughs> not yeah, his school not. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? Okay. Now, what is uh, Carl? Uh, that, this is, uh, yeah, this is where we... Oh, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> you can see 
Jesus Christ, insane. His, his eyebrows sort of went down while you were doing that, but he, really, he genuinely looked pained. It's like you're back at school, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's starting to get hard work now. No, okay, we'll just do White Van Carl then. This is, this is your opinions. You can't be wrong on this, can you? There's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> okay. All right. But so this is where we ask Carl his views on the, uh, the big news stories of the week. Basically, we've, we've sold an idea from the Sun newspaper. And, um... So this isn't cruel, this programme, is it? Oh, I don't think so. Picking it's on not, me. It's not, is it? Oh, it's weird, because a few people have said, oh, you're picking on me. It's, it depends how you look at things, isn't sure. it? Sure. Yeah. But you do, do you like it? We, I mean, we could look at it like it's a laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. it's not but fun for us. You know, we like you. You know, you're, you're our favourite. Yeah. I, I'm going to say thing in the world, but I don't mean that, you know, in a derogatory way. No, no, it's, I'm cool with that. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay, so, uh, your views, please, on the fact that, uh, attitudes are changing to the possible marriage of Charles and Camilla. Oh, what do you think of that? Um, the, the roars at the moment, because the recent tragedies are, uh, apparently, uh, high in the polls, and people are coming around to the idea of Charles and Camilla getting hitched. What's your thought? Um, whatever, really. I mean, if they're happy with it. The thing that <laughs> comes out of it most is it just goes to show, right, that there is someone for everyone. Just because, I mean, no disrespect to Camilla, I'm not a good-looking person either, but she isn't a stunner, and yet she's gone and picked up a royal. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think it's good for things like that to happen, because it cheers you up, do you know what I mean? Uh, gives you a bit of hope. Thanks, Carl. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, you know, if, if they're happy. If any, anyone's happy, it's a good story, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's had a bit of bad luck. And, uh, and now he's, he's got someone else in his life, so. I'm just, while he's doing this, I'm just doing a list of questions to ask him what he thinks of things in the world. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, just, yeah, no okay. problem. Um, okay, what do you, uh, make of, well, now listen, this is maybe a non-story, or it may be the biggest story that's about to break. Ulrika Johnson and Sven Goren Eriksson's affair. Are you familiar with this? It's over the papers today. Apparently, uh, Ulrika and Sven are going out, although there appears to be no evidence for this. Yeah, I don't even give it time of day. Do you know what I mean? Right, well done. Doesn't, doesn't affect me whatsoever, as long as he does his job well. Yep. And what's she doing at the moment? Presenting dog eat dog, I think. Right, you know. As long as she does her job well. <laughs> as long as they both do their jobs well. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. that's going on with a lot of people out in the world, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just because he's an England boss, as long as, you know, we win the win the games and that, he's yeah. doing his job. Mm, mm. If she's, you know, gets a dog winning a prize or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> was, okay. It's not what yeah. it's Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... <laughs> dog winning up right. I haven't seen Dog Eat Dog. What's okay. going on? It's alright. It's... Right, no, so, go on. so that's it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. What about this then? Uh, are you, uh, disappointed by the nation that, uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St. George's Day? 23rd. Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's... Are you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patron saint of England who, uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, so you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many of these days with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because you know people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People. There'll be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in 50 years time. It's just weird. I mean, I remember being a kid, right? Going out on a Sunday and shops will be shut mm. because it was like, you know, the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, well, we can make some more money, we'll open the shops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's Is that good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. <laughs> Because the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to. Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that shops are, and you couldn't get aspirin and stuff. Exactly. Certain things. Yeah. Nightmare on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's right. Yeah. And pubs didn't open for twelve. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Um, um, can I ask you something? Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of, like, those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? It's evil. Yeah. What do you think of, um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. Hey? We've learned a lesson today, haven't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Let's play a record. Yeah? What do you fancy, a bit of radio ed? Yeah. <laughs> You don't mind, though, if people think we're gay, for instance, when we go to the Baptist tomorrow? No, that's no. terrible. I don't want that happening. Why? Hey? Why? Because I'm not. That'd be a lie. <laughs> I don't like lying. If I was, I'd say I was gay. Yeah. But I'm not. We'll say you were. Just pretend. We won't get in otherwise. No. Just a little kiss and a cuddle. Sam, so I'm, I'm a bit gay. No. 
Michael, I'm not going. On XFM 104.9. Well, near the end of the show, isn't it? Have you had a good yeah. time, Carl? It's been all right. I, I knew it wasn't going to be a belter today. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? What's up with it? Because what happens, the, the last two weeks have been quite good and we always tend to have two good ones and then one that's just all right. Well, let the listening public be the judge of that. Well, yeah, well, and, and the Sony committee. Yeah, we just want to do a, a clip show of the best. We should do that for our last show. People should vote for their <laughs> favourite hilarious link. Yeah. And then we can put it together on a tape. Right? Is there a rock comment there that wants to release the, 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 the bit like, I love... <laughs> Including my like favourites as, do you like gays? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this lad, he had a horse. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I scored once, I was stung by a bee. <laughs> uh, and who can forget, that's lovely. Did you do yeah. that? Can you, you, have you kept all these on tape? Yeah. So can you do a compilation? Oh, People hard, phone in. Work, no, this, the next two weeks, phone in for your favourite clip. Uh, Carl, how can they get hold of you, Carl, in the week? What's, what's your, your email? What's your email? What's it's your email? My, it's my name with uh, xfm.co.uk. So, Carl Pilkington. Carl.pilkington. Carl. With dot a K. Carl with a K. Yeah. Carl.pilkington at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Vote your favourite link of the last three months. And we, we should make a little compilation and sell it. Mm. And we get like radio here. They'd love, they'd love to be on the compilation with us, wouldn't they? Mm. <laughs> wouldn't they? Oh, well. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. Right, do you know, like, you're always giving me questions in the week, you're always saying things like, if I put you in this situation, <laughs> what would you do? Like you what? Like, like what? Like bizarre things. <laughs> like, like what, though? Say one. If you had to lick Bar <laughs> Barbara Cartland's face, <laughs> yeah. would it be the right cheek or the left cheek? <laughs> or Sorry, does Barbara want her face being licked? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying if she, if that's what she's into, then she's I don't mind dead. popping- She's she dead. Yeah. So, isn't she? she? Isn't I she? Know. I don't think she Just is. Just be, be careful, because you can't libel the dead, so I want to make sure she's dead before we start saying horrendous things. But she, I don't know, I don't think she is dead. I'm almost certain no. she's not. I don't think so. No, she's not. So, is, is Barbara Carlin dead? 08700 800 1234. I'll have to get Chris in. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, right? So, so anyway, he always calls up with like bizarre, um, <laughs> bizarre stuff like that. And mm. I was watching a program the other night about, uh, snakes. <laughs> right. And, um, <laughs> It was like, don't walk th through a river that's full of snakes because... Good work, good advice. They, um, they, if you've got a kid in the car or in the house, turn yeah. your radio down if, if you don't want them to hear stuff like this. But, uh, yeah, they go for your, uh, for, for your tackle. Why? I don't know, they just do. They think it's another little snake? Maybe. With... With swollen with cheeks. Earrings. <laughs> with earrings. With yeah. So, or, uh, or an anaconda in, uh, <laughs> in my case. <laughs> with one eye. So, I'm really uh, joking. So yeah, yeah. and I, I said to Ricky, what would you do? Right? Well, it's very scaly. You two in the woods, you, you're having a wander, Steve. Having, you're, a, you're having a wander. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, you, you walk <laughs> through, you walk through the river. What, and, me? And, and, yeah. Okay. Because you're tall, so it's like you can check out how deep it is before Ricky goes through. Right. Yeah? Which you do, so you, do. you do do that yeah. sometimes, don't you? Yeah. But a snake bites <laughs> your tackle. Yep. Yeah. And... Say penis. Yeah. It's the correct word for I it, it's know, not I offensive. It, it doesn't sound nice. Say it, say, say yeah. it. Penis, but I don't... Oh, you dirty it. little... No, you no. dirty little slut, Carl. You no, dirty it's, just, little... it's just one of those words. Yeah. Right, carry on with the... Yeah. Let's carry on. What's the story? I'm wandering through a, a river. Yeah, yeah. And, and the snake bites, bites your penis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and... You know, you know Ricky, like, doesn't leave, like, <laughs> WC1. <laughs> Why on earth are we going to be anywhere near a river where there's sort of well anyway get snakes? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you are in this situation. Yeah, okay. the snake bites you, and I said to Ricky, if it was a matter of life or death, <laughs> would you suck out the poison? <laughs> 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 what do you think he said? Uh, well, and, the, and the bit I made because he was thinking about it, and you know, like, oh god, well he's you know he's my best mate and everything. What will I do? And I said, and then. Steve starts sort of groaning like he's enjoying it. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to remember what I did do. What did happen in that instant? Okay. Um, uh, so, so I've been bitten, I've been bitten on the penis by a snake. Yeah, there's poison in there's you. There's no poison in it. Yeah. I've had a go at trying to suck it out myself. Yeah. Yeah, but you've, ne you've never mastered that <laughs> I've never been able to master that. Yeah, yeah. It's just such a long spine and such a short, stubby knob that he's got no chance. Yeah. yeah. So, um... What so I have to get- He's even had lip extensions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. 
And I, and would Ricky suck it out? Almost certainly not. Yeah, that's the answer. Yeah, that's You'd let me die a I'd, I'd just, horrible death. I'd go, is there anyone you want to tell? Do you want me to call your mum and dad? Yeah. How should I tell them you died? <laughs> is they tell them I died taking a bullet for a lady? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I was beating up some, yeah, some nasty people. Yeah. Would you at least run into the woods and try and find some kind of animal that could do it uh, for me? I'm, I w Some of those <laughs> monkeys that like, they got, you know, they got a good technique. <laughs> right. Stop it. One more song. Yeah. Only time for song for the, uh, the what's it? Oh, we got to share this one then, but we're, we're doing this I one. I thought there was two. Can no, we go? we've run out of time. Well, this is for, this is in the Guardian because they print oh, my favourite song is If You See Sorry. a Sailor. It's If You See a Say Hello by Bob Dylan. Okay. A song for the ladies and lovers. Mm. Right, that's it. And I uh, can't believe we weren't allowed to talk about monkeys giving blowjobs. Since when is that taboo? It's nature, Carl! They go absolutely mental. They love it.